What's up guys? It's yo boy Omnisensei. Welcome to, What If I Was Reborn as Uchiha Reviving the Clan with Harem System. Part 6. Like, share, and comment on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed. Also, remember to check out the original story. Link in the description. With all that out of the way, let's get into it. Danzo doesn't need to say it. Almost in the instant he spoke, Tsunade understood what he was thinking. Was he planning to kill Natsuo on the battlefield? Almost instinctively, she wanted to refuse. But the next moment, Natsuo spoke. Alright, I'm willing to accompany Danzo-sama and have a go. Tsunade was shocked, then immediately put her hand to her forehead helplessly. Neither of these two have good intentions. No, Danzo is already old and not suitable for the front lines. Tsunade said without hesitation, if Danzo and Natsuo were to face off, who would die? Although it was clear that Danzo was also an experienced cage level ninja, and had studied the KK Genkai of various major clans for many years, he definitely had some powerful cards up his sleeve. But just thinking about her own encounters with Natsuo, Tsunade had no doubt that Danzo would definitely die at Natsuo's hands. Of course, Tsunade thought that Natsuo wasn't guaranteed victory either. The specific outcome would depend on their battle, but regardless of who wins or loses, it would be a huge loss for Kanoha. This meant that Kanoha would lose a cage-level combat power at the beginning of the war. If it weren't for considering the stability of the village, how could Tsunade still tolerate such an annoying guy? So, for Kanoha's sake she couldn't allow the two to fight recklessly. Saratobi Hiruzen was able to fight Sun Agaka, so why can't I? Danzo paused and leaned on his cane, saying, Tsunade, don't underestimate us old folks. But the third Hokage was killed by Sun Agaka. Tsunade couldn't help but say, how about we replace Natsuo with someone else? Someone who can provide you with more support. What about the leader of the Hayuga clan? Hayuga Hiyashi. Hiyashi's face twitched. He didn't want to be teammates with Danzo, it was too dangerous. Having the leader of the Achiha clan is enough, Danzo calmly said. Tsunade, Awagaka is still inactive, and the village must retain a certain level of strength. The situation with Kumogaka is also dangerous. I only need the leader of the Achiha clan to assist me. Natsuo also smiled and said, I am willing to do my best to help Elder Danzo repel Kurigika. He glanced at Tsunade and spoke with great emphasis. I know Hokage-sama may think that Elder Danzo and I have grievances, and is worried that it will affect the battle situation. But you have to believe in our loyalty to the village. For the sake of the village, I believe that Elder Danzo will be willing to resolve our conflicts. Yes, you will definitely resolve them properly. Isn't it enough for one of you to die? Tsunade, helpless, could only try to find a solution. She indicated that Elder Danzo's combat power was insufficient as he was easily defeated by Rasa. It was not enough to stop Kurigika. Perhaps they should consider having Jiraiya join the battle. On the other hand, Danzo stated that he could lead the elite members of the route to act together. On Tsunade's side, she argued that the Achiha clan has contributed a lot of money to the village, and their contribution is significant. They should not be deployed casually. On the other side, Natsuo argued that the fate of a ninja is to fight, and the Achiha clan has never Never hesitated to shed blood for Kanoha. On Tsunade's side, she argued that Elder Danzo is familiar with Kanoha's political landscape, and should not leave at this time. Over there, Danzo said, Having Mitakado Hamura is enough. Furthermore, I am willing to shed the last drop of blood for Kanoha. You two really determined to kill each other. Tsunade was so angry that she wanted to curse. She could only continue to persuade them tactfully. She came up with countless reasons, but Danzo countered with various facts. In the end, even Danzo was a little annoyed and couldn't help but say, Tsunade, I am also a Kanoha shinobi. Why do you want to stop me from contributing to Kanoha? I'm trying to stop you from throwing your life away. Tsunade was furious. But not only Danzo, even high-ranking officials like Nara Shikaku felt that Tsunade's reaction was a bit excessive. Isn't it better to send Danzo out? If he stays in the village, we will be constantly worried that he will suddenly drag our children to the route let him go to the front. It is convenient for Tsunade to consolidate her power, allowing Kanoa to fight the enemy freely. Why don't you agree? Some people even thought that Tsunade wanted to keep Danzo in the village to find a chance to get rid of him. Faced with everyone's confusion, Tsunade couldn't explain herself. In the end, she could only nod. Alright, then I will follow Elder Danzo's suggestion. You and Achiha clan leader, Natsuo, go to the front lines together. It's difficult to persuade a stubborn ghost with kind words. Besides, she was only worried about the general situation of the village, and didn't want to cause more internal turmoil. Now he's just cutting off his path of survival. Danzo, you're asking for it, but this kind of thing cannot affect Kanoha. Then, after the meeting, Tsune pulled Natsuo tightly and said firmly, Natsuo, in this battle no matter what I say you will not listen to me, and you will still do something to Danzo. Looking at Natsuo's smiling face, Tsunade smiled bitterly. 
Then she became serious. All right, maybe you will do something, and I can't control that, but I have a bottom line. That is to say, no matter what you two want to do to each other, you must first push back Karigika. Understood. Saying this, her expression was extremely serious. There is absolutely no room for negotiation in this matter. Understood. Natsuo smiled slightly. My fifth Hokage-sama at the same time. Karigika, these guys really made a move. Terumi may kick the table in anger, smashing it to pieces. Karigika's finances. Minus 5,000 Ryo. Well, following the clues left behind this time. We should be able to eliminate all the influence left by that mysterious person. Owl said in a deep voice, from this perspective, it is a good thing for our village. Anyway, Karigika is far away from the mainland. Even if we lose the battle, as long as we don't lose too badly, to the extent that we can't even use the advantage of the sea to block the enemy then we will be safe and sound. I know. Terumi Mei took a deep breath and nodded. But as the Mizukage being manipulated like a puppet on a string, really makes me angry. Now that I think about it, when we killed the third Mizukage back then, the third Mizukage might have felt the same way as I do now know. His mood should have been worse than mine. So in that battle, the third Mizukage exposed many flaws, creating opportunities for us to kill him, outside lightly. The third Mizukage was also a ninja who had gained the recognition of countless Kiri ninjas. But unfortunately, he was eventually manipulated and became more and more cruel, turning Karigika into a blood mist. All of this is the fault of the mastermind behind the scenes. Unfortunately, although Karigika has been making every effort to investigate the mastermind behind the scenes, the village has just emerged from internal strife, and it will take some time to restore the rule of the Mizukage. They are unable to provide much assistance to the investigation team. As a result, they still cannot obtain any information. Mizukage Sama I think Konoha has probably taken action by now. So what should we do now? Of course we should take action. Terumi may raise her head high, her gaze determined. Although I don't mean to, Kurigake cannot afford to lose this battle. What about the ninja world war? As long as we don't join the main battlefields as Kurigake ninjas, what should we fear? The high-ranking village officials looked at the woman in front of them with respect. This is our Mizukage-sama, the leader of our village. I will command the battle. Ao, Teneri, Jugo, Kengo and Koda. Follow me into battle. Yes, Mizukage-sama. Kanoha village. Ichiha residence. Seriously, what is that bastard Danzo thinking? Why does he have to send you? Enko complained. Yeah, this is delaying the revival of our Ichiha clan. Sasuke also looked displeased. There are so many skilled shinobi in Kanoha. Couldn't he choose someone else? Karen nodded repeatedly. That's right, that's right. That guy named Danzo is going too far. Although my birthday is in half a month thanks to Danzo, Natsuo-sama won't even be able to celebrate it with me. Dan, Danzo, you're a nasty old man. But even as Natsuo's wives curse Danzo, they also help pack up Natsuo's belongings. Although they curse a lot, they are actually mentally prepared. Sasuke hesitated for a moment and said, Natsuo, how about I go in your place? My current strength is already enough to graduate. Except for that idiot Naruto. The other students in the school, even if they join in, are not my opponents. We made a deal back then. You revive the Achiha clan, and I restore the Achiha's reputation and seek revenge against that man. The battlefield should be my mission now. Natsuo smiled and patted Sasuke's head. Stop messing around. I'm much stronger than you. Let's revive the Achiha's reputation when you grow up and become even stronger. Sasuke turned his head and escaped from Natsuo's hand. Then what about your mission? Sasuke complained. We agreed on our roles. But now you want to back out. Yeah, Natsuo, don't you want to bear the burden of reviving the Ichiha clan? Anko seized the opportunity and ran over, her seductive eyes giving Natsuo a meaningful look. Why not work harder while you're still here? Natsuo just smiled. Who said that once you're on the battlefield, you can't strive for the revival of the Ichiha clan? Huh. Everyone was stunned. The next day... The main force is about to depart, and Danzo's trusted aide is inspecting the personnel and supplies. Danzo still had that closed-eyed, calm demeanor. After a moment of silence, he spoke softly. It's time. Mobilize the members of the route. By the way, where is our sub-leader that Ichiha boy? In order to facilitate operations during the war and prevent Danzo from forcing the entire army to attack Natsuo, Sune directly issued an order appointing Natsuo as Danzo's deputy. From this, it can be seen that she actually wanted Natsuo to overthrow Danzo. Otherwise, there would be no need for so much trouble. Danzo-sama. A root ninja appeared in front of Danzo in an instant. However, his normally expressionless expression was extremely strange at this moment. What's wrong? Danzo slowly opened his eye. Don't tell me that kid didn't come. No, he came. The root ninja said with a strange expression. But he didn't come alone. Huh. He brought seven wives. The root ninja's mouth twitched. What? Danzo couldn't help but open his eyes wider. Not only that, in the short time it took for the army to regroup, he used a storage scroll to release a large tent, and is currently resting with his wives inside. I've never seen someone go to the battlefield like this. Bringing wives to the battlefield. Are you treating it like a picnic, Natsuo? What are you doing? Danzo arrived with a furious expression. Bringing your wives to the battlefield. What are you thinking? On the battlefield, it's a place of desperate struggle. Although Shinobis are slightly different from regular military forces, the difference on the battlefield is not that exaggerated. They must also respect 
strict military discipline, Natsuo, as the deputy leader, brought his wives. It's like a general leading a group of maid servants on a military expedition, who said you can't bring wives to the battlefield. Natsuo blinked his eyes and smiled. Elder Danzo, do we have such a rule in Kanoha? Of course not. Because before Natsuo, no one had ever done such a thing. Laws that have never been violated naturally have no meaning. Ichiha Natsuo, have you completely lost the honor of the Ichiha clan? Danzo snorted angrily. I order you to send these people back. You may not care. But you can't affect Kanoha's reputation. However, Natsuo shook his head. No, Elder Danzo, you don't have the right to do that. And besides, I brought them for the sake of the war. War is fought with manpower. And having an extra pair of hands means having an extra glimmer of hope. What will we do if the war continues, and we have insufficient reserves of Shinobis? Besides, I cannot leave aside my responsibility to revive the Ichiha clan. Are you really planning to impregnate your wives on the battlefield? Danzo couldn't help but widen his eyes. What if they actually get pregnant? That's a battlefield, okay? I will make arrangements to get manpower to protect my pregnant wives and send them back to the Ichiha main residence in Kanoha. Natsuo said calmly, clearly that's what he had in mind. A mere war, and you think it can hinder the path of Ichiha's revival? Don't even think about it. Danzo was dumbfounded, and the other ninjas were also confused. There were rumors in the village that the Ichiha clan leader, Ichiha Natsuo, had been driven mad by the scarcity of population and had become obsessed with having children almost to the point of paranoia. Now it seems that this is actually true. Natsuo, do you understand at all that we are going to the battlefield next? Danzo's voice was filled with anger. He didn't care about Natsuo's life, but he cared about the reputation of Kanoha. Looking at Natsuo hugging Samu, and then seeing the frustrated expressions of the Kanoha shinobi around them, it was clear that they were quite dissatisfied as well. Anyone would feel the same when their teammates were having fun eating, drinking, and flirting while they were fighting for their lives. You want to have a child on the front lines. Why don't you bring a bed to the front lines then? Danzo scolded. Natsuo, I already did. Ah, Danzo was taken aback. Then he saw Natsuo take out a storage scroll and unseal it. The next second, a magnificent wooden bed appeared out of thin air. It came with soft pillows, clean sheets, and warm and comfortable bedding. You even brought a bed. Danzo was dumbfounded and couldn't help but say, Why didn't you bring some food while you were at it? I did bring some. Natsuo replied, Ah, Natsuo unsealed another storage scroll. There were braised pork elbows, fragrant duck products, peanuts, candy pudding, jelly drinks, and everything else you could think of. Danzo asked as he started to feel his head hurt. What else did you bring? Natsuo thought for a moment and said, A lot of things, like clean clothes, tables and chairs, alcohol and medicine, razors, facial cleanser, toothpaste, toothbrushes, and bedroom toys. Wait. Danzo widened his eyes. You even brought toys, yes. Natsuo nodded and said, but that's more private, so I won't show it to you directly. I didn't ask you to show them. Danzo and the surrounding shinobis were all dumbfounded. Is this man going to the battlefield or on an outing? Although Danzo was filled with anger inside. But in the end, he did not send Natsuo back to Kanoha. Even in the face of dissatisfaction from other shinobis, he defended Natsuo and forcefully suppressed everyone's objections, leading the troops to the front lines. Of course, his reason for defending Natsuo was simple. Anyway, this guy won't live much longer. As long as he disappears early, the impact on morale will naturally be gone. It can even become an example in Kanova's military regulations. Young masters don't see the battle as an excursion, people can really die. The Achiha clan has set an example for you, but in reality, before making this matter a true military regulation in Kanoha, he couldn't really control Natsuo. Shinobis carry their unique ninja tools, which is a custom of war. After all, Shinobis have different styles of ninjutsu. For example, the Akamichi clan needs a lot of food to sustain the consumption of their family's secret techniques. So is it reasonable for them to bring more food? Should the Inuzuka clan prepare dog food and chew toys for their ninja dogs? The Aburum clan's individual insect's food is honey. Can you say they shouldn't bring honey as a dessert to the battlefield? Natsuo used the reason the things I brought are my unique ninja tools to argue that even Danzo couldn't forcibly order him to put them down. As for women that is naturally the privilege of the deputy leader, which superior doesn't have a few direct subordinates, although the role of Natsuo's direct subordinates is different from others. In short, Danzo was only able to quickly bring reinforcements to the battlefield against Kurigaka. It must be said that Danzo's reputation as the, the darkness of the shinobi is quite loud. Not only are the shinobis within the village fearful of him, but even the shinobis outside the village tremble at the mention of his name. After Danzo arrived, Kurigaka's aggression decreased noticeably. Danzo is also an experienced veteran who has been on the battlefield since the first shinobi world war, never missing a single one. In terms of deploying troops, he is experienced and not inferior to the Nara clan's shinobis. Under his several deployments, Kanoha launched a counterattack to a certain extent, causing some damage to Kurigaka. However, with the arrival of the Mizukage Turumi Mei, Kurigaka was able to stabilize her position. Natsuo, on the other hand, worked hard during this time. Perhaps due to the novelty, Samu successfully conceived after a series of battles, and was sent back to Kanoha by Natsuo. During this time, Danzo did not take action. Although he wanted to kill Natsuo, even someone as rough as him knew the importance of discretion. It would be too deliberate to make the Achiha's death public at the beginning of the war. Wait, just wait a little longer. 
Danzo looked at the map and thought to himself, once the war has been going on for a while, I can send him out and let him die directly in the hands of Karigaka. Before that, I'll endure a little longer. On the other hand, since Karigaka already joined the war, Terumi Mei would naturally not foolishly attack Kanoha head on. So she began contacting the other villagers, sending messengers to Kumogaka, Sanagaka, and even Awagaka. Sanagaka Frontline Base. Kazakij Sama. Our Karigaka has already taken action. What are you waiting for? The Kiri Shinobi messenger said with great emphasis. We have already attracted the attention of Danzo, the darkness of the Shinobi, and the 5th Hokage has deployed a large amount of forces to defend against Komogika's attack. This is the perfect opportunity for you. He said it with great regret, as if he wished to become a Suna Shinobi and advise the Kazakij Sama. In reality, the enemy that Sunagika led by the Kazakij faced was indeed the weakest. Even Karigaka, who had just acted, had Danzo leading his elite forces, along with most of Kanoha's forces. He really was the most suitable person to take action. However, what the Karigaka messenger did not expect was that as soon as he spoke, he was overwhelmed by the numerous shouts of the Suna Shinobi. Shut up, are you? A Kiri Shinobi teaching our villagers Kazakij-sama how to do things. Our Kazakij-sama has his own considerations. Why do we need to explain to you? You, a mere Kiri Shinobi, just obediently follow our Kazakij-sama's arrangements. Don't even think about influencing our Kazakij-sama's decision. Kiri Shinobi messenger are these Suna Shinobis crazy? However, upon seeing the admiration in the eyes of the Suna Shinobi towards the Kazakij, the Kiri Shinobi could not help but raise his evaluation of the Kazakij. Due to Karigaka's isolationist policy, the Kiri Shinobis did not have much interaction with Sunagika and its Kazakij Rasa. The only time they had interacted with Kazakij Rasa was probably when Rasa betrayed Pekora. Although the agreement at that time made Karigaka very happy, in reality the Kiri Shinobi despised Rasa's behavior of selling out his comrades. However, looking at the enthusiasm of the Suna Shinobis now, the image of Rasa in the heart of the Karigaka envoy immediately became much more unpredictable. About the act of killing the third Hokage, attacking Kanoha, and retreating with the Suna Shinobi, the Kiri Shinobi refrained from commenting for now, without obtaining precise information. But being able to get the Suna Shinobis so excited clearly indicates that the Kazakij has already fully integrated the power of Sun Agaka, and has supreme prestige within the village. Obviously, Rasa is not an ordinary person. Thinking about it, the Karigika envoy's voice lowered a few degrees, and his attitude became more respectful. Fourth Kazakij, please consider my suggestion. Currently, Kanoha is severely lacking in manpower that can support them. Fifth Hokage Tsunade has not fully integrated Kanoha's power, and most of their power is in Danzo's hands, being entangled by our Karigika Sunagika, are currently in the most suitable period to take action. Upon hearing this, Rasa smiled slightly, with a hint of sarcasm. Most of their power is entangled by you. Yes. Although the Karigaka envoy felt that Rasa's tone was strange, he still said, Danzo and his root Shinobis are all on the battlefield against Karigaka. Isn't this enough to prove my words? And not only Danzo, but also the likes of the Eburum clan's Eburum Torun, the Nara clan's Nara Shikaku, the Inuzuka clan's. The Karigaka envoy mentioned several names in succession, all of them being elite with considerable strength. But before he could finish, he was interrupted by Rasa's cold laughter. Eburum Torun, Nara Shikaku. No major clan leader from Kanoha has been mobilized yet. And you have the audacity to say that Karigaka has drawn most of Kanoha's power. The face of the envoy instantly turned red. Yes, although the names he mentioned had considerable strength and were considered elite, they were still a bit inferior to those clan leaders. In terms of the number of people, it is an exaggeration to say that most of Kanoha's power is on the battlefield against Karigaka. However, since he was able to be assigned as an envoy, he naturally has thick skin. He pretended to be indifferent and said, It's not true that the leader of a large clan is not present, for example. The leader of the Achiha clan is serving as Kanoha's deputy leader on a side then, words full of disdain were heard from the crowd. The leader of the Achiha clan, Ichiha Natsuo, who is busy having children every day. Oh looks like this guy stopped one of Shukaku's attacks during the Kanoha collapse plan. But that's it. In the end Kazuki Sama left with Shukaku and left Kanoha without any injuries. However, before the Suna Shinobis could say any more nonsense, Rasa suddenly stood up. What did you say? Say it again. Huh? The envoy was stunned and said, The leader of the Achiha clan is serving as the deputy leader of Kanoha on our side, I see. Rasa's eyes lit up. It seems that you, Karigaka, have really attracted most of Kanoha's power. Now I will gather the Suna Shinobis and launch an all-out attack. Did Natsuo really go to the battlefield against Karigaka? If we don't act now, when will we? The Karigaka envoy looked confused, instinctively thinking that Rasa was angry at his shameless words, and was speaking sarcastically. But unexpectedly, Rasa really started mobilizing troops. He actually took action. The envoy was stunned. Why? It couldn't be that my words moved him, right? How is that possible? After all, what I said was completely empty. Any mature ninja can tell that what I said was just political rhetoric. So why did Rasa decisively start taking action? Not only the envoy thought that, 
but the Suna Shinobis also had the same thoughts. The Kazakij must have discovered some opportunity and decisively launched an operation. Praise the Kazakij. We are foolish and lack strategic thinking. We can't even begin to understand the reason behind the Kazakij's sudden decision to take action. Well, the Kazakij has great foresight. As long as we obey, what's there to hesitate about? That's right. With 4th Kazakij Sama present, we Suna Shinobis are invincible. Every Suna Shinobi is filled with fighting spirit, and under the command of Rasa, they quickly take action. It must be said that the words spoken by the envoy are quite precise. Kanoha's defense forces on the front line against Sunagaka are the weakest, especially since Kumogaka put Kanoha in a dangerous situation, and Sunagaka are just stubbornly holding onto his position. This led Tsune to decide to mobilize some of the forces from the Sunagaka front to support the battlefield against Kumogaka. At that time, this was the correct decision. Kanoha itself had limited manpower that could be mobilized, so it was enough to send a few elite shinobi to confront the Tsuna Shinobis. However, this time, Sunagaka suddenly took action, catching Kanoha off guard. They pushed the front line forward for dozens of miles, defeated Kanoha's defense forces, and expanded their territory significantly. It must be said that Kanoha is indeed a powerful village, with abundant supplies for the front line. But under Sunagaka's rapid attacks, they couldn't even destroy the supplies. All of these supplies became the spoils of war for Sunagaka. This battle gave them abundant war spoils. This made the Suna Shinobis couldn't help but cheer up, truly worthy of being the Kazakij. The Kazakij Sama, with his strategic cunning, reveals weaknesses as a supreme being would in battle, seizing the opportunity and striking with a single blow. Our losses are minimal, but the victories are particularly great. This is the strategy of a fourth Kazakij, Rasa Sama. Meanwhile Rasa roared in his mind, I was very cowardly at that time, but now that Natsu is gone, I dare to take advantage of the situation, stop imagining things. However, Rasa is still worried about Natsuo's whereabouts. Although he doesn't know under what circumstances Natsuo will take action against Sunagaka, the tactics he launched emphasize a blitzkrieg. Quick attack, quick end. After the fight, he changed his fist offensive tactics and started building fortifications in place again. I occupy only a small area. Kanova shouldn't make a big fuss to attack me, right? Rasa thought. After all, the fight against Kumogaka and Karigaka is more intense. They shouldn't send Natsuo Jiraiya, Tsune, Danzo. Although they are all well-known experts, Rasa believes that he can hold his own in a one-on-one -on -one fight against them. After all, if it weren't for Orochimaru relying on Kimimuro, who was at the cage level, it wouldn't have been so easy to kill him. And Orochimaru has the loudest reputation among the Sanin, so he shouldn't be weaker than Jiraiya and Tsune in comparison, right? As long as Natsuo doesn't make a move, everything else is fine. Rasa calmed himself down and walked towards the nearby house. After entering the house he met Gara, Tamari and Kankuro. When Tamari and Kankuro saw Rasa arrive, they immediately greeted him. Kazakij sama Tamari, how is your training going? Rasa showed a gentle smile. Tamari raised her head confidently and said, Please rest assured, Kazakij sama My wind release has been prepared and ready for battle. I can fight when called upon, and I will surely win. Please consider me for the next battle. Wait, who asked you about that? Rasa couldn't help but interrupt. I was asking about your training as a bride. Huh. Tamari was a little confused. Training as a bride. Come to think of it, Father did ask me to undergo bride training before. But now that the war has started, who cares about bride training? Hey, would you like this? How can I feel at ease? Rasa looked at Tamari's appearance and couldn't help but feel distressed. Even if a world war breaks out, you're still a girl. Bride training should be your top priority, everything else is secondary. That's right. Getting married is the most important thing. If it weren't for Natsuo taking a liking to you, I might have been killed by Natsuo. Rasa thought. Um, Kazakij sama Tamari hesitated. Just call me father. Tamari, Kankoro. Their upbringing in Sanagaka has always been strict even on informal occasions. They had to address Rasa as Kazakaj sama although it is normal. After all, he is a father who can be ruthless and play tricks with his own child. Tamari and the others have gotten used to Rasa's style. But is something wrong with him? In any case, bride training must be done well, especially in the arts of seducing your husband. If you can't control your husband, just pretend to be innocent and obey him. Rasa kept reminding a few times. It would be best if you could master the art of seducing your husband to the point of convincing Natsuo to move to our village. If you can't do it, then pretend to be a good girl and make Natsuo fall completely in love with you. After a few more instructions, Rasa hurriedly left. The war has started, and as the Kazakij, his work is actually very heavy. Being able to take the time to give a few reminders was already the limit. He left as if nothing had happened, leaving Tamari and the others confused. Hey, father has his eyes on some powerful shinobi and wants you to marry him. Kenkuro said strangely. But do we have eligible young people in Sunagaka worth considering? How would I know? Tamari said helplessly. It seems like there aren't many people who can withstand a hit from my fan. I actually think it might be because my father doesn't like me and wants to marry me off quickly. That's also a possibility. Kenkuro pondered seriously. Beside him, Garo's body stiffened. He slightly lowered his head, and his body trembled slightly. He suddenly remembered the plan to destroy Kanoha back then. When he regained control of his body, he discovered that Shukaku's entire body was trembling. It even indirectly led to him having a good night's sleep for several days. 
And at that time, when he confided everything to Shukaku, although he didn't know much about the situation back then, according to Shukaku, the man who defeated him easily and made him swallow a tail beast ball, seemed to be quite young. Perhaps, it might not be someone from the village Gara suddenly spoke up. This surprised Tamari and Kankuro, who then looked at Gara with astonishment. Gara was actually interested in their own sister's eccentricities. It was simply a miracle. Sanagaka launched a lightning fast attack and greatly invaded a piece of territory. But Tsunade, apart from angrily cursing three times, couldn't do much. Although she had done her best, the influence of the Saratobi clan and the Shimura clan had prevented her from completely dominating all the power in Konoha. Especially with the deteriorating situation on the Komogaka side, Tsunade had to send Jiraiya to support the battlefield against Komogaka, further dispersing the power in her hands. On the other hand, although Sanagaka had expanded significantly, they once again assumed a defensive posture. Therefore, Tsunade only sends more supplies and a small group as reinforcements on the battlefield against Sanagaka. But that's about it. After all, four of the five major nations have already started fighting among themselves. No one knows if Awagaka will launch a war against Konoha at some point. We must be prepared for defense. Even if Sanagaka has gained some advantages, Tsunade is unable to allocate too many troops to deal with it. Sanagaka is just a minor annoyance. Even if they occupy more territory, so what? Tsunade understands clearly. Once Konoha defeats the other shinobi villages, we can easily drive them out. In comparison, Kumogaka, with its aggressive offensive and the Mizukage personally joining the battle, are the real threats. That's why Konoha's response is minimal, while the morale of the Suna Shinobis is high. Look, even Konoha is unable to handle a fourth Kazakage. Long live the fourth Kazakage. Meanwhile, Natsuo stays quietly at the camp, working hard to revive the Ichiha clan. In the tactical meetings, Natsuo almost completely renounces his right to make suggestions and implies, since Danzo Sama has experience in battle, we should follow his example. It makes people wonder if Natsuo has even looked at the nearby maps. It's also unclear if it's a reciprocal gesture, but Danzo doesn't give Natsuo any special orders either. Most of the orders are usually about patrolling the camp, which is a safe and easy task. A small portion requires going out but not too far. And now Danzo glanced at the confidential information sent by the root, took a deep breath, and a touch of arrogance flashed in his eyes. The Achiha clan should not exist in this world. Then he gave Natsuo a mission that was far away from the camp. Natsuo didn't mind and accepted it directly. After setting off with his own wives, he squinted his eyes and glanced at the several figures he sensed behind him. It seems that Elder Danzo can't hold back anymore. Natsuo immediately smiled. Perfect. He was also tired of pretending. Together with his wives they continued to advance. Suddenly, Natsuo stopped in surprise. Offspring plus one, the comprehensive potential evaluation is 195, you obtain chakra plus 17, KK Jankai. Renshin no Kanke. Offspring plus one, the comprehensive potential evaluation is 209, you obtain chakra plus 18, breathing style. Hinakami Kigora. Offspring plus one, the comprehensive potential evaluation is 191, you obtain chakra plus 17, Manjekia Sharingan technique. Yumenso. Why are so many outstanding offspring suddenly appearing? Who gave birth to them? Natsuo was a little confused. Triplets. The average evaluation of babies is close to 200 points. Who is the goddess behind this remarkable achievement? Even with the enhancement of my sage body, the requirements for the mother's body must be very high to give birth to a child with 200 points. So it was Amayori who did it. Natsuo was stunned. Unlike Natsuo's other wives, she was born in Kurigika and has always had a strong attachment to her village. When she married Natsuo, on the one hand, it was because of Natsuo's overwhelming strength and on the other hand, she had a strong desire for the lightning blades. Although it hasn't been long, little by little, she accepted Natsuo and has dedicated herself completely to the Ichiha clan. But her love for the Kurigika has remained unwavering. So this time, despite her imminent childbirth, she insisted that Natsuo take her to the battlefield, mainly to be able to face the moment of the Kurigika's destruction. So she gave birth to triplets. Natsuo thought for a moment and decided to use the excuse of forgetting something to return to the camp. This decision was abrupt, leaving Yugao and others bewildered. It also made Danzo, Aburum Torun, and others who were following behind him tremble. Could it be that he has discovered our arrangement? Danzo's face slightly changed. Does he have a spy in the Kurigika too? This time, Danzo intends to use the power of Kurigika to kill Natsuo. Now that the Achiha clan is rich, they have the ability to spend a lot of money to uncover any conspiracy within the village. Therefore, Danzo decided to use the Mist Shinobis to deal with Natsuo as much as possible. But Natsuo wanted to return as soon as he left the camp. Danzo's heart suddenly tightened, immediately changing his course. He then walked through the camp, as if he had just left the center. What are you doing, Natsuo? Natsuo smiled and said, Oh, I forgot to bring my ninja tools. I'm going back to get them, don't worry. It will be quick, just 10 minutes. Danzo, are there still ninjas who forget to bring their ninja tools these days? And what is in the ninja tool pouch around your waist? But he didn't say much. As long as Natsuo was unwilling to carry out the mission, he would immediately exercise his authority as the leader of the army, to force him to execute the orders. However, Danzo was overthinking. Natsuo had no intention of wasting Danzo's goodwill. He went straight to his own room and saw Amayori. Why are you back? 
and Mayuri quickly changed her expression and looked hurt. You suspect that I'm passing information to Kurigika, so you pretended to go out on a mission to test me. To be honest, Natsuo did have the right to suspect. After all, they were both well aware of Amayori's feelings for Kurigika. But for some reason, Amayori still felt a little betrayed. Even though I'm pregnant with your child, are you still suspicious of me? Hey, hey, Natsuo couldn't help but say, you're pregnant, why would you want to leak any information? Besides, I don't think you're stupid enough to believe that some information can change anything. Amayori opened her mouth. It seems to be like this. With Natsuo's strength regardless of what information Kurigika has, he could easily defeat them. So why are you back? Amayori asked curiously. Natsuo honestly replied, I felt that my child was born and thought it was yours, so I came to take a look. What kind of answer is that? Amayori was left speechless, but Natsuo didn't pay much attention to it. He just frowned and pondered who gave birth to his child. Amayori was still pregnant, obviously it wasn't her. But no one else should have the ability to give birth to such highly potential babies. And it's triplets, which is really him. Wait, Natsuo's eyes lit up? Triplets. For normal humans, having one child is usually the norm, and twins are already a rare occurrence. Natsuo had only encountered it four times in his life, so triplets, which are even rarer, were the first time for him. But if it's not normal humans, then it makes sense. Without hesitation, he used the reverse summoning technique and arrived at the Rochi cave. The result was as expected, it was the snake princess who gave birth. The one who gave birth was Tijitsuhim, the last snake princess who Natsuo had subdued. It's really you. Natsuo let out a sigh of relief. You're really amazing, actually giving birth to triplets. What's so special about that? Tijitsuhim looked at Natsuo strangely. For us this is quite common. The number of snake eggs laid by snakes varies depending on the species and size of the snake, but generally ranges from around 20 to 100 with some laying only two eggs. Of course, snake sages are not real snakes. They are close to the definition of demi-humans. Even their method of reproduction is not oviparous like snakes, but viviparous like humans. But even so, they are much stronger than humans by far. Listening to Tajitsuhim's explanation, Natsuo's eyes lit up, Ryuchi Cave is truly my blessed place. It might be the most suitable place for me. If Tajitsuhim has such power, what about the other two snake princesses? White Snake Sage oh, forget about White Snake Sage, Natsuo doesn't care about her. The rewards for the birth of these children are extremely generous. The KK Genkai, Renchi no Kankei, although it did not appear in the Naruto series, is something extremely useful for him. This bloodline manifests itself through a physical and mental link between two individuals. By having physical contact with another person, the user of this bloodline can transfer part of their vital energy and mental energy, strengthening the recipient permanently. This process can only be achieved as long as two people share a mental link, and as this link is strengthened, the strengthening becomes much easier and more powerful. And even if a perfect mental link is established, it can transmit other bloodlines. Then there is the Manjakyo Sharingan technique Yumento. This technique would allow the user of the Manjakyo Sharingan to access his opponent's dream world, and insert a specific idea into his subconscious. They could manipulate dreamscapes introducing scenarios, people or events that would influence the target's future decisions, without the target being aware of the manipulation. This ability is highly powerful powerful, as the line between reality and dream would blur, and the target could be influenced by an idea that they perceive as their own. But that has been implanted by the user of the Manjekyo Sharingan. The Yumenso technique of the Manjekyo Sharingan would be a way to subtly influence the actions and decisions of others, by manipulating their subconscious. And although it is not as powerful as Shisui's Kota Matsukami, it is still a very useful ability, since the restriction period for each use is only one year. Lastly is breathing style. Hinakami Kagura. This ability comes from the world of Demon Slayer, Kimetsu no Yaiba. And although it is not a very powerful ability overall for his current strength, it can be a very useful way to strengthen his wives, especially Yuzuki Yugao and Ringo Amayuri, who are very talented sword users. And this confirms again that once a child's score exceeds 200, the rewards are not just limited to the current world. Natsuo was very excited about this, and almost couldn't resist having a battle with the Jitsuhim again. For now he can only wait for her to recover and he is also very excited about the birth of the children with the other snake princesses. I can only hurry up and take care of Danzo's annoyance, then take the newborn children back to Kanoha. Natsuo thought, these three children have great talents, but even with the protection of Tajitsuhim Princess, in the cruel environment of Raichi Cave, they might suffer calamity before they grow up. Considering the cruel nature of the snakes, it is still a question whether she will protect the children. So Natsuo returned to the Kanoha camp, brought his wives, and set off again. This made Danzo slightly relieved. Natsuo's mission was to attack a remote coastal port, and burn as many Karigika ships as possible. It can be considered a supply line attack mission. However, considering that destroying the ships would directly paralyze the transportation line, it is much easier than cutting off the transportation line on land. The mission is classified as S-rank, but it belongs to the lower difficulty level within the S-rank category, which is just right for Natsuo. So it is considered a normal mission. Natsuo arrived at a forest near the port with his wives. Hum, they stopped. Natsuo noticed the movement of Danzo and others behind him. In that case, 
The knife that Danzo wants to use to kill people is nearby, Natsuo thought. Although Natsuo has proven to be strong enough during the attack on Konoha, this level of strength is obviously not something impossible for Danzo to overcome. He has several elite Jonin subordinates, such as Aburam Torin and Yamanakafu. Furthermore, he himself is an expert at the cage level, so he is not at all worried that they cannot kill Natsuo. But now that it's stopped, it's obvious that Danzo is on guard against people ambushing Natsuo. From this perspective, it can also be seen that the strength of these people is quite impressive even Danzo is not willing to take the risk of facing them. But, while considering Danzo's character, it is most likely that he is waiting for an opportunity to kill Natsuo without suffering any casualties, and then stab his helpers in the back. Then let me see who this sword that Danzo used to attack me is. Natsuo smiled slightly, then closed his eyes. The next second I found it let's take care of this side first. When I was playing with the third Hokage, it was fine. But now that so many people have seen me leaving the village, it would be embarrassing if I couldn't complete the mission, Natsuo smiled slightly, and let go of Yugao's hand. What's wrong, Natsuo? Yugao's eyes sparkled, asking, is it an enemy? She was excited, eager to try. Since she became disillusioned with the third Hokage when he sent her as a spy to the Ichiha clan, she didn't have much motivation to continue training. But after spending this time with Natsuo and under her sincere care of her little by little, she changed from her cold personality to someone freer. In addition to Natsuo helping her train her Kenjutsu, she discovered that she really liked the battle. During this period of time on the battlefield, she even took on several missions on Natsuo's behalf, and each mission would keep her excited all day long. Yes, it's an enemy. Natsuo smiled slightly. Let me help, okay. Yu Gao immediately said. Sorry, this enemy is still a bit too difficult for you. Natsuo said with a slight sigh. Then he walked out of the jungle and came to the makeshift dock. Although it was just a remote makeshift dock with few people, the Kiri Shinobis who struggled out of the Bloody Mist era were all highly vigilant. They instantly noticed Natsuo's figure. Who's there? Is he a Konoha ninja? Enemy attack. Quickly and fall Manjutsu Sama. At the same time, many Kiri Shinobis rushed towards Natsuo, wielding sharp blades and a murderous intent on their faces. Natsuo simply formed hand seals. Fire release. Great fire annihilation. The next second a surging sea of fire surged up. Fierce flames surged and rushed forward, transforming into a raging sea of fire. It completely enveloped the entire pier. Several large ships were instantly devoured by the flames, and the intense fire even burned on the sea, creating obvious steam that lingered above the sea of fire, damn Kanoha bastards. With a roar, a huge wave quickly approached. A wave as tall as a small mountain swept over the burning ships. The giant wave extinguished the flames, but by this time, the wooden ships were already completely destroyed. Damn it. A thin man with white hair, pointed shark-like teeth, and a bandage around his neck jumped out with a grim expression. Hazuki Manjetsu, the older brother of Hazuki Sujetsu, the peerless genius of the Hazuki clan, a member of the strongest generation of the seven ninja swordsmen of the mist, who was skilled in the use of the seven ninja swords, and was known as the second coming of the demon. It's him, the sword that Danzo relies on. If it's this guy, who is one of the most powerful shinobi ever produced within Kurigika, he would be a decent target. Natsuo looked at the displeased Manjetsu and smiled faintly. Manjetsu is an expert at the cage level. Not only is he proficient in the hydrification technique and water gun technique, which are characteristic techniques of the Hazuki clan, but he is also proficient in the use of silent killing. In all of Kurigika, the only person who can compare to him is Terumi Mei. The shinobis of Kanoha Manjetsu's face turned ugly. Daring to disturb my rest and ruin my mission, are you prepared to die as compensation? A thick killing intent spread from him. The expression of Yu Gao and other of Natsuo's wives became serious. From this man, they felt an unparalleled sense of oppression. This man was very powerful. Manjetsu's eyes were filled with killing intent. Suddenly, he noticed the clan emblem on Natsuo's back. Hum. Looking at that emblem, you're a ninja from the Ichiha clan. Manjetsu squinted his eyes. As far as I know, the only remaining adult Ichiha in Kanoha seems to be Ichiha Natsuo. You have quite the audacity. Manjetsu revealed shark-like teeth, and his eyes flickered with a dangerous gaze. Does the Sharingan you possess give you enough audacity to attack the fleet unprotecting? Well, there was actually no information about you in the intelligence. Natsuo smiled faintly. But I have received a mission to destroy the dock and ships here. It seems like you've been abandoned. Manjetsu paused for a moment upon hearing this, then immediately smiled. The internal conflicts in your Kanoha village are not much different from those in our Kurigika. Manjetsu, a cage-level expert who emerged from the village of the Bloody Mist, had witnessed too many dirty things. Although this is a port location selected by Kurigika, it has not actually started construction. Manjetsu's mission is to accompany the transportation of building materials. Although the amount of building materials is large, they are not valuable and do not belong to war supplies. Even if they are destroyed, it would only affect the battle for a short period of time. The ninjas of Kanoha have had dealings with Kurigika before, and their leaders must know what the newly established dock looks like. But they still sent Natsuo, a vice leader, to take action. Did you offend Danzo? Manjetsu chuckled lightly. Yes. Natsuo nodded with a smile. Manjetsu laughed heartily. It's really pitiful. You know nothing. 
And yet you encountered me he touched his chin. Perhaps I should let you go back and watch you fight Danzo to the death. But unfortunately Manjetsu's expression changed, and his sharp teeth revealed a hint of ferocity. You actually attacked directly, causing my mission to fail. If I don't return with your eyes to the village, how will the people in the village see me? He suddenly lunged straight towards Natsuo. At the same time, his arm muscles swelled, becoming thicker than his thighs. Water release. Great water arm technique. Hazuki Manjetsu leaped high into the air, his fist the size of a sandbag coming down fiercely. With a fist momentum, it was like a giant stone falling. The faces of Yu Gao and the other Natsuo wives changed. Although they were not delicate flowers on an ivory tower, how could they resist the killing intent of a cage-level expert? In an instant, their legs felt weak. And the most important thing was that, although Hazuki Manjetsu was yelling at Natsuo, his attack was directed at Yu Gao and the others. Prioritize the removal of the weak. Otherwise, in a battle with a strong opponent, the weak could cause unexpected trouble. Although Manjetsu was arrogant in his words, his actions were ruthless and completely calculated. He followed the most standard tactics of a ninja, seeing that his fist was about to fall. Suddenly, a hand firmly grabbed his wrist. Hey, hey, they're just spectators, why involve them? Natsuo sighed lightly. Let's fight each other. Can't you let them be a spectator? I brought them here to experience the aura of a cage-level expert, but not to actually fight you. This guy, Hazuki Manjetsu's pupils contracted, he exerted force on his wrist forcefully breaking free. He took three steps back before looking at Natsuo with seriousness. Whether it was the extremely powerful fire release from just now or his strength with which he casually grabbed her wrist, this guy he wasn't as useless as the rumors said. But listening to Natsuo's words, Manjetsu's expression slightly changed. Ichiha Natsuo. Are you saying that they won't attack me, so the only one attacking will be you alone? That's right. Natsuo smiled. It's just me. Do you think you're my equal? Manjetsu couldn't help but laugh. Even if you join forces with those Kinochi, you wouldn't be able to escape from my hands. With just your fire release. Do you really think you can defeat me? His voice suddenly grew louder. Who do you think I am? Manjetsu roared in anger. He suddenly pulled out a scroll. The next second. Bang. Great Twin Blades Hiromekure. One of the mystical swords of the Seven Swordsmen of the Mist. That has been passed down from generation to generation amongst the group's members. Since the first Mizuki Jazeera. Although it is called Twin Blades. It is actually a single blade with two handles. Making it convenient for dual-handed use. Surging chakra flowed out from Manjetsu's hand, enveloping the entire body of the Hiromekure in a pale blue chakra, forming a shape resembling a large sword. However, in the next second a chakra-covered hand gripped the Hiromekure tightly. Manjetsu's face changed instantly. But before Manjetsu could react Natsuo threw a punch. Then his figure was thrown into the air as he spit out blood. After his body fell heavily to the ground, the immense force caused him to slide across the ground until he finally fell into the water. Natsuo waves his hand, casually waving the Hiromekure, then smiles towards the beach. So now can you tell me who you think you are? Hum. Escaped. Huh. Natsuo raises an eyebrow. Impressive for a cage level, very decisive. He's not stupid. With the ninja sword taken away and himself being so easily suppressed, what's the point of fighting now? Too bad. But it seems like he left his sword oh well. I'll give it to Ameri later. Natsuo sighed lightly, then sealed the hero Mekure and put it in a storage scroll. Everything happened so fast that Yu Gao and the others only had time to react. Natsuo, that Kiri Shinobi. He escaped. Natsuo shrugged. Natsuo could sense Manjetsu's location, but according to Ameri, both Manjetsu and herself belonged to Terumi Mei's group and were loyal to Kurigaka. So Natsuo deliberately showed mercy. Other Kiri Shinobi didn't matter. But Manjetsu was a cage-level expert. If he died in Natsuo's hands, it would be a huge blow to Terumi Mei and Kurigika. Of course, Amayori's plea came at a price, although there was nothing she could do now that she was pregnant. But this debt would be repaid with interest after she gave birth. Furthermore, after he obtained the last rewards for the birth of the triplets, a new plan for Terumi Mei and Kurigika began to form in his mind. Did he escape? Yu Gao widened his eyes. Don't idealize cage-level experts. Natsuo shook his head. Cage-level experts are also human. They can feel fear, hatred, failure, and lust. Furthermore, reaching that level means that they have gone through countless battles. So when it comes to avoiding danger, they are the most decisive. Natsuo's wives were stunned for a while by what had just happened, but then they recovered and talked among themselves for a while. Okay, okay. The mission is complete. Yu Gao said to reassure the women increasingly excited by Natsuo's strength. We can go back now. However, upon hearing her words, Natsuo showed a slight smile. Go back? No, it's still early. We still need to deal with the people behind us at the same time. Danzo was waiting calmly with Aburin Torun and Yamanaka Fu in the forest three kilometers from the dock, awaiting the outcome of the battle. Fu, is there still no result? Danzo asked. Danzo-sama, the distance is too far. With my abilities, I can only faintly sense some residual waves, Yamanaka Fu hesitated. But it seems that the battle has already calmed down. The energies have become much softer. Aburim Torin pondered for a moment and then asked, Danzo-sama, should we get closer? If the distance is too far, even Yamanaka Fu, a top-level sensory ninja, cannot obtain much information. Don't rush. Danzo remained calm, closed his eye and rested, his voice calm and unperturbed. 
Hazuki Manjetsu is a cage-level expert, one of the seven ninja swordsmen of the mist. His strength should not be underestimated if we get closer. There is a risk of being detected by him. Stay calm. Yes. Yes. After a pause, Aburam Torin said. But Danzo-sama, we shouldn't have any problems with using others to kill Matsuo. But what about the Sharingan? Shouldn't we get it back? After all, that is a Dejutsu belonging to Kanoha. Don't worry about such trivial matters. Kanoha doesn't need a pair of Sharingan. Danzo slowly opened his eye, his voice calm. He didn't actually have any personal animosity towards Natsuo. In fact, he didn't feel much about Natsuo. His dislike was only directed towards the Echiha clan. At this moment, apart from Natsuo, he didn't even think about gaining any benefits for himself. He already had too many Sharingan, most of the eyes of the Echiha clan during their heyday, ending up in his hands after the clan massacre. Just a simple pair of three Tomo, although it was not something common and ordinary, but he had several only on his arm. And at the root headquarters, he had many more in reserve. It wasn't worth taking risks just for a pair of Sharingan. As for after using all the Sharingan in his possession, there are still many Sharingan in Kanoha. Danzo's old face revealed a smile. There are a lot of children within the Achiha clan, and their talents seem to be quite good. Although the evil Achiha should all die, their young children are very suitable to join our route. The younger the child, the easier to brainwash. Currently, aside from Natsuo, the oldest Achiha is Sasuke. After that, there are Natsuo's children who haven't even reached the age of going to ninja school yet. Aren't they the best options to join the route? Torun, make a note of it. After the war is over, we can try to use the children of the Achiha clan to see if they can accommodate the cells of the first Hokage Senju Hashirama. Danzo's old face showed a hint of anticipation. If the Senju and Achiha combine, the strength would be incredible, although there will definitely be sacrifices in the experiment. Natsuo has quite a few children. A small sacrifice, it's worth it. It's all for Kanoha before he could continue speaking, his expression suddenly changed. At the same time, Yamanaka Fu's expression also changed. Aburan Torun wanted to ask his companions what was happening but suddenly realized something was wrong and looked towards the coast. A giant figure in armor appeared out of nowhere on the dock. He was tens of meters tall and wielded a sword. With both hands gripping the sword, he fiercely swung it down. A sharp sword energy pounced towards them. Boom. A massive sword energy swept across everything in its path. Danzo, Aburam Torun, and Yamanaka Fu panicked and tried to escape but they were one step too slow, and were injured by the impact of the energy. What's going on? What is that? Torun and Fu's faces changed drastically, especially Yamanaka Fu. He felt an unparalleled amount of chakra from the other side. Danzo, on the other hand, exclaimed directly, That is Susanu. How is that possible? How can the Manjekyo Sharingan appear here? Danzo couldn't possibly not recognize the giant in front of him. As a man who deeply hated the Achiha, he was too familiar with this powerful giant. Or perhaps, this was also the power he had longed for. The next second the giant took a big step forward. The tens of meters tall giant, step by step, caused the earth to tremble slightly, as if it could not bear its weight. In just a few steps, a fully armed giant samurai appeared in front of Danzo and the others. The giant's entire body featured a deep purple, almost black color, like a black demonic god. And Danzo immediately saw that familiar figure within the body of the Susanoo giant. Natsuo, you actually awakened the Manjekia Sharingan, Danzo's expression changed drastically. Well, long time no see, Elder Danzo. Natsuo's mouth curled up, his voice carrying a hint of coldness. I originally wanted to greet you in a different way. But after hearing your words from afar, I thought this way of chatting with you would be more appropriate. By the way, Elder Danzo, as Natsuo spoke, the giant Susanoo's body tilted slightly, instantly blocking the sunlight. What did you say you wanted to do with my children? Danzo and the other two were shocked, their faces filled with disbelief. The enormous figure and the fresh sword mark left by the slash put immense pressure on them. But Danzo quickly calmed down then opened his seemingly half-closed eye, and stared at Natsuo. Susanu Manjekyo Sharingan Ichiha Natsuo, you've hidden it very well. You're the one who destroyed my laboratory, right? The attack on the root laboratory had caused an excessive reaction from Kanoha, ultimately leading to the fourth Shinobi World War, and the mastermind behind all of this, despite the investigations by the Embu and Root, remained elusive. Danzo had also suspected the Shinobi within the village. But whoever it was seemed to lack the ability to attack the root laboratory, take away a large amount of scientific equipment and research materials, and leave without a trace. The Achiha had always been the least suspected, as at that time, Achiha Natsuo was known as the shame of the Jonin, with his strength considered to be at the level of a Chunin, making him the weakest Jonin. But now it's you, Natsuo. Danzo angrily exclaimed. Not just that attack on the root lab. Natsuo said calmly, with a hint of mockery in his eyes. Do you remember when you were bombed in the Shimura clan? Was that also you? Danzo widened his eyes. That was still an unsolved mystery. It's just that the scope of the impact was smaller. And upon closer inspection it seems that right before I was attacked, there was an assassination attempt against Natsuo. Well, I didn't expect you to have already acted against me. You really are an evil Ichiha. Danzo narrowed his eye, a hint of killing intent flashing. I should have strangled you long ago. Like how you incited Ichiha Itachi to annihilate my Ichiha clan. Natsuo retorted. Danzo remained calm. So you know about that too well, with your abilities. It's normal to discover some things. 
The reason why the third Hokage immediately dismissed Danzo after the Achiha clan massacre was mainly because, although the route and Achiha Atachi had both worked to eliminate any traces, time was so tight that any action they took would be noticed by the shinobi. Ninjas don't need to have evidence to act, they just need to find suspicion, motive and reason, and that's enough to convict someone. Unfortunately, Hiruza never wanted to listen to my advice and get rid of you from the beginning, Danzo said with a face full of regret. If it weren't for the third Hokage's words, Danzo, I am the Hokage, rejecting his suggestion to directly send Ninja to kill Natsuo. How could he let the root suffer such a great loss? Natsuo just smiled. At first, he was not as powerful as Danzo had imagined. Returning to Kanoha was actually a gamble, betting that the third Hokage wouldn't dare lay a hand on him, nor allow Danzo to do so. But he won the bet and even won the entire Achiha clan's inheritance which allowed him to gain such power in just a few years, Elder Danzo, rest assured. Natsuo's voice turned cold. I will send you to accompany the third Hokage, just as I sent him back then, but you still have to stay alive for a while. It was you who killed the third Hokage, Danzo's expression drastically changed. Fu and Torin's expressions also changed greatly. No wonder, no wonder I felt that Rasa shouldn't be able to achieve this level. Even if Hiruzen is weak and old, he wouldn't be unable to inflict any injuries on Gara. Danzo muttered slightly, his eyes filled with complexity. So, it was you who did it. Third Hokage Saratobi Hiruzen had a strange bond with Danzo, almost like Sasuke and Naruto. Although Danzo would always complain about how weak Hiruzen was, upon hearing the news of Hiruzen's death, he trembled and had a complicated expression on his face. Hiruzen was also quite mysterious. Despite often being at odds with Danzo, whenever others wanted to propose removing Danzo from his position, Hiruzen would always be the first to stand up and oppose it. This was probably the unique relationship between the two of them. Then, let me avenge Hiruzen. Danzo took a deep breath and opened his clothes, revealing an arm firmly trapped by metal. Fu, Torin, protect me. His right arm has been transplanted with a large number of Sharingan and Senja Hashirama cells. Whether it is the Sharingan or Hashirama cells, they are both highly unstable and consume a great amount of energy. If they were constantly activated, Danzo would have been exhausted to death long ago, so they were sealed away. In a real battle, he needs his subordinates to open the seal for him to unleash his full power. Fu and Torun also understand this, so they didn't hesitate to say, Yes, Danzo-sama. The next second both of them attacked together. Aburam Torun took off his gloves revealing his purple-black palm, the color of Nano poison insects. It is a secret technique of the Aburam clan, an ability that only Aburam Torun can master. Once it touches you, even if you are at cage level, death is inevitable. Bang. He fiercely punched towards Natsuo, but Natsuo just glanced at him indifferently, and the next second, Susanoo kicked him. However, after all, he is an expert at the elite Jonin level, and although he was already injured by Natsuo's previous attack, Torin desperately grabbed Susanoo's foot as blood began to flow from his mouth and nose, he probably won't survive after the battle. The part of his palm that made contact with Susanoo, suddenly started to change color. The originally deep purple Susanoo chakra slowly turned black and gradually crumbled away. The insects of the Aburam clan have the ability to devour chakra, so even a Susanoo constructed purely with chakra can be eaten away by their venomous bites. However, Natsuo just glanced at it, and didn't pay any more attention to this matter. After all Fu, it's difficult for my venomous insects to devour a chakra mass of this size. Quote Torin's mouth twitched, and he said, I'm really not suited for fighting against enemies like this. It takes a certain amount of time for the small nano-sized venomous insects to erode an arm. Although the insects of the Aburam clan have the ability to devour chakra, it is really too difficult for them to devour a giant Susanoo, that is tens of meters tall. As Torin held onto the Susanoo, Yamanaka Fu took the opportunity to quickly move behind the Susanoo. Mind-body switch technique. Yamanaka Fu sent his consciousness through the technique, but when he was about to enter Natsuo's mind, he saw two deep red eyes. EFFT. Yamanaka Fu spat out a mouthful of blood and collapsed weakly. What's wrong, Fu? Torun, who took advantage of Natsuo's pause due to Fu's technique to get away from the Susanoo, had a slight change in his expression. He used his protective suit to support Yamanaka Fu and asked, This guy, Yamanaka Fu, while spitting out blood, looked at Natsuo with a terrified expression and said, As soon as my consciousness attempted to enter his mind, I was directly suppressed by his formidable mental power. How can he have such terrifying mental power? However, regardless of how shocked the two of them were, it had no effect on Natsuo's actions. With a blink of his eyes, Susanu brandished a giant sword and brought it down. The wind pressure from the huge blade directly enveloped the two of them. The sharp edge of the sword created a gust of wind that felt like razor blades causing pain on the faces of the two. With one strike, Natsuo intended to kill the two of them. And, at this moment summoning Jutsu, Baku, Danzo finally couldn't sit still. Torun and Fu had very little time to engage in combat, 
and were almost instantly defeated. This meant that Danzo barely had time to remove the seal from his arm, before being forced to participate in the battle. So Danzo acted decisively. He summoned his personal summons and sucked fiercely towards Susanoo. In legend, Baku is said to be able to devour dreams and nightmares. When he opens his mouth and inhales, he can create a powerful suction force that inhales everything in his path, unaffected by the debris he inhales, while at the same time exhaling through his trunk. As soon as Baku appeared, he opened his mouth wide and emitted a powerful suction force. However, this force was unable to shake the Susanoo, but at the same time, Danzo also made his move. He moved quickly behind the Susanoo, and Danzo's right hand suddenly opened, and with the fluctuation of chakra, sharp wooden all stabbed at the Susanoo. Bang! The wooden punch hit Susanoo fiercely, making a loud sound. But it couldn't even break through Susanoo's defense. Although the attack couldn't break through the Susanoo's defense, it was still able to shake it a little. Intense vibrations came, causing Susanoo's sword to deviate and fall beside Yamanaka Fu and Aburin Torun. But they were still affected by the aftershocks of the sword attack, with countless wounds all over their bodies. Covered in blood, they were barely alive. Natsuo then turned to Danzo. Because he knew that Danzo had trump cards yet to be used, he had to control him as quickly as possible. Otherwise, when he realizes that he can't escape using the Izanagi, he might explode here and turn the scene into a full-scale explosion and affect Jugao and the others. If Izanagi is used together with reverse four symbols ceiling, wouldn't it mean that he can make unlimited explosions? When it explodes, do you use Izanagi, get close to someone, and then explode again? In the end he might end up catching Danzo, but his wives might end up dying. Natsuo, do you want to kill me? Danzo has never been a person who would let others handle him. Anyone who wants to touch it will pay a high price. You think you can kill me just because you possess the Manjekyo Sharingan? You're so naive. Danzo quickly turned his steps and ran directly towards the coast. Danzo, who normally had to be supported by a wooden stick when walking, was like a ghost swaying in the wind at an incredibly fast speed. Natsuo instantly understood Danzo's plan. He wanted to use his wives to restrain him, and even force him to die. They were all ninjas, and there was no distinction between honorable and dishonorable actions. Danzo makes a quick decision and quickly walks away. Natsuo quickly killed Baku who was holding back the Susanoo with a single slash, and then immediately chased after him. Ninjas moved at an extremely fast pace. But the enormous Susanoo, although seemingly slower than a ninja in movement with its massive size, each step covered the distance of a hundred steps for a ninja. With each step he took, the distance began to close rapidly. Damn it, Chiha! Upon noticing this, Danzo cursed inwardly. But his steps did not slow down at all. The moment Natsuo reached him, black flames suddenly lit up on Danzo's body. Manjekyo Sharingan technique, Amaterasu? Ah, Danzo cried out in pain, but soon his figure began to fade. Sharingan Kinjutsu, Izanagi. At the cost of consuming a Sharingan, it could make unfavorable events that happen to oneself within a certain period of time disappears if they never occurred, only choosing favorable outcomes to become reality. This was the most powerful weapon Danzo possessed. Danzo's figure appeared in the direction of the coast. As long as he manages to capture Natsuo's wives, he will be able to get out of this dangerous situation. The coast was right in front of him, and Danzo's cold heart became warmer. He was almost done, he had almost succeeded. Splat! Susanoo thrust out a sword, directly piercing through Danzo. Sharingan Kinjutsu, Izanagi. Danzo once again used the forbidden technique, and his figure faded. Danzo, suffering so many losses, lost his patience and appeared in front of the Susanoo. Would release. Spontaneous tree summoning. Huge vines seemed to grow from Danzo's right hand, and rolled towards the Susanoo. The vines quickly turning into a large tree that could almost block the path. At such a close distance, the power that Danzo's half-skilled would release can unleash is very powerful. Natsuo has been guarding against this move of his. As soon as Danzo showed signs of raising his right hand to face him, he quickly avoided it, leaving Danzo no chance to counterattack. Damn it, Chiha! Danzo cursed under his breath, waved his right hand and moved away from the large tree in his hand. He prepared to head towards the coast again suddenly, Natsuo's Sharingan moved rapidly. Danzo, who was familiar with Ichiha illusions, his eyelids twitched, and he quickly lowered his head. Especially the intact left eye was tightly closed for fear of being accidentally hit. Swoosh! Splat! Danzo looked at his chest in disbelief. Blood gushed from his wound reddening his clothes. Swoosh! Natsuo took out the ninja sword that pierced Danzo's heart, turned around and swung the sword at lightning speed. Ah, along with a scream, Danzo, he was behind Natsuo and about to attack him, lost his arm, cut off by Natsuo's ninja sword. What made Danzo even more panicked was that the few Sharingan that had not been used were already useless. Natsuo pinched Danzo's throat, picked him up, and said expressionlessly, You're a piece of trash that all you do all day is conspire against everyone. At first, I didn't care much about your participation in the Ichiha clan massacre, but you continued to bother me. So I decided it was time to take out the trash. While his brain was spinning, Danzo, who hadn't had time to use the last Izanagi, found himself sitting on a small stool. Natsuo picked up a kunai from the table casually and blew on the kunai. This is my illusion space. It was created based on my Manjakyo Sharingan technique. Tsukiyomi along with other secret techniques related to the mind. Let me tell you that you are the first to experience it. 
since I couldn't use it on other people for fear of destroying their consciousness. Also, Danzo is an Achiha. I want to tell you that Aizanagi is not perfect, and that that Kenjutsu also has great flaws. Think about it carefully. When your consciousness collapses, your soul is damaged, and you no longer have independent consciousness. Do you think Aizanagi can still save you? EFFT. The kunai penetrated Danzo's middle finger, like a large chopstick piercing bone and flesh, and split Danzo's left middle finger in half. Ah. Harsh, shrill screams erupted in space, and the pain that penetrated his soul, made Danzo unable to control himself. He had never experienced pain like this. Natsuo tested one of the effects of his space on Danzo, which consisted of all stimuli being amplified ten times. He let Danzo enjoy this pleasurable and painful torture. The second, Natsuo lifted another of Danzo's fingers, and then with the kunai, he split it in half. Then came the third, the fourth Danzo was not given any time or opportunity to ease his pain. The pain that penetrated deep into his soul increased tenfold, almost breaking Danzo's will. Sitting on the small stool, his body was almost twitching, and his intact left eye kept rolling upward. Perhaps it was uncomfortable to look at this eye, so Natsuo casually put the kunai into his eye socket. Your voice is ugly. So PFFFT tilted the base of his tongue and vocal cords were cut, directly depriving Danzo of the opportunity to make a sound. Once, twice Natsuo's speed is very fast. The kunai in his hand kept falling on Danzo. Natsuo needed Danzo to always be trapped in this kind of pain that penetrated his soul, and he couldn't escape. As the blood spread throughout Danzo's body, Danzo stopped moving completely. The person is not dead, but his will has collapsed, and his soul has been severely damaged. Upon exiting the illusory space, Natsuo took out Danzo's right eye. He then thought, I finally have Shisui's eye. The battle ended. Natsuo also needed to clean up the battlefield, especially Danzo. If he wasn't dealt with properly, Hashirama's cells would soon go berserk. Fortunately, although Natsuo wasn't particularly skilled, he still knew sealing techniques. After making some effort, he picked up Danzo's body, then went to the dock to meet Yugao and the others. They were still stunned, completely unresponsive. They had never seen Natsuo demonstrate his full power. Yugao was the first to react and then said, Natsuo, you're actually this strong. Yugao widened her eyes. Although I knew you had decent strength, I didn't expect you to be this formidable. Yukumo rolled his eyes and said, Yugao, be happy. At least you know a little about a husband's true abilities. When I married him, I thought that when I recovered from my illness, I would have to protect the Achiha clan myself. After they calmed down a bit, Yugao, who was once an Ambu and knows Danzo's position very well, said with a worried expression, Natsuo, you actually killed Elder Danzo, will this bring any negative impact on the Achiha clan? Does Tsunade-sama have any thoughts? Does Shimura and the Saratobi clan have any thoughts? Or should we just pretend this never happened? After all, with Danzo's style of doing things, no one should know that he came towards us however, Natsuo shook his head. There is no need. I actually came to the battlefield for this purpose, plus he hasn't died yet. Then, Natsuo along with his wives returned to the Kanoa camp and, on behalf of the vice commander, summoned all the shinobi present. When everyone was still curious about why Natsuo called so many people, Natsuo directly opened the sealed scroll containing the bodies of Aburam Torun and Yamanakafu, then discovered the stretcher where Danzo's body was in a vegetative state. Elder Danzo tried to attack me secretly, coveting the Sharingan of our Achiha clan. Because Elder Danzo attacked me together with other ninjas, I was forced to use Jinjutsu to defend myself. Unfortunately, Elder Danzo could not bear it and was left in a coma. According to the system, as the vice commander, I will become your leader. I have finished speaking. He slowly opened his eyes, revealing a pair of Manjekia Sharingan, emitting a powerful pressure. Who is in favor, and who is against? Inside the camp, the ninjas of Kanoha were dumbfounded. Their vice commander, who normally didn't care about anything, suddenly showed the commander's wounded body, directly stating, I left him in a coma. From now on, I will be the commander. Who agrees and who opposes this was too audacious. Many people instinctively wanted to say something to rebuke this act of rebellion. But that's the Sharingan, right? It is indeed the Sharingan. There are so many, and they are all three Tomo Sharingan. Where did Danzo find so many eyes? Have you forgotten about the Achiha clan massacre? It seems like you're the one who forgot. I remember that after the Achiha clan massacre, none of their bodies were buried. They were all directly incinerated. At that time, there were still many people who regretted it because they wanted to investigate the bodies with secret techniques. It's a pity that they were incinerated directly. It would have been great if we could use them as materials. I didn't forget. You're just too foolish. It's because they were incinerated that there are so many eyes appearing on Danzo, that's right. It's because the bodies of the Achiha clan were incinerated that there are so many eyes appearing on Danzo. Complete incineration makes it easier for the root shinobi to steal the eyes. But I remember that the incineration of the bodies was arranged by the third Hokage, and entrusted to the Ambu. A Jonin subconsciously said, but after he finished speaking, he suddenly realized it himself. The third Hokage probably knew about this. In other words, it was a collaboration between the third Hokage and Danzo. Several members of the ninja clans around him had angry expressions. Even some civilian ninjas had a trace of anger on their faces. The ninjas of his own village were killed by a trader ninja, and it was later claimed that their bodies were cremated. But in reality, 
were they taken by the village leader to obtain research materials, who could tolerate this. Although their strength was weak and they didn't have any KK Genkai, they generally wouldn't encounter such a situation, but they were still ninjas of Konoha. If Danzo could do such things to the Achiha clan, one of the two major clans in Konoha, then what he could do to them would be even more excessive. It's not just the Sharingan of our Ichiha clan. Take a closer look at Danzo's shoulder. Natsuo coldly reminded from the side. Shoulder. Everyone was stunned and looked over. There was a pale face, eyes tightly closed, and the nose and mouth only had a few outlines, as if it were a face filled with plastic. Very strange. But it's strange, this face seems somewhat familiar weight. First Hokage. The older generation of ninjas reacted and exclaimed. It's the face of the first Hokage. The crowd instantly exploded. Yes, it is definitely the face of the first Hokage. Yes, it really does look like the face on Hokage Rock. But why does Danzo's shoulder have the appearance of the first Hokage? Could it be? The people trembled and immediately noticed the Sharingan embedded in the arm, which led them to a certain realization. Danzo, he transplanted the cells of the first Hokage into his own body. Well, many ninjas actually didn't know how terrifying the cells of the first Hokage were in terms of erosion. Just a few cells could spontaneously form the face of the first Hokage. Subconsciously, they thought that Danzo had dug out the face of the first Hokage and pressed it onto his own arm. They were instantly filled with anger and shouted enraged. Danzo, how dare he treat the great first Hokage like this? That's the first Hokage. Although the expression the first Hokage is indecisive, Ichiha Madara is decisive has been circulating recently, and has somewhat reduced the prestige of the first Hokage, and increased the impression of Ichiha Madara. But, no matter what, he is the founder of Kanoha, who gathered countless shinobi. The first Hokage still holds unparalleled prestige in the hearts of the Kanoha shinobi. And now Danzo actually laid his hands on the head of the first Hokage. How could he do such a thing? He's so audacious. How could his audacity not be great? Do you still remember what happened at the Roots Laboratory a year ago? There were plenty of materials there as well. Someone coldly spoke, revealing the events that were sealed by the third Hokage. He dares to attack Kanoha's top ninja clans. Why wouldn't he dare to bully the declining Senju and Achiha? As soon as these words were spoken, the crowd fell silent. But in the eyes of each person, flames of anger flickered. On the other hand, Shikaku reflected for a moment and looked at Natsuo curiously. Vice Commander, are you saying that Danzo, along with Aburum Torun and Jomanaka Fu, the two elite Jonin from Root attacked you. May I ask how you managed to kill them? It's simple. Natsuo's answer was straightforward. Just with my own eyes. Only at this moment did all the ninjas present notice Natsuo's pupils that were different from the Sharingan. I will personally return to Kanoru and inform the Hokage about Danzo's matter. Natsuo's voice was calm, his gaze focused. And now, all of you will follow my orders. Are there any objections? His voice turned cold. The chilling power of the Manjekyo Sharingan was completely released, making it difficult for everyone to breathe even just by looking at it. They could feel an incomparable pressure. This cold and arrogant appearance is completely different from his previous appearance. Are you finally going to stop hiding your strength? Amayori, who had been living quietly in the camp, her belly growing bigger and bigger, sighed softly, feeling a thousand emotions. She has been married to Natsuo for so long, and has been familiar with Natsuo's strength from the beginning. And now, Natsuo is finally no longer hiding. He recklessly unleashes his eye power without any concern, and the chilling aura makes all the ninjas feel like they've entered hell, unable to help but tremble. We have no objections. Shikaku is the first to speak. According to the system, it should be Natsuo-sama who takes over the camp. That's right, I'm willing to follow Natsuo-sama's orders. Danzo is already dead. Someone must take control of the military power to stop Karigaka's attack. I also support it. Everyone speaks up one after another. Although it's chaotic, no one rashly opposes. The most formidable weapon of a ninja is strength. When it's difficult for you to even speak under the opponent's pressure, no matter what the opponent says, it's best to obediently listen. Very well. Natsuo smiles slightly, and the pressure on everyone suddenly dissipates. Then I will first arrange the defense, and then go back to Kanoha to solve the problem with Danzo. After these words are spoken, everyone looks at each other, hesitating. Do you really have to go back to Kanoha first, Natsuo-sama? Nara Shikaku's mouth twitches, and in the end, he can't help but speak. With Danzo's death, we also have some concerns. Is it appropriate for Natsuo-sama to leave his position and go back to Kanoha? It's not just inappropriate, it's extremely inappropriate. Where can you find someone who becomes the leader, takes on dangerous missions, and then just returns to the village like nothing happened? We are currently at war with Kurigika. Although it's not a full-scale battle, we have small skirmishes every three days and major battles every five days. What do we do without a leader? It's okay. I'm just going to report to the fifth Hokage, and I'll be back soon. Natsuo smiled faintly. And if you really encounter enemy attacks, it's okay. Just retreat and give up some territory. Anyway, when I come back, I will reclaim everything from Kurigika. Everyone wanted to argue but they didn't know how to speak up. Natsuo ignored them and went straight into his room. His wives had already started packing. A Mayuri silently walked over. Did anything happen at the campsite? Natsuo asked without turning his head. No. A Mayuri calmly replied. Danzo only targeted you. 
It seems he didn't pay attention to me. After all, he doesn't know you. Natsuo shook his head and chuckled. Your reputation isn't that great. He has seen you with his own eyes. Hearing this, Amayori became quite angry. Natsuo smiled slightly. In reality, he had made sure that Danzo didn't recognize her before bringing her to the battlefield. Otherwise, even if she stubbornly followed him, Natsuo would not have allowed her to come. After all, she was pregnant and just traveling long distances is already a risk even more so if Danzo knew who she was. But why do you insist on going to Kanoha? Amayori curiously asked. Even someone like me, who doesn't have much power, can see that a newly appointed leader should not leave their troops and return to the village. Aren't you worried about losing your leadership? Natsuo smiled. If Tsunade hadn't specifically asked me to support the battlefield against Karigaka, I wouldn't bother coming with leadership or without leadership. Sometimes power is much more important than authority. Amayori agreed with this. She was also the type of person who didn't care much about authority in Karigika. Although she had some subordinates, they were there to assist her with troublesome matters. She only wanted to rely on her own sword to control her own destiny. After thinking for a moment, Amayori asked, But you don't have to return to the village, do you? Do you have a special purpose? Yes. Natsuo smiled slightly, nodded, and looked towards the direction of Kanoha. You know, for Danzo to successfully transplant the Sharingan along with the first Hokage's cells required enormous funding, many experimental materials, equipment and test subjects. And it is impossible that he did it alone. It is most likely that the Hokage's other advisors supported him. So once the news of what Danzo has done is sent back to Kanoha, what do you think all the people involved will do? Amayori responded. They'll probably try to eliminate anything that links them to Danzo. Yes, they will try to do that. But now that Tsunade has regained most of Kanoha's power, she won't allow them to do that. Plus this also involves the Senju clan, so it will be much more ruthless. That's why this time I'm coming back to warn those old guys that they better hide in their burrows and not provoke me, or they'll end up like Danzo. Natsuo's goal was simple. First he was returning to Kanoha to leave the children who were born to the Snake Princess, and second he was to control the consequences that may occur after Danzo's death. Kanoha Village. Hokage residents countless Jonin with grim expressions, looked at the bodies below and at the unconscious Danzo, while the heads of the ninja clans gritted their teeth, their eyes filled with anger. Compared to the frontline camp ninjas, the ninja clan leaders hate the act of taking another clan's Keke Genkai even more. Tsunade's face also paled, and although she knew that it was normal for ninjas to carry out human experiments, since her grandfather Senju Toborama developed many of his techniques that way, that's why she pretended not to know that Danzo and the third Hokage were secretly conducting experiments on humans. But she didn't expect them to be so crazy. So many three Tomo Sharingan and Sasuke, who stood here as a special personnel, had flames in his eyes. The young boy spoke with extreme anger. I remember that the bodies of my Achiha clan members were clearly arranged to be incinerated by the third Hokage's Anbu. Why did our clan's eyes appear on this man? Fifth Hokage, can you give my Achiha clan an explanation for this? Although Sasuke was somewhat arrogant, he could still be considered a polite young boy. At this moment, he directly questioned Tsune, disregarding the presence of the clan leader, Natsuo, beside him. It can be seen that he was already angry to a certain extent. After all, Sasuke looked at the Sharingan on Danzo's arm, and his three Tomo began to spin, as if they were about to undergo a transformation. Among those Sharingan could be those of their parents. I know. Tsune sighed softly. The village will give the Achiha clan an explanation for this. At the same time, my Senju clan should also be given an explanation. Danzo not only obtained the three Tomo Sharingan, but also the cells of Senju Hashirama. Looking at Danzo's body in a vegetative state, Tsune couldn't help but look at Natsuo's expression. She wondered if Natsuo knew about these matters and was waiting for the opportunity to attack Danzo. The route must be thoroughly cleaned. Tsune took a deep breath and said, Yamanaka Anochi. Here, Hokage Sama. Yamanaka Anochi lowered his head and stood up. I command you to carefully investigate the memories of Danzo, Yamanaka Fu, and Aburam Torun. The focus is on the information about the route. Tsune took a deep breath and said, Even though I plan to disband the route, I can't let the village's assets go to waste. There may be some things in one of Root's laboratories. Everything must be returned to its rightful owner, especially the parts of the major clans. Tsune didn't say this out loud, but her words were unquestionable. The many leaders of the ninja clans present breathed a sigh of relief and felt a sense of agreement with Tsune. They had wanted to do this for a long time, but they were always blocked by the third Hokage before. The third Hokage truly a cancer of Kanoha. The individuals responsible must also face accountability. Tsune continued, especially Danzo's loyalists and the ninjas who have harmed Kanoha, they must be punished. A Jonin from the Shimura clan couldn't sit still and couldn't help but say, fifth Hokage Sama. The ninja world is currently in a war. Why not go easy on them and let them redeem themselves? The Shimura clan is very supportive of Shimura Danzo. Most of the Jonin in the clan are high-ranking members of the Root. This wave of accountability will be very painful. However, Tsune just coldly glanced at the Shimura Jonin and said, If we don't take strict measures in this situation, how can we gain the trust of the people? Why don't you ask the clan heads and Jonin of the major ninja clans in Kanoha 
If they are willing to go easy on them. The next second the ninjas of the Shimura clan felt countless gazes shooting at them like thorns with a pervasive sense of killing intent making their backs tingle. Go easy on them. What a joke. What do you think Danzo did to my clan back then? The Shimura clan's Jonin silently swallowed their saliva. It suddenly occurred to them that this was no longer the era when Danzo and the third Hokage were still around. Without the third Hokage suppressing the anger of the major clans, without Danzo's intimidating reputation, how could he have the capital to make others compromise? Especially considering that the experiments carried out by Danzo were using the remains of the fifth Hokage's grandfather. But the Shimura clan's Jonin paused for a moment and then decisively said, I think a lenient punishment should be given. Fifth Hokage Sama, the power of the root is formidable, and there are too many ninjas implicated by Danzo. Are you really going to push Kanoha into chaos? This is a threat, but there is no other way. Although speaking up this time would make their own clan unable to survive among the major ninja clans, and in front of the fifth Hokage. But the Shimura Jonin knew very well what happened to Orochimaru's subordinates when Orochimaru defected. Just look at Mitarashienko. Clearly, she was a genius who was worthy of being a disciple of the Sanin, but because of the village's suppression, her promotion was forcibly halted, and her strength could not increase for years. The resources of her clan were suppressed from all sides. It wasn't until she sold herself to the Achiha that her strength began to improve again. However, in reality, Anko's experience was the least severe during that turmoil. Although Midarashi Anko was Orochimaru's disciple, Orochimaru's actions before leaving had already shown that he and this disciple did not have the same opinion. So compared to other silently disappearing ninjas, Anko was lucky enough to survive without undergoing excessive scrutiny and surveillance and her clan was not completely suppressed. That was already very fortunate. But unlike Enko, the Shimura clan cannot be separated from their relationship with Danzo, no matter what. If Kanoha continues to pursue this, the entire clan will likely be implicated, and the Shimura clan will probably be completely destroyed. Fifth Hokage Sama, Shimura Jonin took a deep breath and said seriously, Please consider carefully before taking action. Hokage Sama, if you dare to make a move against us, we won't just sit back and wait for death. Don't forget, we are currently in the midst of the Great Shinobi World War, and Kanoha is at a significant disadvantage. Upon hearing this, even Tsune was at a loss for words. The other clan leaders glared angrily but were unable to speak. Because no matter how angry everyone is, Kanoha does not have the ability to suppress internal strife while also resisting external enemies. Compromise is an inevitable necessity, this is reality. Even if our hearts are filled with anger, reality cannot be changed. And, at this moment show leniency. You have quite the idea. Natsuo suddenly sneered, then turned to Tsunade and the other clan leaders and said, It seems that the disappearance of the corpses of the members of the Achiha clan after their annihilation and the desecration they suffered afterwards may also be related to Shimura Danzo. After all, if you think about it carefully, with just Achiha Atachi alone, even if his strength is strong enough to exterminate the entire Achiha clan, it shouldn't be possible for the Kanova Shinobi to have no reaction before the Achiha clan was wiped out, right? Was there someone in the village cooperating with Achiha Atachi? And there is a high possibility that it was Shimura Danzo. Sasuke widened his eyes, his body trembling. So there are still so many doubts about the annihilation of his clan by his brother. Is someone helping him with this matter? On the other hand, the leaders of most of the ninja clans remain silent. Of course most of them noticed that there was something wrong with the genocide of the Achiha clan, but did they dare to even think about it with the third Hokage and Danzo handling the matter? Not to mention Shimura Danzo, even the third Hokage may attack them if they investigate the matter, but now you're saying it so clearly Natsuo. Aren't you afraid that the situation isn't chaotic enough? Tsunade frowned. Natsuo, are you suggesting? What I mean is, my Achiha clan was persecuted, leading to the extermination of the entire clan. Natsuo's mouth curved into a cold smile. So was the current clan leader of the Achiha clan and the only survivor within the clan. It's normal for me to lose my mind out of anger, right? Now, no matter what kind of revenge I take, it's normal, right? As soon as he finished speaking before the Jonin of the Shimura clan could react, he instantly appeared in front of him. Splurt. Natsuo's arm went straight through the heart of the Shimura clan Jonin. Natsuo slowly retracted his arm, and blood instantly sprayed out, dyeing the entire conference hall red. Natsuo, what are you doing? Tsune widened her eyes. Kill a Kanoha ninja right in front of me. Although the Shimura Jonin deserved to die, the course of action regarding the Danzo incident has not yet been decided. However, the next second the pattern of the Manjekyo Sharingan appeared in Natsuo's eyes. Manjekyo Sharingan technique, Amaterasu. Then black flames began to appear on the body of the Shimura clan member, and in a matter of seconds the body disappeared into nothingness. Everyone was shocked. What is Natsuo doing? He actually killed someone in front of the Hokage. Natsuo, what the hell are you trying to do? You just killed a Kanoha ninja. Do you want to rebel? Mitakado Hamura and Yutatane Kaharu finally came to their senses, and looked at Natsuo angrily. Even Sasuke was stunned. Even he understands the consequences of directly attacking in front of the Hokage. Could Natsuo really want to become a traitor? Natsuo snorted in disdain. 
What's the point of keeping this tumor? Stop bothering me and worry about yourselves, it's obvious that Danzo got support from people in high positions within Kanoha. Before they could say anything, Tsunade exploded first. Bang. Tsunade stomped her foot causing the Hokage residents to shake. Yutaten Kaharu, Mitakado Hamura, do you two know about this? Tsunade was tired of these two old men, added to the news of what Danzo did and Natsuo's recklessness, she could only vent to these two and looked at them extremely angry. Once these two continue their nonsense, she will definitely shake her fist without hesitation. No, 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 Tsunade, don't be impulsive, we were just surprised by Natsuo's attack. Mitakado Hamura denied repeatedly. Originally they just wanted to hold Natsuo responsible to prevent them from being implicated in the Danzo matter. Seeing that the situation was going in the wrong direction, they quickly denied their relationship with Danzo. Tsunade's mouth twitched, but as Hokage she couldn't allow Natsuo to act recklessly. Although it is obvious that the Shimura clan is very involved in Danzo's affairs, they cannot be killed directly without accepting the village's judgment in the end, things ended so dramatically. Tsunade told Natsuo that he will stay at the Echiha clan residence until his punishment is decided, and then dismiss everyone. She has to return to deal with the consequences of Danzo's actions, and Natsuo's attack on a member of the Shimura clan. Plus she has to investigate the people involved with Danzo. The members of the Shimura clan also left in silence not even daring to mention what would happen to Danzo, now that he had technically been left in a vegetative state. Natsuo's attack on one of their members and Tsunade's subsequent reprimand of the two advisors was a wake-up call for them. This Kanova is no longer the Kanoa of before. The previous third Hokage took them very seriously, but Tsunade is different, this is a very strong shadow. The new age has no ship that can transport them. As Sasuke walked back with Natsuo to the Echiha clan residence, he looked confused. After thinking about it he realized that Natsuo was very powerful. He was able to kill Danzo and two other elite Jonin, and was also able to instantly kill a Jonin from the Shimura clan. Does this mean that he already has the ability to take revenge on Itachi? But wasn't I given the task of taking revenge on Itachi? Now it sounds like Itachi's massacre of the clan was also shrouded in mystery, and Natsuo his mind was in chaos, feeling a headache. Residents of the Echiha clan, underground laboratory. The space was meticulously organized, full with jars, books, and scientific equipment. Kabuto, focused on a work table, is examining some blood samples when the door bursts open, revealing Natsuo with a smile holding Danzo's limp body on his shoulder. Kabuto, I have a small gift for you. Kabuto turns quickly, surprised by Natsuo's arrival with Danzo on his shoulder. Natsuo-sama, it is an honor. What is happening? Natsuo replied with a laugh. Let's say Danzo decided to take a long rest, you know. A long sleep. Kabuto looks at Danzo's body with a neutral expression, disguising any emotion. I understand what do you want me to do with this? Oh, I just wanted to give you a chance to test your skills, you know. The experiments with the Hashirama cells, and that Sharingan arm Danzo has. I want to see if we can improve the revival number one potion a little. Kabuto nods, a spark of interest in his eyes. It will be an interesting challenge, Natsuo-sama. Although I must ask, are there any restrictions on my methods? Ah, just one, Danzo must live on. But you know what? Death would be too easy for him. I want you to see if you can make him aware of his surroundings while he's here. So, do what you want but make sure he stays in this world as much as possible. Kabuto bows respectfully, hiding a subtle smile at Natsuo's peculiar request. Understood, Natsuo-sama. I will do my best to fulfill your wish. Natsuo places Danzo's body on an examination table with a nonchalant gesture. I knew I could count on you. Well, I have to meet with the Hokage-sama, so Danzo will be in your care. Kabuto begins to meticulously analyze Danzo's body, hiding his thoughts about the strange situation as he immerses himself in experimentation. Natsuo then headed to the Hokage residence to meet with Tsunade. When he entered the office Tsunade glared at him. Natsuo chuckled and walked over to Tsunade's side. However, Tsunade continued to glare at him fiercely and said, what were you thinking when you killed someone in front of me? Do you think I don't have enough problems behave? With that said, Tsunade pushed Natsuo who was too close to her. Natsuo looked at Tsunade out of the corner of his eye and thought, so fierce. Tsunade continued to glare at Natsuo, but she was also worried about the situation. Natsuo had revealed Danzo's nonsense, but then he killed a Shimura clan ninja in front of everyone. What should they do next? Although the Shimura clan deserves severe punishment, they should not be killed without being convicted first. Furthermore, it is obvious that the Shimura clan was not the only clan involved in the corruption of Kanohu during the third Hokage's rule. Seeing the tangled Tsunade, Natsuo spoke. I know you are worried that the Shimura clan will react violently due to Danzo's death, and that I may retaliate against them. But you can use this opportunity to consolidate your power. We all know that there is no way that the Saratobi, Shimura, Yutatane and Mitakado clans have not been involved in the corruption of Danzo and the third Hokage. The first thing you must do is disband the root and gather evidence. Then take advantage of this to remove the two annoying elders who constantly hinder you. Furthermore, you can offer the clans involved the option of going to the battlefield against Kumogaka and redeeming their mistakes with military exploits, and guarantee that I will not seek revenge for Danzo's affairs as long as they behave and do not provoke me. Tsunade looked at Natsuo, hesitated for a moment, and said, Okay, I know all that. 
I'll put your matters aside for now, and focus on resolving the consequences. Then Tsune performed a special seal, and after a few seconds, an Anbu appeared half kneeling in front of her. Tell Nara Shikaku to come into my office. Yes, Hokage Sama. After answering the Anbu disappeared in the blink of an eye. Not long after, Shikaku knocked on the door and then entered Tsune's office. He then said, Hokage Sama needs me for something. You will lead the Anbu and go to the root base, from now on the root will be dissolved. I need you to coordinate the entire operation and take care of those who are absolutely loyal to Danzo. Then the remaining members will reintegrate into the Anbu. Due to Danzo's methods, of course the root members who are absolutely loyal to him, cannot stay in Kanoha, since they know too many secrets, and if they rebel they can cause a lot of trouble. Although many ninjas were forced to enter the root, there are still many ninjas who are absolutely loyal to it. After learning of Danzo's fate and the dissolution of the root, who knows what they might do. They are completely unstable elements, and it is normal for them to betray the village at any time. Understood Hokage Sama. Shikaku replied and then left the office. Shem PH? After Shikaku left, she snorted coldly, then looked at Natsuo and said, Let me ask you, I told you that before doing anything, you should first stabilize Karigika's front line. So how did you end up here? When I arrived at the battlefield I did exactly that as soon as I arrived. Natsuo smiled. I was just thinking about returning to Kanova quickly and solving the problems with Danzo before immediately returning to the battlefield. I didn't expect you to make me stay. I thought you would send me back immediately. You dare to say that. Tsunade's anger surged. You actually attacked a Kanoha ninja in front of me, the Hokage, and you thought I was going to send you away right away. Do you still see me as the Hokage in your eyes? I didn't directly attack you, so you should be grateful. Oh, thank you then. Natsuo smiled. You Tsunade's anger made her stomach ache. She waved her hand fiercely, glared at Natsuo angrily but had to clean up the mess caused by Natsuo's actions. Facing the Kanoha ninja who witnessed the turmoil caused by Danzo and Natsuo, worked hard to calm them down. At the same time, he had to coordinate the dissolution of the root and handle the interrogations of the members to ensure that no problems arose later. After gathering the evidence that Danzo kept at the root base, she met with the two advisors the new leader of the Saratobi clan, and a representative of the Shimura clan. After half convincing and threatening them, they agreed to send most of their members to the battlefield on the condition that she would not continue investigating corruption cases during the third Hokage's rule. Tsunade, who dislikes working, had to work hard until late at night. Finally, she finished her work and returned home. And before entering Natsuo appeared next to her, you better sleep obediently at the door tonight. Don't come inside. Tsunade looked at Natsuo and then quickly entered her house, then ran to where her daughter was. Looking at the angelic sleeping face, Tsunade, who was under a lot of pressure at work, finally felt a bit alive. After Natsuo entered the room, the little baby opened her eyes, the next moment a special energy was released from her. Then Natsuo felt a sense of connection that he had never experienced before. The room seems to glow with a soft, comforting light as Natsuo approaches Hikari, who has just opened her eyes. As he extends his hand towards her, a flash of energy seems to flow between them, and Natsuo feels an inexplicable force being transmitted to his daughter, similar to the effects of the wrench in Okanke. A current of power, warm and comforting, establishes itself between father and daughter in an instant. Although surprised, his face lights up with a smile full of amazement and joy. Since he notices that he is constantly transmitting mental and physical energy to his daughter, he even vaguely feels that part of the lineages integrated into his body are being transmitted. Although the process is very slow and does not affect his own strength, over time his children can awaken their bloodlines or even awaken new Kekei Genkai. The reason behind this connection with Hikari may be because Natsuo's children have a kind of special connection with him, and when combined with the wrench no Kenke, there was a kind of mutation in the ability. The influence of Hikari's talent and the special nature of the Renshu, no Kenke ability granted to Natsuo merged in a way that no other son experienced. Then Natsuo notices that this connection exists with all of his children, but the reason why it has not yet manifested, could be due to the complexity of genetic inheritance, and the different talents that each of his children possess. Some may require more time for their energies to match and harmonize similarly to Hikari's. Tsune didn't notice anything unusual between Natsuo and her daughter. After seeing that her daughter had gotten up she smiled at Hikari. The baby babbled and was very cute. Although Tsune had to worry about Natsuo, worry about the village, and deal with the joint attacks of the major nations, she was exhausted. But when she saw the cute little face of the baby, she felt as if everything had become easier. Even though she only glanced at it, she felt as if no one could defeat her now Tsune regained her spirit. Meanwhile Natsuo immerses himself in the mental connection he shares with his daughter. There is no need for words, it's as if his thoughts were intertwined, and he felt a kind of comforting peace, as he watched his daughter babble. Together, they generate an aura of complicity and affection that seems to transcend physical barriers. I remember that babies can call for their mothers when they are a few months old, Tsune laughed softly, stroking Hikari's cheek with her finger. Come on, say mama. The baby blinked her beautiful big eyes. Dada, Tsune, Hikari, you are amazing. Natsuo exclaims, watching how the girl responds with a melodious giggle. Natsuo begins to tickle Hikari, 
who laughs out loud as she tries to escape her father's fingers. Dada, 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 the child happily called out. Meanwhile Tsunade's face became more and more somber. Natsuo, come here. Ha, huh. what's up? Die. Ha, huh. Natsuo faced Tsunade's fist attack with a bewildered expression. She really went all out using even her chakra enhanced strength. And not only that, while they were fighting she screamed. You stole my daughter. You stole my daughter. Natsuo looked innocent. But he could only defend himself against Tsunade's madness move by move. It wasn't his fault the bond formed instantly as soon as he approached Hikari. Besides, isn't it normal for him to be close to her daughter? Natsuo sighed lightly. Tsunade vented her grievances fiercely and then turned and ran back into the room. But it didn't take long before she came out again, still angry. Natsuo, you stole my daughter again. Why is she only calling you now? And then she swung her fist. Natsuo, Natsuo thought. I was thinking of returning to the Ichiha residence, but seeing Tsunade's unreasonable temper, if I don't give her a punishment, it seems she won't come down. That night, the Senju clan's house was in turmoil. The surrounding major shinobi clans were worried that Natsuo and Tsunade had separated and started fighting. The village cannot bear any more internal conflicts. The next day, many clan leaders gathered at the Hokage's office. After a day of effort, most of the root ninjas had been gathered and were being monitored by everyone. After it was confirmed that these people were loyal to Danzo, they were basically doomed, as unstable elements could not be allowed to exist within the village. But still there were some root ninjas who noticed that something was wrong. When the cursed tongue eradication seal disappeared. So before the village ninjas arrived they had disappeared. Clearly, they had decided to defect. Tsune didn't hesitate to label these people as rebels. But she found herself in a passive position. Apparently according to the information provided by Natsuo. He may have damaged Danzo's consciousness and soul. With his Manjekyo Sharingan technique. Which caused the cursed tongue eradication seal to be released. Alerting the root ninjas that something had happened to Danzo. Fifth Hokage, we must quickly adjust the defense arrangements in the three major battle zones. Nara Shikaku said, the betrayal of the root Enbu will lead to the leak of a large amount of intelligence information to other countries. If we don't rearrange the defense, the losses will be severe yes. I know Tsune took a deep breath, her expression serious. I have already informed Jureya and the others that the defense arrangements in the three major battle zones will be changed. But this also means that many of the fortifications that were previously built cannot be used. They will also leak a lot of information about hidden logistics transfer points. And we will have to do more to ensure the security of the front supply lines. Clearly, this is a serious loss for Kinoha, which is already at a disadvantage. And all of this it's Natsuo's fault. Tsune glared fiercely at Natsuo. Natsuo, however, was indifferent and responded with a provocative look. This guy, Tsune was even more angry. I'm not worried about Kumogaka. Nara Shikaku shook his head. Jiraiya Sama is powerful, and there are also the most Kanoa shinobi there. Even if they lose the advantage of intelligence, they can still hold the line. I'm not worried about Sanagaka either. They seem satisfied with the current results, and are strengthening their defenses. But as for Karigika Nara Shikaku side lightly, Suned Sama, according to intelligence, many root members have escaped in the direction of the battlefield against Karigika. Previously, Karigika's defense line was also under Danzo's control. I am afraid that the information leak here will be the most serious. There is no capable person in charge over there, isn't it a bit? He hesitated to speak, but his attitude was already clear. Should we consider sending Natsuo to this place and let him redeem himself? Other ninjas also expressed their opinions one after another. Although they didn't say it directly, their words emphasizing the shortage of manpower on the battlefield and the urgent need for a skilled person to be stationed there have already shown their attitude. They hope that Natsuo will solve the problems he has caused by going to the battlefield to stabilize the front against Karigika. There are many reasons for the ninjas not to continue with the issue of the problem caused by Natsuo. On the one hand, Natsuo got rid of Danzo and solved an important problem for everyone, especially the ninja clans of which Danzo always kidnapped his most talented members to enter the route. Secondly, the Ichiha clan is the biggest victim of Danzo's actions. The Ichiha clan has been reduced to only Natsuo and Sasuke. It's only natural that he would seek revenge against Danzo, right? Thirdly, and most importantly, Natsuo is strong. Although many ninjas did not recognize the change in Natsuo's eyes before burning the Shimura clan member, but ninja clans with members who lived during Ichiha Madara's era, still recognize what those eyes meant. Those eyes allow that Shiha Madara to face the first Hokage Senja Hashirama. A strong person is always someone people can rely on. Even at Shiha Madara, who indirectly caused Senja Hashirama's death, was remembered by many ninja. When the first Shinobi World War broke out, wishing in their hearts that he was still in the village. In the minds of the top leaders of the ninja clans, Natsuo's strength may not match that of a Chihamadara, but he is definitely very strong.
With such combat power, even if there are some faults, as long as he is willing to protect everyone, it is acceptable. Do you also prefer Natsuo? Tsunade's eye twitched feeling dissatisfied. She slammed the table hard. Don't even think about it. Killing a fellow Kanoha ninja who hasn't been convicted, this precedent shouldn't be set. He has to stay in Kanoha now, and not think about going anywhere else. Everyone. Everyone looked confused, completely unaware of why Tsunade was so angry. Just yesterday, Tsunade seemed to be taking a lenient attitude towards Natsuo, not even subjecting him to any punishment. So why did everything change so suddenly today? Natsuo, upon hearing this, couldn't help but smirk. Kurigika headquarters. Are you saying that Kanoha has a very powerful expert? Terumi Mei looked at Manjetsu with a serious expression. Yes. Manjetsu sighed. That Achiha Natsuo is really terrifying. If he hadn't decisively given up the hero Mekure, he might have been killed by him in that short confrontation. He couldn't feel the slightest possibility of winning. And, if the records of the Hazuki clan are correct, that person has the same eyes as Achiha Madara. The Kurigika ninjas suddenly became solemn. Has another Achiha appeared as powerful as Achiha Madara? He probably isn't as strong as Achiha Madara. Manjetsu noticed the expressions of the crowd and said, Otherwise, I wouldn't have been able to escape from his hands. But it's still dangerous. Ichiha Terumi Mei pondered for a while. Suddenly, an Anbu appeared and whispered a few words in hurry. Terumi Mei's expression changed slightly, then she followed the Anbu. After a while, she returned. Just now, a ninja who has defected from Kanoa brought information. Terumi Mei's expression became serious. And the identity of the enemy who defeated Manjetsu has been confirmed. It is indeed the current leader of the Ichiha clan, Ichiha Natsuo. He seems to be hiding something. Or rather, he is truly an Ichiha. Despite fooling around with women every day, he still possesses such strength to Rumi Mei side lightly. He has already killed Shimura Danzo. To Rumi Mei side as she recounted the news brought by the defected root ninjas. The expressions of the crowd suddenly became serious. First defeating Manjetsu, then killing Danzo. All this added to the fact that he has the same eyes as Achiha Madara. But Mizukich sama according to what you said, that Achiha Natsuo is now trapped in Kanoha village by the fifth Okage. A ninja present immediately understood the key point. So, does that mean that on our battlefield there is no powerful Kanoha ninja leading their troops? That's right. Terumi Mei nodded. The information brought has been confirmed, and it seems that Kanoha's troops do not have a commander. There really are no higher level ninjas on the Kanoha side. Doesn't that mean that the prosperous land of fire is opening up to us? The Kiri ninja's eyes lit up. The land of water is an island nation with decent strength, but every time they reach out to the mainland, they are always beaten back. And now there is an opportunity to defeat the Kanoha Shinobi and swallow up a large amount of land. They couldn't sit still. Mizukage sama let's attack. Yes, how dare they have internal conflicts right before the battle. The people of Kanoha really underestimate us. That's right. And whether Natsuo is powerful or not, let's teach them a lesson first. And what if it's an Achiha? Not every Achiha is Achiha Madara. Everyone was extremely excited. Terumi Mei also said without hesitation. I think so too. Everyone, launch the attack. Show Kanoha the strength of Kurigika. Yes, Mizukage. Sama. Everyone excitedly responded. Terumi Mei gave consecutive orders, and everyone received their orders, and planned to increase the intensity of the attack. On the other hand, Manjetsu hesitated for a long time. Finally, when everyone left and only Terumi Mei remained, she couldn't help but say, Mizukage Sama, I think Natsuo may not be as. Although he may not compare to a Chihamadara, his strength should not be underestimated. What if Kanoha sends him to the battlefield again? Manjetsu looked worried. Terumi Mei fell silent for a moment and said, I have also considered what you're thinking. But now is indeed the best time to attack. You also know that the more advantage we have in the initial stages, even if we give up some land later, the more room we have to negotiate besides, we might not necessarily lose. Terumi Mei's eyes were firm and bright. Not every Achiha is Achiha Madara. I, Terumi Mei, am not weak either. Manjetsu breathed a sigh of relief at her words. Yes, not every Achiha is named Achiha Madara. Although Natsuo is not weak, our Mizukich-sama is also a strong person. We might not necessarily lose. Kurigika immediately launched an attack. Terumi Mei took action personally, releasing lava release and boil release consecutively. Hazuki Manjetsu, carrying the Kabutaari, Nyubari and Shibuki, also moved across the battlefield. Manjetsu moves with deadly grace, wielding the three swords masterfully as the ninjas advance towards him. Using the Kabutaari, a massive sword with an axe on one end and a mace on the other, Manjetsu uses his weight to break through the ninjas' defenses, shattering the barriers they attempt to erect. Meanwhile, the Nobari, the sewing sword, shines with Manjetsu's every precise movement. He takes every opportunity to weave a deadly web among the ninjas, trapping them and rendering them defenseless, before delivering accurate blows with the Kabutaori. Suddenly, Manjetsu shifts focus from him to the Shibuki, an explosive sword. By skillfully manipulating it, he slams the ground creating shock waves that destabilize his opponents. Each impact of the Shibuki sends the ninja flying, breaking their ranks and wreaking havoc among them. Manjetsu's deadly dance with the three swords is a display of skill and strategy. He combines the brute strength of the Kabutaori, the lethal precision of the Nibari, and the explosive impact of the Shibuki to take on his adversaries. With a unique blend of technique and strength, 
With every move, he leaves his mark on the battlefield, making Kanoha's ninjas recoil from his might. He was the only one who could use all seven ninja swords, a unique genius. Although most of the mystical swords of the seven swordsmen of the mist had been lost. Kiba is in the possession of Ringo Amayori. The Kubakirabocho is in the possession of Momochi's abuser. The Samahada is in the possession of Hoshigaki Kisum. And the Hiromekure was taken by Natsuo. But Hazuki Manjetsu can still recover the remaining three swords with a scroll in his possession. And although he is not as strong as when he has the Hiromekure, he still possesses cage level combat power. Kanoha also made a great effort. But even with a member of the Nara clan as temporary leader, who was second only to Shikaku in strategy, setting up several ambushes, and using explosive tags as traps, managing to sacrifice many Kiri ninjas, they were finally defeated step by step. In the final analysis, there was a gap between the high-level combatants. Didn't Natsuo say he would be back soon? How come the enemy has already reached this point? But he still hasn't come. The Nara clansmen cursed but had to continue fighting, and trying to minimize the speed of the front line's collapse. The only thing he could do was constantly request reinforcements from Kanoha. However, it wasn't just the front against Karigaka that had problems. The root ninjas also leaked information to the front line against Kumogaka and Sunagaka. Because these people were absolutely loyal to Danzo, after thinking he had died they went crazy. Which led them to leak information on all battlefronts. The root ninjas were very decisive, showing no mercy when it came to selling Kanoha's information. This was even more impactful than when Orochimaru defected, because although Orochimaru also targeted Kanoha in some aspects, he didn't sell information to all of Kanoha's enemy countries like they did. Or rather, this was actually the legacy left by Danzo. Under Danzo's leadership, Root prioritized its own interests. For the sake of Root's interests, they had betrayed Kanoha's own people more than once or twice. But previously, Danzo was still in charge. Besides his actions to become Hokage himself, he did prioritize Kanoha's interests, and wouldn't allow others to erode Kanoha. However, these Root ninjas did not have the same loyalty and love for the village. Danzo is willing to sacrifice Kanoha's ninjas for their own good to become Hokage, so why can't they betray the village to avenge Danzo? Plus Tsunade started hunting them so they needed Chaos to escape the chase. After receiving the information from the Root Ninjas, the Kumo Ninjas were momentarily stunned. What? Ichiha Natsuo is actually a cage level expert. He's really good at hiding. The fourth rakage was dumbfounded. The others also widened their eyes with an expression of disbelief. What should we do about Samyu's mission? With someone of that level in the Ishiha clan, how can we obtain their bloodline? The fourth rakage became somewhat irritable. He had originally planned to send Samyu undercover to the Ichiha clan, gather information on his and Kanoha's defenses. They would then launch a direct attack using a team of elite jonin to capture Ichiha Natsuo and bring him back to Kumogaka. With Ichiha Natsuo's ability to have children, they could rebuild the Ichiha clan within Kumogaka. But now that Natsuo's strength has been exposed, how can her mission be completed? Rakage Sama, we don't have time to think about these things now. Elite Jonin C said, The Root Ninjas have already provided us with information about the Kanoha forces we are facing. This is a great opportunity. Please make a decision, Rakage Sama. The others immediately spoke up. Please make a decision, Rakage Sama. This is simply the best time to attack. I understand. The fourth Rakage took a deep breath and then immediately increased the intensity of the attack pressing forward with his army. Although Jiraiya's strength was not weak, and his forces were the strongest among the three major fronts, they had lost the information and suffered consecutive defeats. On the other hand, Samagaka was very mysterious. They also got information from the Root Ninjas, but strangely, there was no change in their behavior. After receiving the report from the Root Ninjas, Sanagaka simply received the information and did nothing else, as if the information was somewhat irrelevant. Well, you can't say that they haven't made any moves. While they did not make any strategic arrangements, they suddenly gathered many masters from the Land of Wind. Then they made a big fuss, so Tamari would learn etiquette, history, how to behave properly in front of a large crowd, how to manage a large estate, arts and music. Tamari was confused. Clearly, we are at war, and I can accept practicing some ninjutsu. But what kind of training is this? However, when the Suna ninjas heard this news, their morale rose. No wonder he is the fourth Kazakij. He has the victory in his hands. Yes, he even has time to educate his own children. This is proof that our chances of winning are extremely high. That's right. The Kazakij has already seen the dawn of victory, whether it's Kanoha, Kumo, or Kiri, all under his calculations. The high-level officials of other ninja villages were also shocked when they learned this information. Kazakij Rasa suddenly made a big fuss about educating his own children. Could it be to boost the morale of the Suna ninjas? It seems so, look at how ordinary Suna ninjas are excited, and their morale is rising, Rasa is so calculating. It looks like he's going to make a decisive move. We need to be on guard. Rasa, I just found out that Natsua seems to be under house arrest in Kanoha, and is being treated unfairly. I want to increase my bargaining power, and see if I can bring Natsua back to Sunagaka. I have a damn plan, but Rasa's ability to strategize, which allows him to achieve maximum benefits with minimal sacrifices, has already made many ninjas wary. Due to the leak of information on the fronts against Kumogaka and Kurigika, more pressure was placed on the already weak Kanoha. This can't go on like this. Tsunade saw it very clearly. 
but could only curse Shimura Danzo and Natsuo for causing so much trouble. Apart from that, she couldn't do much because the manpower in the village is really tight. Now Konoha is outnumbered. Although they still have the forces of ordinary ninjas, the problem is that they lack high-level ninjas who can go to the front. At this time, Nara Shikaku and others once again suggested using Natsuo. Natsuo-sama was just blinded by anger, and his actions are understandable. Nara Shikaku advised earnestly. I hope Hokage-sama can understand Ichiha's predicament and, considering Ichiha's contributions to Konoha, deal with him leniently, and let him redeem himself. Tsunade wanted to continue refusing. However, as the situation in the war changed, Tsunade has enough excuses for Natsuo to redeem himself for his foolishness, without affecting Konoha's public opinion. During dinner that day, Tsunade said to Natsuo, Natsuo, now you realize how much trouble your actions caused. Natsuo responded nonchalantly, yes, I realize that. Hearing Natsuo's tone, Tsunade's expression changed. But she still said, Since you recognize your mistake, I will forgive you this time. Go to the battlefield against Kurigika and redeem yourself. Why should I redeem myself? Natsuo looked at Tsunade indifferently. Shimura Danzo deserved death and everyone knows it. As for killing the member of the Shimura clan, at most I can give them compensation. If they still insist on continuing to look for a culprit, I will simply threaten them, so that they will drop the matter. Tsunade's heart skipped a beat. Not good. The concept that a Konoha shinobi should serve Konoha was deeply ingrained in her heart, and she had never encountered someone like Natsuo who didn't care about Konoha. But Tsunade recovered quickly. Seeing that Natsuo didn't care about Konoha, she tried to offer him benefits. What price do you want to go to the battlefield? Tsunade's expression was solemn. There are a limited number of cage-level ninjas in Konoha. Unless Tsunade herself acts personally, the only person who can be mobilized is Natsuo. What do you think? Natsuo chuckled, his eyes scanning Tsunade's body. Yu Tsunade immediately understood that Natsuo wanted her to have another child. Then she became angry and raised her fist. Natsuo didn't mind, after defending against each attack, he just smiled and walked to the side. Don't be fooled by Tsunade's exaggerated reaction now, but given the current situation, she will compromise sooner or later. Why should he sacrifice himself for the land of fire without receiving anything in return? Did Konoha cease to exist just because the other nations took territory from the land of fire? The only ones who benefit or harm from this war are the daimyos. Natsuo continued to stay calmly at Tsunade's house, without any rush. He could use this time to accompany Hikari. Natsuo really doesn't need to be in a hurry to get involved in this war. All of his wives have already separated from the Konoha ninja combat system, and now the Achiha clan's business is not only limited to the land of fire, so this war will not affect his lifestyle. Plus all the people Matsuo cares about are in the Achiha clan residence, and Konoha will not be destroyed by this war. No matter how cruel the war is, it has nothing to do with him. While Natsuo was in Konoha waiting for Tsunade's response, Ichikishima and Tagorom also gave birth. So Natsuo went to Ryuchi Cave to pick up his children. The two snake princesses gave birth to a total of seven children, of which two were highly talented, and gave great reward. Offspring plus one, the comprehensive potential evaluation is 195, you receive chakra plus 17, Keke Jenkai, Shizen Chakara. Offspring plus one, the comprehensive potential evaluation is 191, you receive chakra plus 17, Sage Art would release, true several thousand hands. As Natsuo received the rewards he thought, the Ryuchi cave is truly my sacred land. I directly obtained one of the most powerful wood release, along with a very useful KK Genkai. The KK Genkai, Shizen Chikara, is an instinctive ability that allows the user to absorb and make use of natural energy, without any training in Senjutsu. It is very similar to the KK Genkai that Jugo's clan had, the only difference is that it does not have side effects, such as mental instability. Combined with the KK Genkai, Renshu no Kenkei, Natsuo can now eventually allow his wives to also practice Senjutsu. Although the snake princesses are cage level, apparently surpassing the potential of 200 is very difficult, and requires a lot of luck or a very powerful bloodline, as in the case of Tsunade. Natsuo mused in his mind. At the moment I believe that my wives who do not possess a powerful bloodline or much power, can begin to become stronger with the new abilities I gained, before continuing to have children. I should also use this time for Yu Gao and my other wives who I taught some breathing to develop their own breathing style. Natsuo decided to increase the physical bond with his wives during this period, in order to strengthen them as quickly as possible, with the Renshin no Kenke. But I also can't stop working hard to revive the Ichiha clan. So Natsuo decided to take the time to visit Ryuchi Cave, and inject vitality into the snake princesses. After all, when he got the snake princesses pregnant back then his power wasn't as strong as it is now. Who knows, with all the rewards I got, there will probably be some kids with a potential of over 200. A few more days passed. Tsunade made efforts to mobilize troops and sent reinforcements. But the situation got even worse. The front against Kurigika was on the verge of collapse. Nara Shikaku and other high-ranking officials repeatedly asked Tsunade to send Natsuo to the battlefield. At first they tried to persuade Tsunade, but as the situation on the battlefield became more unfavorable, 
they began to demand that Tsunade issue the mobilization order. Tsunade was in a difficult position. It's not that she didn't want him to go, but he himself didn't want to go. She couldn't even tell them that the condition Natsu was set to be able to go to the battlefield was that she had a child for him. Unless she wants a chair and Kanoha to separate again. Damn it. It was Natsuo who caused this mess. Why do I have to be so troubled? Tsunade became more and more angry the more she thought about it, and she felt more and more at a disadvantage the more she stepped back. In her anger, she wanted to go into battle directly, but was forcefully restrained by everyone. Kanoha now faces pressure from multiple fronts, unlike other ninja villages that only suffer pressure from one battlefield. If the Hokage appears on a battlefield, that battlefield naturally becomes stable. But what about the other places? When they know that Kanoha's last defense, the Hokage is no longer in the village. The other ninja villages will definitely break loose and launch a full-scale attack. Tsunade had several exchanges with Natsuo, but each time they ended on bad terms. Even as they talked more and more, Natsuo's demands became even higher. From the initial, help me have a child, to later, help me have a few children, this made Tsunade extremely angry, and every time they communicated, it ended with her losing her temper and resorting to violence. But during this time, as Kanova retreated step by step, Wagaka finally couldn't take it anymore, and launched an attack on Kanoha. Tsunade finally had to compromise. Alright, you win. Tsunade was full of anger, her chest heaving, attracting Natsuo's gaze. If you can deal with Kurigika, I will accept your conditions. Are you satisfied now? Natsuo smiled faintly, his eyes gleaming with excitement. Deal. Hokage's orders have been issued. The news spread, and the high-level officials of Kanoha finally breathed a sigh of relief. It seems that this Hokage has a strong belief in rules. Even though Natsuo is such a powerful support, if it were the third Hokage, he would have found an excuse to let him go a long time ago. But the fifth Hokage clenched her teeth and didn't speak up for so long in the future. It's better not to violate the law in front of the fifth generation. Due to the previous problems, Natsuo was under Tsunade's surveillance, so he did not appear in public during these days. But whether it was killing Danzo or defeating Kurigika's Hazuki Menjetsu, his achievements had spread throughout Kanoha. After hearing this news, many of the Kinoichi in Kanoha completely exploded. Is Natsuo really that strong? If it weren't for despising his reputation as the shame of a jonin at that time, I would have accepted the mission to bear a son for the Ichiha clan. Many women regretted not having taken advantage of the opportunity. After Natsuo showed his strength during the Kanoha crush, he became someone who harbored ulterior motives and hid his true strength. But now after this incident, Natsuo has become the one who caught the evidence of Shimura Danzo's guilt from the mouths of these repentant women, someone who remained hidden and bore everything on his shoulders, before accumulating enough power to eliminate the corruption. Clearly, he is an ambitious and resilient outstanding young man. Natsuo's reputation instantly transformed from the shame of a jonin to the current prince of revenge. Natsuo's wives are very happy for he now that his reputation has improved. They even gathered to congratulate him. Of course, not all women are so happy. Samui's expression is somewhat stiff. Reikage Sama, we may a big mistake. Samui screams in her mind. How can we proceed with a plan to seize the Ichiha bloodline? Samui has been married to Natsuo for a short time, and as an elite jonin of Kumogaka, the seductive tactics of the Ichiha obviously have not overcome Samui's innermost thoughts. Even though her belly is growing, she still cares about her mission. But now how can you complete this mission? Her expression is extremely complicated, just clapping her hands with a forced smile, while her inner thoughts keep changing. Similarly, Sasuke also has a complex expression. Natsuo Ani. Sasuke remains silent for a long time before finally speaking. Do you already have the strength to defeat Itachi? Sasuke, the power of a ninja is not so easily divided. I have my trump cards, and Itachi has his own. Natsuo doesn't directly answer his question, but instead smiles and says. But our missions and objectives are clearly defined. You go complete your mission, I'll go complete mine. Forget already. I'm responsible for reviving the Ichiha clan. You're responsible for dealing with Itachi. As for how to solve it, that's your problem. Sasuke opened his mouth, but his body felt light. He had witnessed his parents covered in blood in front of Itachi, a scene that was too shocking and caused him, a mere student of the ninja school, to activate his Sharingan. Since then, the responsibility of seeking justice from Itachi weighed heavily on Sasuke's shoulders. For a certain period of time, that was Sasuke's sole purpose for living. If Natsuo took away this purpose from him, Sasuke couldn't imagine what he would become. However, Sasuke accurately grasped Natsuo's words of how to solve it. The previous method was to kill Itachi, seeking revenge for his parents and the Ichiha clan. But with the revelation of Danzo's involvement, there were many doubts surrounding the Ichiha's extermination and Sasuke had some suspicions as well. And now, Natsuo's words almost directly informed Sasuke. Yes, your doubts are correct, there is indeed something wrong with the Ichiha's extermination. Regardless of whether your solution is to kill Itachi or spare him, or any other form of punishment, it's your problem. Natsuo only told him, do not let others guide your destiny or impose ideals on you beyond your capacity. Analyze all the facts objectively before making a decision, and whether you forgive or kill Itachi. I will support you. Thank you, Natsuo Nai. 
Sasuke took a deep breath and lowered his head. Natsuo's words indicated that he had given up on seeking revenge from Itachi. Everything depended on his decision. But Sasuke understood that the Achiha clan massacre is more complicated than it seems, so he will take his time to investigate everything that happened that year. He will then confront Itachi and decide his fate at that moment. Sasuke's expression was incredibly complex. However, he took a deep breath, and his face once again became resolute. I will make a decision after knowing the whole truth of that year, Sasuke said seriously. On the other hand, Natsuo didn't think too much about it. He actually didn't feel much for the Achiha clan. When he had just transmigrated his parents had already died. He had no siblings or close relatives, he only had a house. Because he didn't possess much talent at the time, the Achiha clan apart from giving him some extra support due to his parents, didn't really give him anything else. Most members of the Achiha clan were relatively distant and proud, so Natsuo had limited contact with them, this caused the relationship to not be deep, and he had little communication with other members of the clan. So no matter what decision Sasuke ultimately made, Natsuo could accept it. After all, from a perspective of self-interest, if it weren't for Itachi wiping out the entire clan, making it convenient for him to use the Achiha clan's resources to establish a foundation for himself and gather wives, Natsuo probably wouldn't have this kind of strength now. Natsuo comforted Sasuke a few more times, then shifted his gaze to Ringo Amayori. Amayori's belly was getting bigger, and she was approaching her due date, so she obviously couldn't go out with him like before. And this time, he was prepared to end things quickly, and didn't plan to bring his wives to the battlefield. Oh! By the way, Amayuri. Natsuo thought for a moment and slapped his forehead. I have a surprise for you. As he spoke, he took out a storage scroll. With a round of applause, the Hiromekure appeared. It seems that the beating you gave Hazuki Menjetsu was harder than I thought. Amayuri's mouth twitched, and she sighed lightly. That guy is really unlucky. So Natsuo, you are now she hesitated and looked at Natsuo, making some guesses. But not daring to believe it was true. It's for you. Natsuo smiled. Do you like it? I remember that our agreement only included the lightning blades, and Mayuri swallowed a mouthful of saliva and pretended to be indifferent, saying, You had already given me the lightning blades in advance. Now that you give me another of the mystical swords of the seven swordsmen of the mist, aren't you afraid that I will run away and leave the Ichiha clan? Except for you. No one here can stop me. Then I must have misjudged you. Natsuo blinked his eyes. Upon hearing this, Amayuri felt somewhat moved. She seemed to not want others to see her current expression, lowered her head slightly and said, Is that so? Anyway, the ninja code is all about deception. Maybe I have deceived you. It's not too late to regret it now. Oh, is that so? I regret it then. Amayuri suddenly raised her head, her eyes wide open. But Natsuo laughed heartily and pushed the mystical sword towards her, saying, I was just joking with you. But after accepting my gift, shouldn't you show some gratitude? To be honest, doing the same thing over and over again can get boring. How about after you recover from giving birth? You can show me your rebellious personality like the first time we met. Upon hearing this, Amayuri's face turned red, filled with embarrassment. Ignoring her big belly, she grabbed the sword and swung it towards Natsuo. Hey, don't be impulsive. Be careful with the child. Be careful with the child. Interior of the Ichiha Mansion. Ichiha Rayan, Natsuo's first son with Yukino, frowned as he placed his small fingers on the book he was reading. The words on the paper mixing with his thoughts. His eyes, flashing with a mix of confusion and concern, rested on the open page. Rayan whispered to himself, What is happening to me? Suddenly, a strange sensation came over him. His vision sharpened as if a veil had been lifted from his eyes. He could see tiny details in his room, things that would have gone unnoticed before. The sounds became clearer, every step, every whisper, echoing with almost unearthly clarity. He was startled when he felt the presence of the servants working in the gardens, a considerable distance from his room. Uneasy, he stood up, feeling a widening of his perception, as if the world around him was expanding. Then, in his mind, memories of his recent changes flooded his thoughts. The ease with which he mastered the ninja arts, the inexplicable changes in his physical ability, and the release of that strange when his brother had been heard. Intrigued and frightened by these changes, he decided to look for his mother, Yukino. Ichiha Reian left the book on his desk, and hurriedly left his room. His footsteps echoed in the hallway as he hurried towards his mother's room. Reian knocked on the door. Mother, can I talk to you? The door opens, revealing Yukino chatting with a servant, showing her a series of documents. Seeing him enter, she looked up with a warm smile. But seeing Rayan's worried expression, she motions for the servant to leave them alone. After the servant leaves the room, she immediately takes Rayan into his arms. Yukino says with concern, Rayan, what's wrong? Why are you so worried? Rayan, breathing quickly, said to Yukino, Mother, something strange is happening to me. My vision, my perception, it's like it's changing. And there are other things too, strange changes that have been happening lately. After Rayan told Yukino about all the changes he's been experiencing lately, she said with concern in her eyes, Rayan, this is unusual. But don't worry, I'll be here for you. It may be something to do with your innate abilities as an Ichiha. We'd better tell your father. Wait here, Yukino said in a soothing voice. 
She broke away from the hug and walked with quick steps towards the room where Natsuo was. She knocked on the door and entered, finding Natsuo who was accompanying Emayori after she had managed to calm down from her outburst. Sorry to interrupt, Natsuo. Yukino said with seriousness in her tone of voice. It's about Rayan. We need to talk. Natsuo nodded, noticing the seriousness in Yukino's expression and briefly said goodbye to Emayori. He stood up and followed Yukino back to her room, where Rayan was waiting anxiously. After entering the room, Natsuo felt the same connection that he felt with Hikari. He felt the same bond forming with Rayan. He also noticed that the bond created a kind of union, it could be described as a father-son union of absolute trust. Oblivious to the changes occurring, Yukino said to Rayan, Rayan talk to your father, tell him everything that is happening. Rayan was distracted while he noticed the bond that was formed with his father. He realized that he felt a kind of absolute trust in his father, which helped him calm down. After hearing his mother's reminder, he told Natsuo all the changes he had recently experienced. Natsuo realized that the bond he shares with his children due to his system, is more complicated than he initially thought. Perhaps because Hikari's talent is the greatest among all of her children, and because she is still a baby, she only gave the impression to Natsuo that a connection was formed between them. And he thought that that connection would only allow his Renshi no Kankei to passively strengthen her permanently, without needing physical contact with him. But the changes in Rayan have shown that these changes may be greater in some of his children. After realizing this, Natsuo said to Rayan, Son, you must have noticed the connection that has formed between us. This is part of my special ability. This ability makes my children form a connection with me, and allows them to grow stronger as time goes by. And in some cases like yours, special abilities manifest. But don't worry, it's a good thing for you. Natsuo said as he stroked Rayan's head. I understand father. Rayan said as he felt a strange energy in his body. Rayan, as you may have realized, the changes that some of my children will experience are not under my control. So I wanted to give you the task of helping me keep an eye on your siblings and help them calm down while they experience these changes. Natsuo said as he squatted down to look into Rayan's eyes. Can you take care of it while I'm not home? Yes, father. I will live up to your expectations. Rayan responded, returning to his usual seriousness. Due to Rayan's situation, Natsuo decided to stay at home one more day to help him adapt to his improved abilities, and in the process, see if any of his other children had begun to awaken special abilities. Seeing that none of his other children showed anything strange or formed a bond with him, he decided to head to the battlefield against Kurigika. The situation on the front line against Kurigika was quite miserable. Although Kurigika had fewer people, it was second only to Sunagika in terms of poverty. But it has many high-level ninjas. Not only do they have two cage-level ninjas, but even ordinary ninjas also have the qualifications that place them among the best in the five great shinobi villages. After all, being in a country with frequent internal conflicts, they often engage in life or death battles. Those who are not strong enough or cautious enough have long been taken out by others. Even after Tarumi Mei's efforts, the Kurigika ninjas still have a certain level of distrust among their teammates. But they are still much stronger than the Kanoha ninjas, who are at an absolute disadvantage in terms of quantity and quality of high-level ninjas. Large tracts of land have been occupied, a large number of military installations have been captured, and a large number of Kanoha ninja have been killed. Even with Temporal Commander Nara's blood, sweat, and tears, he is unable to stop Kurigika's progress. And now Natsuo has finally arrived. You finally came. The Nara clan member grabbed Natsuo's arm, his eyes filled with anger. You said you would come back soon. But is this your idea of soon? Even with the cautious nature of the Nara clansmen, he was still able to clearly express those words, which showed how great his resentment was. Natsuo shrugged. First, you should ask Tsunade about this matter, and second, you should ask yourself. I clearly said that you could give up the territory to buy time while you waited for me to return. Why did you have to fight the enemy to the death? In reality, although Kurigika has the advantage, Kinoha should not have suffered such heavy losses. If Natsuo's plan had been followed, ceding territory and allowing Kurigika to act freely, the loss of territory might have been significant, but the casualties would definitely not be as severe as they are now. However, how could the Nara clan member do such a thing? This is the territory of the Land of Fire. The Nara clan member shouted loudly. How could we give up the territory? Natsuo smiled slightly, then stopped worrying about that matter and asked directly. How is the current situation on the battlefield? The Nara clansman took a deep breath. Kurigika has captured our supply warehouse. Hazuki Manjetsu led a team to attack our transportation convoy, and we are facing a shortage of supplies. On the front lines, Turumi Mei led a major offensive. We keep retreating, and our current camp was just repaired yesterday, so it has very little defensive capability. We have suffered heavy losses these days, and the village's support has reached its limit. There is no more support available. Meanwhile, the Kiri Ninjas have several high-level ninjas. Not only that, the Kiri Ninjas, who used to have internal unity problems, now that they have gained a large amount of war spoils due to their multiple victories, their morale has risen, and they are more united than ever, it's all bad news. Not a single piece of good news. The Nara clan member's voice sounded tiffle as he spoke. At this moment the alarm in Kanoha suddenly sounded. The enemy ninjas were attacking again. How? 
How, how, how do we fight this? The Nara clansmen completely collapsed. The Kanoha Shinobi were already at their limit while Kurigika's attacks were relentless. How do we fight this? However, Natsuo looked in the direction of the Kiri ninjas approaching in the distance, then smiled slightly. He stood up and walked towards them with long strides. Then he said, It doesn't matter, I will take action. Natsuo walked out of the command room. The Kanoha Shinobi outside were in a panic. They all had terrified expressions. It's clear that they have been losing miserably during this period of time. In the distance you could see the faces of the Kiri Shinobi full of madness. The morale of Kanoha had already collapsed to the extreme, even though many capable ninja had set traps and personally conducted reconnaissance on the outskirts issuing early warnings. But most of the ninja had already collapsed. Even though the mental resilience of ninja is stronger than that of ordinary people, after several defeats, it was enough to make them collapse. At this time, the Kiri Shinobi had also rushed over. Kill. Slaughter the bastards of Kanoha. Let the weak and incompetent Kanoha see what a real ninja is. The Kiri ninjas burst into wild laughter and rushed forward. Next second, a colossal creature suddenly rose from the edge of the Kanoha camp. It was dozens of meters tall. Its entire body presented a black-purple color. Like a majestic warrior in armor, imposing and emitting a sinister aura. Susanu. Natsuo stood calmly within the crystal on Susanu's forehead, his expression indifferent. The fierce wind howled causing Natsuo's clothes to flutter, and his deep black hair danced incessantly. Hum, what is that? The Kiri ninjas were stunned. Next second suddenly, the Susanu giant raised his arm, holding a sword with one hand, and then brandished it. The blade caused a violent sword aura that cut everything in its path mercilessly. With formidable strength, it fiercely struck the ground. Boom. A ferocious shockwave spread from the point where the sword landed. At the same time, a huge crack appeared on the ground, expanding in the direction of the Kiri Shinobi. Countless Kiri ninjas didn't even have time to cry out and were instantly swallowed by the sword energy. The crack grew larger and larger, as if it wanted to tear the earth apart. Just with this one sword, it directly swept away a quarter of the attacking Kiri ninjas. The endless wave of energy caused by the sword swing also engulfed everything around. Everything, absolutely everything, was affected by the wave of energy generated by the sword swing, and blown far away. For a moment the chaotic battlefield instantly fell silent. Whether it was the shocked faces of the Kanoha side or the previously aggressive Kiri ninjas, they stood still in astonishment, motionless, and looked at everything before them with unimaginable eyes. At the same time the Nara clan member finally ran out of the command post. He looked at everything before him in amazement, staring at the deep and endless crack. Suddenly, he remembered the words Natsuo said before. It doesn't matter. I will take action, yes. No matter how dangerous the situation is, as long as he takes action, everything, absolutely everything, will change completely. No wonder he asked me to buy time by ceding territory, waiting for his return. The Nara clansman smiled bitterly, with a guilty expression on his face. I thought I had put in so much effort and made a great contribution. Who would have known that it would only cause the village to shed more blood? He looked ashamed and regretful. As temporary commander, the Nara clan member has exhausted all strategies, and worked hard to confront the enemy using Kanoha's weak forces, at the cost of stopping the invasion of Kurigika, and limiting their aggression to one area. He has always believed that he has done well, thinking that even if it were the clan leader Nara Shikaku, it would be impossible to achieve the same military achievements as him. He managed to protect a significant amount of the Land of Fire's territory from Karigaka's attacks. But now, upon closer inspection the blood shed to protect this territory was completely in vain. It would have been enough to just wait for Natsuo to return, this power. What kind of power is this? Terumi Mei, at the rear of Karigaka army, suddenly exclaimed, her face filled with disbelief. Wait is that person Natsuo? Terumi Mei looked up, with her strong ninja vision even from hundreds of meters away, she could still clearly see the young man inside Suzunu. Is he the one who defeated Menjetsu, scaring him so much that he didn't even dare to take back his ninja sword, and just ran away? Is he the one who killed Danzo, the darkness of the shinobi, who possesses the same eyes as Ichiha Madara? Terumi Mei looked at the towering Susanu, feeling the extremely cold chakra, and shivered. Not only Terumi Mei, but also the other Kiri ninjas were all dumbfounded. With one strike, a quarter of the army was destroyed. This is the power of one person against an entire nation. No wonder Ichiha Madara rampaged through the ninja world even if he was alone. The major nations still didn't dare to provoke him. In other words, the Kiri ninjas are enough for him to swing his sword four times. How the hell can you fight that? Suddenly, in front of everyone's eyes, Susanu moved. He took large steps forward, the sword in his hand retracted, gathering momentum to strike. He's still attacking the Kiri ninjas panicked instantly. Countless Kiri ninjas didn't hesitate and turned their heads to run. Even some high-ranking officials couldn't help but shout. Spread out. Spread out quickly. As they ran far away, their faces filled with fear. But while others could escape, there was one person who couldn't. Stop. Terumi Mei shouted. Don't even think about hurting the Karigaka ninjas. She took a deep breath and then forcefully spat out a large amount of corrosive slime. 
Lava release. Melting apparition technique. A large amount of acid surged out, thick and viscous, like melted lava, covering the sky and rushing forward. The Kiri ninjas were shocked to see this. It's Mizukich-sama. Our uh, Mizukich-sama is still here. As long as we have Mizukich-sama, we can definitely let Suo remain calm. Suo Snu completely ignored the surging acid and swung his arm, directly slashing through. Boom. With one swing of his sword, a huge shockwave was created. In an instant sand and rocks flew, as if a hurricane was approaching. Relying on this gust of wind, the corrosive liquid was easily swept away. At the same time, sword energy swept across the entire field. Turumi Mei hastily jumped up, dodging it. But just because she, with her cage level strength, could dodge it, doesn't mean others could. The Karigika ninjas were instantly thrown into chaos, blood flowing. Curse. Turumi Mei gritted her teeth slightly, her gaze drifting to the feet of Natsuo Susanu. The range of the previous lava release was large, and it was a preemptive strike. Not all of the acid from the lava release was blown away by the shockwave created by Susanu. Some of it still splattered onto Susanu's body. But sizzle, sizzle, sizzle. The acid made a sizzling sound. Lava release is extremely aggressive. Even Susanu couldn't completely withstand it. However, Turumi Mei's expression turned grim. So resilient. Lava release can indeed corrode Susanu but it's too slow. Turumi Mei is very knowledgeable about lava release, and based on her observation of the corrosive efficiency of lava release, even if she were to throw Susanu into the pool of lava release, it would not be dissolved in a short period of time. I like men who are not easily dissolved. Unfortunately, as the Mizukage, I must stop you here. Turumi Mei takes a deep breath. Boil release. Skilled mist technique. A large amount of acidic mist surges out. However, Natsuo's response is the same as before, just raising and swinging his sword. The reason why Susanu is considered one of the strongest techniques is because of its incomparable offensive and defensive power, being one of the strongest and most resistant defenses that exist in the Naruto series. With this offensive and defensive power, all other attacks become extravagant tricks. Turumi Mei's Keke Genkai is very strong. In the Naruto series, her boil release dissolved Sasuke Susanu, and her lava release was also effective against Ichihamadara Susanu. But the Susanu at that time, compared to Natsuo's full Susanu's offensive and defensive capabilities, have a big difference. Turumi Mei, who is also a seasoned cage level expert, quickly understood the advantages of Susanu. But all she could do was wave her hand. All Kiri ninjas, listen up. Use the hiding in mist technique and quickly retreat. She then spews another puff of corrosive vapor, spraying it towards Susanu's face. The Kiri ninjas quickly join forces and start forming seals. The surrounding mist becomes even denser, but Natsuo doesn't pay it any mind. He doesn't even deliberately swing his weapon to disperse the mist. Only the strong wind caused by their large steps forward causes the concentration of the fog used by several ninjas to hide to decrease. Don't lay your hand on my subordinates. Turumi Mei shouted loudly, appearing in front of Susanu without anyone noticing when. Her feet moved quickly, and she suddenly leaped. She jumped directly onto the forward part of Susanu where Natsuo was located. Oh, upon closer inspection, you are a truly handsome man. No wonder you have captured the hearts of Karigika's spies. Turumi Mei's mouth curved into a smile with a hint of charm. Young man, why be so impulsive? Instead, let me give you a melting kiss and experience the joy of a long night. Wouldn't that be nice? As she spoke, three blobs of dissolving liquid splashed onto Susanu's head, making a loud noise. Turumi Mei was just speaking in line with her own personality. Although she has never had a boyfriend, she really enjoyed teasing the younger boys. However, what she didn't expect was that Natsuo actually responded. Sure. Huh. Turumi Mei was taken aback. The next second, Susanu violently shook its head, throwing off the acid. And with large strides, it charged towards Turumi Mei. Turumi Mei's expression changed slightly as she assumed a defensive posture. But contrary to her expectations, it seemed that Susanu had lost its defensive function, and it actually absorbed her directly. Natsuo reached out his hand and embraced the beauty in front of him. A long night? Who needs sleep? Miss Mizukage, did I understand correctly? Natsuo smiled. What a soft body Turumi Mei was different from other women. Although she had never been with a man, her every movement exuded a strong sense of seduction, making people want to hug her. Natsuo was no exception, so he exerted a little more force with his arm, allowing that softness to press even closer to his chest. Different from many women, Turumi Mei's personality seemed very open, and she was full of seductive charm. With a very seductive appearance, she seemed like the apple of the Garden of Eden, moving the hearts of men to fall into sin. But unlike her seemingly frivolous language and extremely seductive appearance, Turumi Mei was an inexperienced woman. Even in the Boruto series, she will still be single many years later. So when she was embraced by Natsuo, she was completely stunned. His arms surrounded her body, his face right in front of her, and the scent of a man faintly emanating from him. She could even hear Natsuo breathing. Even though Turumi Mei was a seasoned Kyunoichi, she suddenly felt inexplicably flustered. But after all, she was a strong and ruthless Kyunoichi, and her nervous feeling only lasted for a moment before she quickly regained her composure. She 
stared at Natsuo with a teasing look. The night is long, and you can't sleep. So, how about I come with you? He will give you a kiss that will make you melt as she spoke, she quickly formed hand seals, and her chakra also showed signs of movement. Sure. Natsuo smiled lightly. However, he directly lowered his head and kissed her. Turumi Mei. Her eyes showed a bit of panic for a moment, but she didn't hold back in her actions. Her hands reached out decisively and hugged Natsuo's body, as if they hadn't seen each other in a long time, pressing her body tightly against his. The two hugged each other, their mouths connected as if there were no spaces between their bodies. At first glance, they looked like a passionate couple in love, but Tsurumi Mei's expression carried a hint of mockery. She had heard before that Echeha Natsuo was a pervert, who indulged in the pleasures of women, but she never expected it to reach such a brazen level. Did he really think my kiss was so easy to handle? Lava release. Melting apparition technique. Tsurumi Mei made a move to kill, intending to burn the man in front of her to ashes. However, a hint of amusement flashed in Natsuo's eyes their mouths intertwined as if they were in a passionate relationship. Turumi Mei exerted all her strength, but one second passed, three seconds passed, ten seconds passed. Turumi Mei suddenly panicked. She forcefully shook her head, her flowing hair fluttering, and exclaimed in surprise, Why weren't you hurt? I used lava release. Shouldn't you have been burned to death by my lava release? Why do you continue as if nothing happened? Hurt. That I should be hurt. Natsuo smiled and said, Wasn't it Miss Mizukich who willingly came to me? Don't tell me you're not in the mood now. Come on, let's continue. How could Turumi Mei continue? She struggled to twist her body, her softness colliding uncontrollably in Natsuo's embrace. Natsuo laughed heartily and withdrew his hand. At the same time as Turumi Mei retreated, her pupils contracted. She saw traces of her own lava release melting liquid at the corner of Natsuo's mouth. However, it seemed that this melting liquid had no effect. Natsuo calmly reached out his hand and wiped it off. Lava release has no effect on him. Turumi Mei was surprised when she noticed it. How is that possible? Turumi Mei widened her eyes. How could my lover release, which can corrode anything, have no effect on you? Natsuo smiled slightly as he thought. Why no effect? Because I also have lava release. The melting liquid of lava release is unbeatable against almost all enemies. But for those who possess lava release, it can be easily resolved. This is evidenced by the fact that after Turumi Mei used the lava release, the acidic mud at the corner of her mouth had no effect on her. Or rather, as a nature transformation Keke Jankai, lava release can be decomposed and transformed into earth and fire or attribute chakra in the hands of lava release bloodline ninjas. Natsuo has also gained the reward of lava release, so he naturally understands the essence of this ninjutsu. It is easy to decompose it back into chakra. Of course, Natsuo not only has the lava release, but also the boil release. So technically, Turumi Mei's strongest attacks will be rendered useless if she uses them against him. Turumi Mei was a little stunned, but as a cage-level Kinochi with a lot of experience in using the lava release, she quickly figured out how Natsuo broke her lava release. Do you also have the lava release? Turumi Mei looked shocked, but then she recovered quickly and realized that the person in front of her was an enemy of Kurigika, and it was no time to try to find out why he also had the lava release. Boil release. Skilled mist technique. She opened her mouth and exhaled a dense acidic mist. In fact, the destructive power of the skilled mist technique is no weaker than the melting apparition technique, and within Susanu, the skilled mist technique can quickly increase the concentration of the acidic mist, making it even more powerful. Sizzle. 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 Susanu's body made a sizzling sound, although due to its resistance, it had not corroded much but it was clearly starting to be damaged. However, Natsuo just laughed. Miss Mizukich, didn't you come to me willingly? Why give up after just a kiss? At the same time, he took a deep breath and sucked in the dense acid mist. Then, with a smile on his lips, he said meaningfully, if you don't accompany me, I will have to continue fighting on the battlefield. Turumi Mei widened her eyes, filled with disbelief. This guy can actually use boil release. How is it possible? How can he have both lava release and boil release? Turumi Mei was taken aback. But then she saw Susanu suddenly move. She watched as the Susanu raised the giant sword and swung it with ease. Then a huge sword aura swept across everything. The fleeing Kiri ninjas were hit head on, and countless ninjas were severely injured or killed. Turumi Mei finally realized that they were still on the battlefield. And the most destructive force was the Susanu she was standing on. I can't let him continue to control the Susanu. The village will suffer too much damage. Turumi Mei didn't hesitate and took action directly. Boil release and lava release didn't work but she was still a battle-hardened cage-level Kinoichi. Her body approached instantly, she clenched her fist tightly and punched directly. Natsuo's Manjakyo Sharingan began to spin, and he calmly reached out and caught it, but Tsurumi Mei didn't hesitate and struck with a knee. Natsuo blocked again. The two of them fought inside the Susanu, exchanging punches and kicks. However, after only 10 rounds, Tsurumi Mei helplessly realized that her Tajutsu was no match for the person in front of her. Tsurumi Mei is fundamentally a Kinoichi who relied on ninjutsu to determine victory or defeat. Her Tajutsu was strong, 
but only compared to that of ordinary ninjas. Compared to Natsuo with his Manjakyo Sharingan activated, she was no match at all. It seems that this guy is playing around, otherwise I would have been hit several times already Turumi Mei felt heavy in her heart. But this was not a good thing. Turumi Mei herself didn't receive any attacks, but the Susanu was not idle. With a few random sword strikes, most of the attacks landed on the empty ground due to the lack of focus on Susanu. But only a small part of the attacks hit causing a lot of damage to Kurigaka. The Kiri ninjas wailed in agony, falling to the ground. Turumi Mei gritted her teeth and directly attacked Natsuo with water release. Both of them were inside the narrow body of Susanu, with limited space. Water release, unlike boil release or lava release, couldn't make Turumi Mei immune to damage. She launched the attack with the mindset of causing mutual destruction. However, a frustrating scene unfolded before her. A wall seemed to suddenly appear between her and Natsuo. The powerful water release was originally aimed at Natsuo, but it was blocked by the wall causing Turumi Mei to be engulfed by her own water release. Natsuo smiled faintly. The Susanu is an ability granted by the Manjekyo Sharingan, and as such is formed through the materialization of the user's chakra, so in its full form, the internal space can be freely controlled by the user. Otherwise, the Susanu wouldn't be able to accommodate others inside. Natsuo directly divided the space where they were in two, so Terumi Mei's water release could only be endured by herself, although the defense inside is much lower than the armor on the outside. It's not something that Terumi Mei's water release can easily destroy. But on the other hand, it's getting a little difficult to defend against Terumi Mei's water release Natsuo thought. Besides, her mentality has not collapsed yet, so it is best to continue stimulating her. So a sinister and immense power emanated from Natsuo's eyes. The next second Susanu changed. The originally imposing figure grew even larger. And this massive chakra is becoming more stable, as if it has formed a true giant warrior. Whether it's the fluctuating chakra on the sword or elsewhere, it has completely solidified, with no trace of movement. Suddenly, wings sprout from its back, resembling a flying humanoid. Susanu perfect form. Swoosh. Susanu casually swings its sword. The enormous sword energy sweeps past, forcefully cutting off a nearby mountain peak. What is this thing? When the Kiri Shinobi see this, their faces are filled with shock, as if they have witnessed a deity. Their limbs go weak, collapsing to the ground. Their eyes lifeless, as if they have given up hope of survival. This is Ichiha Madara's power. The power he used to contend with the first generation Hokage. When the Kanoha Shinobi see this scene, they too are dumbfounded, filled with shock. Oh no. If Natsuo launches an attack against the Kiri ninjas again, Terumi Mei panics. At that critical moment, Natsuo makes eye contact with Terumi Mei. Manjekyo Sharingan technique. Yumenso. At that precise moment, Terumi Mei, without realizing it, begins to feel a slight disturbance in her perception. She is immersed in a brief trance where she is involved in a sequence of quick and fleeting dreams, barely perceptible. In these dreams, she is shown images that evoke a deep sense of responsibility towards protecting her fellow Karigika, who are in grave danger from the power of the Susanu. Within these dreams, Natsuo subtly introduces the idea that the only way to protect her companions and ensure their survival is to seduce Natsuo, suggesting that this action will somehow destabilize him and change the course of the battle. The sense of duty, mixed with the urgency of the situation, deepens into her subconscious as a viable and morally acceptable option. After the trance ends, Terumi Mei feels that as the Mizukage, she must stop the Susanu's actions. In her desperate state, she instinctively rushes towards Natsuhiko and unconsciously uses her most powerful and convenient ninjutsu. Lava release. Melting apparition technique. However, before the acid could be sprayed, Natsuo, aware of the influence planted in her subconscious, approaches her instantly, staying right in front of her. He embraced Harumi Mei, just like before, and used the same method of mouth-to-mouth -mouth contact to suppress her ninjutsu. At first, Terumi Mei struggled hard, but soon seemed to realize that the Susanu suddenly stopped moving. Due to the seed of responsibility and urgency implanted in her mind during the trance, Terumi Mei finds herself torn between her logic and her sense of duty towards her companions. But then she noticed that the Susanu began to move with very slow steps, advancing towards the direction of the Karigaka ninjas. But other than that, there were no other movements. Then an idea began to arise in Terumi Mei's mind. Could it be because Natsuo needs to break my lava release, so he restricts Susanu's movements? As this idea began to take root in Mei's mind she began to get excited. To break down my lava release, he requires more energy and concentration, which does not allow him to control his own ninjutsu well. Although she didn't understand Susanu, the more powerful the ninjutsu, the more focused attention it requires to maintain. Terumi Mei's face was filled with excitement. As long as I can hold Natsuo like this, I can buy enough time for the Kiri ninjas to retreat. Thinking this, she held Natsuo's body tightly, not allowing him to separate from her. And she continuously unleashed lava release attacks without letting up. 
not giving Natsuo a chance to escape. Come on, Terumi Mei. As long as you hold on, the ninjas of our village will be able to just as Terumi Mei was encouraging herself. Suddenly she felt Matsuo's hand, which was wrapped around her waist, move downwards, and then he started to touch and knead. Terumi Mei. She quickly widened her eyes and stared at Natsuo intently. He is intentionally enjoying this. As for why Susanu stopped moving, it's probably this guy. Is he intimidate me? Terumi Mei is also a cage level expert, full of pride in her heart. After realizing this, in a fit of anger, she tries to break free from Natsuo's embrace once again. However, just as she was about to act, she suddenly noticed Susanu lifting its sword again. Terumi Mei. Her body trembles, and she instinctively stops her movement. And Susanu also cooperatively stops its movement. This guy, Terumi Mei widens her eyes. She has been participating in battles since the age of nine, and even now, a term experienced in a hundred battles is not enough to describe her. However, she has never seen a battle like this before. The enemy delays the attack on our forces because of my beauty. What the hell is going on? No, no, that's not right. This guy is trying to force me to let him intimidate me in this way. Terumi Mei is angry but she doesn't dare to break free. Although the situation is completely out of the ordinary and morally complicated, the sense of responsibility deeply rooted in her subconscious makes her consider the idea of continuing as an option to save her fellow villagers. She can only punch and kick Natsuo while being held. However, at that close distance, Terumi Mei cannot exert much force. How can she put up any resistance? Upon discovering this, Natsuo finds it exhilarating and enjoys the moment even more. The esteemed Mizukich is actually doing these little actions, which seems quite cute at first glance. He even had time to intensify the color of the Susanu chakra, especially the area around him, dyeing it with a deep chakra to pure black, blocking everyone's vision. The purpose is obvious. To facilitate his further actions, Terumi Mei also understood his intentions, so she was extremely angry, and was about to make a big move. However, the movement of Susanu scared her and made her stop immediately. If Terumi Mei's resistance moves are small, Natsuo will simply ignore them. But if she tries to make a big move, then the Susanu will prepare to attack. Terumi Mei was filled with anger and humiliation, and began to doubt whether she should continue. As the fifth Mizukage, when has she suffered such injustice? But looking at the mountain that was completely cut off by the Susanu not far away, and the Kiri ninjas who were fleeing in panic and fear, the strong responsibility implanted in his subconscious along with the idea that this situation was acceptable began to emerge again. So she just gritted her teeth and decided to endure it for now. She could only endure it. Ninjas have a mentality in which they believe they must endure and endure everything, for their teammates, for the village Terumi Mei gritted her teeth. But she soon realized that things were not as simple as they seemed, because Natsuo's actions were becoming more and more excessive. At first, he only held her slim waist, then his palm moved downward, and now his hands were gradually moving inside her clothes. What do you want to do? Terumi Mei said angrily, stopping the lava release. Can you defeat me? Natsuo blinked. Why are you answering me using a question? Terumi Mei asked. Because I think that question explains the situation better. Terumi Mei. She had a face full of anger and shame. If it weren't for the large number of Kiri ninjas behind her, she would have fought to the death with the man in front of her. But unfortunately, there were a large number of Kirigika ninjas behind her. Her own death was insignificant compared to the future of Kirigika. She could only endure it. Although Natsuo's actions became more and more excessive, she could only endure this humiliation. And what made her even more uncomfortable was that the Kiri ninjas might have had a mental breakdown over Natsuo's destructive behavior. Although many ninjas were still desperately trying to escape, there were still many ninjas who had lost hope and had a self-deprecating expression on their faces. Escape? Can we really escape? Either way, death was inevitable. Whether we died early or late, it was still death. Since that is the case, we should just lie on the ground and wait for death. Terumi Mei was so angry that she wanted to expel these ninjas from Kurigika. Why don't you run away quickly? Terumi Mei inwardly shouted. I'm sacrificing myself to restrain Natsuo. Why aren't you running away? Are you wasting my hard-earned time for you? But unfortunately, due to her excessive sense of responsibility, she couldn't just abandon those Kiri ninjas. There were too many Kiri ninjas who had given up hope and were lying down, already exceeding half of Kurigika's forces. If she gave up on them, the losses for Kurigika would be too great. However, even though Natsuo was casually controlling Susanu and only moving at a slow pace, he would eventually reach them. Even if he didn't use his sword, just by stepping on them, he could easily crush this group of Kiri ninjas. If things continued like this, Kurigika would be finished. Terumi Mei gritted her teeth as she was facing another problem. Her chakra was running low. The lava release that they had been using also required chakra consumption. However, Terumi Mei's chakra, although meeting the standards of a cage level, is definitely the lowest among the five great shinobi villages. What does she have to compare with Natsuo? Who possesses the sage body? Even if Natsuo maintains Susanu, it is much easier for him compared to her. Terumi Mei gritted her teeth, and after the influence of her subconscious affected her again, she finally made a decision. Natsuo, don't you want to have some fun? Terumi Mei showed a hint of charm. Then let me escort you properly. Forget about those boring battles. Let's have some fun and enjoy ourselves. 
Finishing speaking, she grabbed Natsuo's hand and willingly pulled him towards her. Her eyes still showed a bit of doubt and also some embarrassment, and she occasionally gritted her teeth, showing a bit of resentment. But her words were full of temptation, and her expression was very charming. For the village. For the Kiri ninjas. She has sacrificed too much. Even Natsuo was somewhat surprised as he glanced at Tarumi Mei. He thought that the manipulation of her subconscious would take time to take effect, and that it would take time for her to reach the current commitment. But he didn't expect it to happen so soon however of course. Natsuo smiled slightly. After a while. Whether it was the Kiri ninjas lying down or the Kanoa ninjas who were still shocked, they suddenly noticed a problem. The Susanoo had stopped completely. It stopped chasing the Kiri ninjas, as if it had stopped working directly. After a while. Noticing that the Susanu still did not move, the Kiri ninjas who had lost all hope immediately stood up and tried to look into the distance at the glass of the Susanu where Natsuo was. But even with a ninja's vision, they could only see a black curtain blocking their vision. Seeing that time continues to pass and the Susanu did not move, the Kiri ninjas suddenly felt a surge of vitality course through their bodies. It's the Mizukage. Mizukage Sama must have restrained it Chihan Natsuo. The Kiri ninjas became excited as they regained hope for survival. Since there was hope, why lie down and do nothing? One by one, they quickly got up, carried the wounded, destroyed the remaining supplies, and quickly evacuated. Of course, there were also ninjas who were even more excited. They shouted slogans like Mizukage Sama, we will help her, and they ran towards the Susanu. They began to perform the drummer of throwing kunai at the Susanu. For a while, there was a constant clanging sound coming from the Susanu. In contrast, the hearts of the Kanoha ninjas sank. It's not right. The Susanu has been standing still for too long. Something unexpected must have happened. The Nara clan members' expression changed slightly. The historical records of the Nara clan were very clear, and he was very sure that Natsuo was now using a Chihamadara Susanu. This was indeed a very powerful ninjutsu. But remember, how old is Natsuo? He's only in his 20s. Can this person, even if he has the talent of a Chihamadara, really control a Chiha's strongest ninjutsu completely? Could it be that Susanu is not moving because Natsuo has a problem controlling the ninjutsu? For example, the fact that the Mizukage entered the Susanu is strange behavior. How can someone allow the enemy to reach the weakest position of his own ninjutsu? Quick! Let's go support Natsuo, the Nara clan member shouted. The other Kanoha ninjas responded one after another and rushed out. As soon as they appeared, they engaged in combat with the remaining Kiri ninjas. Both sides understand very well that the battle between Natsuo and Turumi Mei is at a critical moment. Whoever can give them more interference will determine the future of the battle in favor of that side. One is protecting Susanu, the other is cheering for Turumi Mei. They are fighting fiercely. Turumi Mei who is being harassed, is so angry that she wants to personally go down and take down the Kiri ninjas one by one. I have worked hard and endured humiliation, this is how you waste my efforts. Turumi Mei's eyes are red with anger. However, although both sides are fighting fiercely, the number of people is not large. Most of the Kiri ninjas have already begun to retreat, but there are still some who have still stayed behind. They have left a few people who intend to help Turumi Mei but their number is much smaller than that of the Kanoha ninjas. On the other hand, the situation is even worse for the Kanoha side. They were already at an absolute disadvantage during the previous confrontations, so almost all of the ninjas were injured. Now, those participating in the battle are mostly injured ninjas who have not yet lost their mobility. One side has fewer numbers, the other side is injured. Even though both sides are fighting with all their might, it hasn't had much impact. Even the number of deaths is not high. After gaining the upper hand, most of the Kiri ninjas slash Kanoha ninjas will not take the opportunity to kill their enemies but instead give Susanu a heavy blow slash apply, a layer of earth release protection to Susanu. And once someone is seriously injured, as long as they retreat decisively, neither side will pursue them. After all, the key point that both sides are fighting for is the battle between the 5th Mizukage Turumi Mei and at Chiha Natsuo, a one-of-a-kind battle began to unfold in the ninja world. The Kanoha and Kiri ninjas have been fighting for about 10 minutes, and both sides are exhausted. Turumi Mei finally breaks free from Susanu. Let's go. She shouts loudly, her face still flushed. Most of the Kiri ninjas have already evacuated, and the remaining few brainless guys are not enough for her to continue sacrificing herself. Yes, Mizukich sama Many Kiri ninjas responded and quickly retreated. Their number is already small, and the weak ninjas have long since been injured and retreated from the battlefield. Now those qualified to continue fighting Kanoha are the remaining elites of Kirigika. With their great strength, the speed at which they retreated is naturally very fast, and Kanoha is not interested in chasing them at all. Natsuo also released the Susanu, and landed next to the Kanoha ninjas. Similar to Kurigika only elites remain here. Led by the Naira clan member, they are covered in blood. But there are no serious injuries. Don't chase them. Natsuo smiled slightly. Your injuries are not light. Go back to the camp and rest. Yes. Natsuo-sama. Including the Naira clan member everyone shouted loudly. This time, it is a great victory for Kanoha. They defeated Kurigika, and also eliminated a large number of Kiri ninjas, reducing Kurigika's fighting power. Although Natsuo-sama was unable to fully demonstrate his abilities due to the outbreak of the 5th Mizukage Turumi Mei, it is still a miraculous victory. 
Whether it is the deputy commander of the Nara clan or the ordinary Kanoha ninjas, they all look at Natsuo with a look of admiration. So this is the power of a Chihamadara. What a terrifying power, it's a blessing that it's on our side now. Such formidable power. If it weren't for the first Hokage's suppression, wouldn't Kanoha already be under Uchiha Madara's leadership, unifying the entire ninja world? Power brings prestige. There is no doubt that they have all become fans of Natsuo now. Thanks to Natsuo-sama, we finally have time to recover. We just have to wait a little longer, and the village's reinforcements will arrive. Then we will have the ability to counterattack Kurigika. However, Natsuo shook his head. There is no need for that. I will personally defeat Kurigika tomorrow. I will launch an attack on Kurigika myself. Natsuo said with determination. It was fine when I wasn't here. But now that I'm here, Kurigika can no longer be as imposing as before. On behalf of everyone I will teach you a profound lesson. Upon hearing this everyone was filled with passion. Yes, Natsuo-sama. However, they did not know what Natsuo was thinking deep down there is not enough time. I have barely started, and the most crucial thing has not been done yet. How can I waste the effects of the Umenso and waste time waiting for the villagers reinforcements? 10 minutes is too short. There was barely time for foreplay. How could Natsuo be satisfied with the current profits? On the other hand, Kurigika's forces have already retreated to their own camp. Turumi Mei's complexion gradually returned to normal after being flushed. But she did not recover her previous seductive state. Instead, she seemed somewhat angry. However, Turumi Mei raised her head and looked at the high-ranking ninjas around her, noticing that they all had unpleasant expressions. We lost a third of our forces in just one battle. Although we still have the advantage in terms of numbers, resources and occupied territory, what does this advantage mean in the face of that overwhelming power? Everyone forced a bitter smile and sighed softly. Natsuo alone caused so much damage. Even if Kurigika currently has a large number of ninjas, reserves of resources, and occupies a significant amount of territory in the Land of Fire, what does it mean? Natsuo can easily recover those losses in minutes. How the hell are they supposed to fight this? Of course, there are also people with strong determination. What are you afraid of? A sturdy man slammed the table. A bunch of cowards. What is there to be afraid of? Our Mizukich-sama has already stopped at Chiha Natsuo, hasn't she? As the conversation continued, the ninjas who stayed behind to help Turumi Mei fight Natsuo, began to exaggerate things more and more, blowing the situation out of proportion as they became excited. With the sturdy man as the instigator, the conversation turned to how the Mizukich-sama has the same strength as Natsuo, which is why she was able to hold him back so they could escape. This means that a Mizukich has the same power level as Natsuo. Besides Natsuo, there is no one in Kanoha who can stop us. Turumi Mei, I stopped at Chiha Natsuo. Who said that? Turumi Mei couldn't help but look at the sturdy man again, and found that it was a ninja who looked familiar. She vaguely remembered that the Karigika ninjas had already decided to retreat, but this guy raised his arm and shouted, If you are men, follow me to help the fifth Mizukich-sama. So, he took a group of ninjas and went to help, but he should not be underestimated just because he is reckless, his strength is still quite good, meeting the standards of an elite jonin. He is fast and has extremely strong survival skills. So he kept helping until the end, and among the Karigika ninjas who left with Turumi Mei, the figure of him was there so. When Turumi may recognize him, she roared in her mind. You were one of the culprits by whom I was bullied for 10 more minutes. Looking at the Kiri ninjas who originally had low morale, but now raised their heads with renewed hope. Turumi may realize that some of the high-ranking ninja wanted to use her to boost morale, and perhaps manipulate her later. Half stunned she tried to explain to them that she couldn't face Natsuo. But in the end they interpreted it as her being modest. In the end Turumi Mei could only force herself to say, I'm still not as good as a Chiha Natsuo. But if I use all my strength I can still stop him for a while. She thought, I'll use lava release to tangle him for a few minutes. I already did it once, so I can do it again. But sacrificing more would be too much however, as soon as Turumi Mei finished speaking everyone became excited. Looking at the fifth Mizukichu fought against a Chiha Natsuo without any injuries, it was obvious that she still had plenty of strength. Some people in their minds began to think, if the fifth Mizukich can entangle Natsuo, then if we send more capable individuals to cooperate with the Mizukich, will we have any chance of defeating Natsuo? Everyone's morale instantly soared, and even many ninja who were not originally loyal to the village became excited. Soon in the hearts of many ninjas, Turumi Mei became the existence that every town dreams of of course, except Kanoha. Even some ninjas began to say that the fifth Mizukich is the strongest Mizukich. Seeing the Kiri ninjas getting more and more excited, Turumi Mei was completely confused. Wait, wait, how did things end up like this? I clearly said, I'm not as good as a Chiha Natsuo did everyone forget that. When did I become the strongest Mizukage? Can you just listen to me? However, everyone completely ignored Turumi Mei's expression and discussed excitedly among themselves. Due to the constant internal conflicts within Kurigika, some clan leaders saw this situation as an opportunity to weaken their rivals. So they began to divert the conversation towards Turumi Mei's strength and as with such power, she was unwilling to pressure the Kiri ninja to fully support the war efforts. Using this as an excuse, they attempted to pressure their rival clans into handing over their secret techniques 
techniques and supplies to support the 5th Mizukage in the war. This led the ninjas who did not know these ins and outs to think that Tarumi Mei was truly a benevolent Mizukage, a wise ruler who would not appear in Karigaka again. So helping the wise and benevolent Mizukage defeat the evil Ichiha became her destiny. After all, Tarumi Mei clearly possessed such terrifying power. But she did not use force to oppress others. How compassionate she was. Tarumi Mei was completely confused. She couldn't understand why things had taken this turn. Well, if the fourth Kezakiyaj, Rasa, saw Tarumi Mei's current situation, she could empathize. Yes, I was also pushed to become the strongest Kezakiyaj this way. But seeing that the situation could get out of her control, she quickly said, Before we fully understand Natsuo's strength, I suggest we focus on preserving Karigaka's strength. Then without giving anyone the chance to speak, Tsurumi Mei continued saying, As ninjas we must gather more information about the enemy, before making a decisive and fatal attack. I can't let the people of Karigaka shed too much blood. Tsurumi Mei's face was filled with sorrow. But what she really wanted to say was, I don't want to sell my body and go distract Natsuo again. First delay for as long as possible. It would be best to delay until she finds an excuse to sign a peace treaty with Konohagaka. Of course, the high-ranking officials present were even more moved when they heard this statement. There were even ninjas who immediately burst into tears and said, Is this the benevolence of 5th Mizukage-sama? Our 5th Mizukage-sama has inherited the kindness of the 1st Mizukage by Akiran sama Back in the turbulent Sengoku period, 1st Mizukage-sama traveled around relying on his unique charisma to establish Karigaka. By Akiran sama you have a successor now. Tarumi Mei, she just wanted to find an excuse to delay time even more. But in the mouths of these guys, it became another act of her benevolence. Although I love Karigaka, but I'm not as benevolent as you say. But since things have reached this point, Tarumi Mei can only pretend to show her benevolence and tolerance, then emphasize the need to buy time, investigate more information about Natsuo, and strive to make a strategic plan for a decisive blow in the future. The Kiri ninjas also agreed as they understood the importance of intelligence in ninja battles. Seeing everyone nod in agreement, Tarumi Mei finally breathed a sigh of relief. Alright, as long as I buy enough time, I'll be able to find a solution to escape this situation maybe tomorrow. Konoha will face a critical situation on any of the other battlefronts, and Natsuo will have to deal with it first. First, right? Tarumi Mei is very clear about the current situation in the ninja world. Even if Konoha has a ninja as skilled as Natsuo, it can't change the fact that Konoha is fighting the four major ninja villages in the world with the strength of a single village. If the situation wasn't so dangerous, Natsuo wouldn't have been able to get rid of the trouble he caused earlier so quickly. So she has to buy time. Buying time is the key. However, Tarumi Mei's plan was well thought out. But in the next second boom, a huge shock of came. The people gathered at this time were all experienced ninjas, so they quickly ran out. Then their expressions changed. Oh no, Ichiha Natsuo is attacking again. The Susanoo was unleashing its power without restraints. The Kiri ninjas panicked and fled. The high-level ninjas did not hesitate and stepped forward to stabilize the morale. Then they started shouting, Rest assured, we still have the fifth Mizukage here. Natsuo is alone, our Mizukage can stop him. Hold on for a while longer. The fifth generation will deal with him soon. Tarumi Mei, she stood there in a daze. But she noticed that all the Kiri ninjas in the camp were looking at her with hopeful eyes. She felt a lump in her heart. Then she lamented in her mind. It seems that the plan to buy time will no longer work. Tarumi Mei sighed inwardly, but her responsibility towards Karigaka did not allow her to turn back, so she could only run forward. Her sexy and elegant figure stood outside the Karigaka fortress. Her strong back seemed immune to any setback. Natsuo, who gave you the audacity to dare to attack Karigaka alone? Tarumi Mei said loudly, Today, I will teach you a lesson. After speaking with righteous indignation, he immediately lowered his head and ordered the ninjas next to him. Listen to my orders, immediately evacuate with all Kiri ninjas, destroy all supplies, and leave nothing for Kanoha. The higher-ups were puzzled and asked Mizukage-sama, why should we retreat? Now that Natsuo has come alone, with a help, you can kill him here. Kill him? Do you think you can do it? Also, if he comes alone, do you think that matters at all? Tarumi Mei screamed inwardly. But on the surface, she remained calm and said, You don't understand. I am not his match yet. I need enough intelligence support to have a chance of defeating him. So you are worried about intelligence. The ninjas understood and assured her, Mizukich-sama, please rest assured. Even if we have to risk our lives, we will find his weaknesses for you. Tarumi Mei's mouth twitched, her expression became serious, and she said, Good, the Karigaka I want to establish will not sacrifice its companions easily. Even if you can investigate his intelligence, what then? There will inevitably be a large number of casualties. Until we find a way to quickly defeat him as the fifth Mizukich, I will not allow unnecessary sacrifices. I would rather slow down the pace of the war than increase the casualties of our ninjas. I, Tarumi Mei, will never give up the life of any Kiri ninja, nor do I want any Kiri ninja to sacrifice themselves for me. Tarumi Mei stepped forward, her voice filled with determination. I don't want that kind of victory. Upon hearing this, everyone was moved to tears. In Karigaka, where strength is valued above all, 
High-ranking ninja have always used the lives of their subordinates as tokens to increase their own chances of success. Our great Mizukage-sama is really too kind. She really is the most suitable Mizukage for Karigaka. She is a hope, a light. Listen to my command. Everyone, retreat. Terumi Mei shouted loudly. I don't need your help. I can escape from his hands on my own. And I don't need you to influence his state with your lives. Leave everything here to me. Are my orders clear? Upon hearing this, many Kiri ninjas, with tears in their eyes, shouted in the loudest voice possible. Yes, fifth Mizukage Sama. With that said, they looked at Terumi Mei fanatically, then turned decisively and left. They believed in their Mizukage Sama. A Mizukage Sama like this will definitely not lose to a mere Uchiha. Natsuo, he was a little confused. What's the situation with the Kiri ninjas below? The retreat is understandable. But why is their morale so high? Without looking at their actions, but only at their expressions, it seems that they are the victors, and that Natsuo is the one who is fleeing. However, he doesn't really care, especially since his target once again jumped into the Susanoo. You've come. Natsuo raised an eyebrow, with a brilliant smile. Why would not? Terumi Mei spoke firmly. Natsuo, as long as I, Terumi Mei, am here, you won't be able to harm a fellow member of Kurigika. Oh, is that so? Natsuo's expression was strange. Then you'll have to try harder. As he spoke, the crystal Natsuo was standing in began to open a space. For Kurigika, I, Terumi Mei, will stop you at all costs. Terumi Mei's voice was full of righteousness as she leaped directly into the crystal space of Susanoo. The next second, Natsuo waved his hand. The extremely dense chakra dyed the surrounding space black. He had used this method before, after all, he wasn't interested in others observing his playtime. Pure high-density chakra could even block the observation of the Byakugan, concealing all internal activities. Even though there were countless shinobi with perception abilities among the army at this moment, but no one could see the movements inside that black space. The people of Kurigika looked at the pure black space inside. Mizukage Sama is once again in a death match with Ichiha Natsuo, who is a quite dangerous opponent. She has sacrificed too much for Kurigika. Brothers, let us not waste the time that the Mizukage Sama has fought to win for us. Retreat. Retreat quickly. As they spoke, they burned the stored military supplies, and the Kiri ninjas retreated quickly. And inside Susanoo's crystal space, Terumi Mei whimpered, Lava release has already been released, while using both hands to desperately stop Natsuo's attack. But her breathing became faster and faster after all, even though she is the Mizukage, she is just a girl in her twenties, in the prime of her youth. She hadn't even been in a relationship before, but now, although she has a very open attitude, she is actually a girl without any experience. Her body quickly starts to heat up, her breathing becomes heavier, and the faint male scent in her nose makes her heart pound. Meanwhile, due to the influence of her subconscious, she continues to justify her actions in her mind. Okay? Okay. Terumi Mei tries to calm down and maintain her composure. It's just a bit of physical contact. Plus this time there are no idiots who want to come and help, so this time they will manage to retreat quickly. It only takes a few minutes, and the Kiri ninjas can escape Natsuo's attack range. It's only a few minutes, what can he do? I just need to endure a few minutes as a Mizukiji I can still handle it. Terumi Mei justifies her actions, gathers her courage, and begins to find her actions reasonable, so her belief strengthens. However, it hasn't been long, and she immediately realizes that something is wrong. Wait, Terumi Mei's expression changes slightly, she tilts her head back and angrily questions Natsuo. I've clearly held you back, so why is your Susanu still able to move? Yes, the Susanu is actually chasing after the Kiri ninjas. Although some time has passed and the Kiri ninjas have escaped for a while, most of the Kiri ninjas are still within Susanu's field of vision. I've already put in so much effort, why are you still pursuing them? Terumi Mei angrily questioned, but Natsuo simply smiled and said, of course I'm chasing them. It's reasonable that I can multitask right. I'm enjoying cough. I mean, I'm distracting you while I control the Susanu. But compared to yesterday, this level can no longer distract me like it did at the beginning. Natsuo looked at Terumi Mei's delicate figure with a look full of desire. Obviously, you have to try harder so you can distract me. Terumi Mei, she, a seemingly open-minded but actually innocent girl, still possesses some resistance to going further with Natsuo. But she knows how powerful the Susanoo's sword is, which begins to slowly rise to make an attack. Fine, fine, fine. Terumi Mei's face was filled with shame and anger. I will try harder. Saying that, she walked over, placed her arms around Natsuo's neck, and then began to take the lead. Natsuo smiled slightly, and the Susanoo's movements stopped at that moment, a bitter battle of about 20 minutes, which concluded with Terumi Mei, with a blushing face, escaping from the Susanoo. This time, she still maintained her bottom line, and tried some methods to successfully protect her own purity, and the lives of the Kiri ninjas. But the shame on her face was hard to hide. She quickly retreated to the Kurigaka fortress in the rear, and was immediately greeted with enthusiastic applause from the Kiri ninjas. Our Mizukich-sama has once again rejected Ichiha Natsuo. 
This is the strength of our Mizukage Sama, the strongest Mizukage. Long live. Listening to this, Tarumi Mei couldn't help but wish to use lava release on everyone present and burn them all to ashes. But as she looked at the Kiri ninjas regardless of their status or background embracing each other and celebrating together, she could only force a bitter smile and swallow her frustration. After all, this was her responsibility. She just wanted to protect the Kiri ninjas and try to wait for an opportunity for the tide of the battle to change. Although it was based on his own lies and was a fragile illusion that depended on Natsuo. But this this was her duty as Mizukage. What should we do next? Tarumi Mei thought as she forced a smile. Will Natsuo come again tomorrow? Do I have to just as Tarumi Mei had expected? Natsuo came again the next day. And just like before, Tarumi Mei had to personally intervene and suppress Susanoo's actions. Although the Kiri ninjas had the experience from before and could evacuate in an orderly and swift manner. But Natsuo's demands this time were even more demanding than before. Tarumi Mei had to sacrifice herself again to protect the lives of the Kiri ninjas. But after Tarumi Mei's blushing retreat on the third day, Natsuo attacked the Karigaka camp again. You came just to intimidate me. Didn't you Tarumi Mei's eyes were red? But because of her responsibility as Mizukage, she had to step forward and fight for the Kiri ninjas. Of course, although Tarumi Mei was affected by the manipulation of her subconscious, she had still considered changing this situation. So this time, she switched her weapon to explosive tags. As long as she could get close enough and attach the explosive tags, there might be a chance of victory. As for whether she could get close, Tarumi Mei wasn't worried. After all, Natsuo couldn't isolate her too far away if he wanted to intimidate her, right? It turned out that Tarumi Mei's guess was correct, but she didn't think about what would happen if her plan failed. When she hugged Natsuo and attached the explosive tags to his back, the explosive tags exploded as she had hoped, but they were useless. Because without her realizing it, between the position where she placed the tags and Natsuo's body, an additional Susanoo defense had appeared. The explosive tags had considerable power but were unable to penetrate the Susanoo's defense. Tarumi Mei's attempt failed, but that was normal. After all, she didn't believe that this little attempt could easily solve Natsuo. She was simply struggling to find a glimmer of hope to escape this situation. But the problem was that the cost of failure was too high, because when the explosive tags exploded, Tarumi Mei naturally moved away from Natsuo's side. Then Natsuo, who didn't need to divert his attention to fight Tarumi Mei, directly controlled the Susanoo to attack the Kiri ninjas. That attack was a true representation of destruction itself capable of demolishing a mountain. Even if Tarumi Mei realized in time that something was wrong and quickly approached Natsuo, trying to divert his attention to reduce the power of the attack. However, this attack killed a large number of Kiri ninjas. You bastard. Tarumi Mei's eyes were bloodshot, wishing she could fight Natsuo to the death. But in the end he had to surrender to the devil. When she returned to the Kirigaka camp, the Kiri ninjas did not blame her. After all, when high-level experts clash, it is normal for low-level ninjas to be affected by collateral damage. As ninjas, they didn't expect the Mizukage to be able to completely block all of Natsuo's attacks. They even comforted Tarumi Mei, saying that this is the fate of a ninja, and they hoped that the fifth Mizukage wouldn't let this loss affect her state of mind and subsequently affect her battle with Natsuo. But the psychological pressure that Tarumi Mei had to endure was immense, because only she knew that she could actually stop all of Natsuo's attacks, if she was willing to pay the price. Tarumi Mei lightly bit her red lips, and finally the last barrier in her mind, which did not allow the manipulation of her subconscious to affect her completely, collapsed. Step by step, she gave in only to protect the lives of the Karigaka ninja. She was a great Mizukage, but Natsuo still overwhelmed her with his strength. She faced great pressure. Tarumi Mei took turns fighting, and the Kiri ninjas retreated step by step. This kind of battle continued, until one day. And before Tarumi Mei could try her previous methods again, she discovered that she couldn't stop the Susanoo's movements no matter what. So, are you going to continue resisting? Natsuo smiled, happy to see a flame of defiance and desire burning in her eyes, her auburn hair surrounding her face beautifully. Don't think you can conquer me easily. Tarumi Mei responded before breaking away and brandishing a kunai at him. Then things turned into a delightful duel, where she tried trick after trick only to repeatedly fail. Defending himself was a monotonous task for Natsuo, allowing him to focus his attention on her spectacular body. She was beginning to show the first signs of exhaustion, sweaty, out of breath. But her condition was not what he focused on. No, his attention belonged to the way she dressed. She was wearing a dark blue long-sleeved dress. The dress only covers up to the top of her arm and the bottom of her breasts. Underneath her dress, she wears a mesh shirt that covers more of her upper body than her dress. But that wasn't important, not when the mesh could still show off her voluptuous contours. Her spectacular body was becoming more and more visible due to her sweat. But soon, his attention was focused on her face once again. The look of concentration on her face was understandable because she was trying to take advantage of the last opportunity to show that as a strong woman, she can still make things difficult for him. At the same time Natsuo managed to capture another emotion on her face. A thick layer of excitement. A sudden suspicion appeared in Natsuo's mind, 
and he increased the intensity of his assault taking the initiative instead of allowing her to attack at her own pace, completely overwhelming her before she could even make an attack. And her excitement increased with Natsuo's dominance. Apparently, his manipulation of her subconscious, coupled with Karigaka's respect for the strong, affected her more than Natsuo expected. Excitedly, Natsuo smiled as that particular detail significantly accelerated his plans. Then Natsuo swung his kunai with all his power, opening her guard completely, the perfect opportunity to end the battle. But he decided to take a step back. You just have to say that you surrender to me. No one will judge you. Is that clear? Natsuo added giving her an intentional exit, so that she could rest fully aware that her pride would not allow her to utter those words, even though she had already accepted what was about to happen. You don't she began, but he didn't give her a chance to finish her words charging forward. Even when she was surprised, she managed to defend herself against it by making the kunai collide with each other. Natsuo then grabbed her dress, trying to turn the battle into a hand-to-hand -hand fight. She swung her kunai at him, forcing him back. He did so but not before tearing off a large piece of her dress and her mesh shirt, leaving her arm and shoulder bare, with her cleavage being even more visible. Natsuo dodged her attacks again before lunging forward, getting close enough to her that he could deliver an explosive slap to her rear, which made her gasp before screaming, you're dead. But, paradoxically, her embarrassment and excitement colored her tone instead of anger. If you think so, Natsuo replied before dodging another assault and tearing off another piece of cloth in the process. Then, they fell into a routine, she attacked him, he dodged, but not before retreating with another reward. This entire exchange took place in no more than a few minutes, but Tsurumi Mei's attacks became increasingly furious, a behavior that contrasted greatly with the way excitement filled her face, ignoring her nakedness. Her dress was gone for all intents and purposes, the few remnants of her mesh shirt remaining failing to cover her spectacular breasts. Her shorts and her mesh leotard were in better condition, but only relatively. They were still torn enough to give a full view of her underwear, a sexy little black piece. Apparently, once she accepted what her fights would end up in, she expected it more than she wanted to show. Natsuo decided to end the games, and when he dodged her attack the next time, he grabbed her wrist instead of trying to tear her clothes. He then twisted her wrist to force her to release her kunai. She tried to resist despite her cry of pain, looking at Natsuo sinisterly. But the important thing was that her arousal had not dimmed, not even the slightest bit. Natsuo applied more force, enough to threaten a fracture, and she finally dropped her kunai, but instantly followed up with a punch, trying to turn it into a tajutsu fight. Natsuo let go of her wrist, because from the previous confrontations, he already knew that she was only good at ninjutsu. So he didn't even bother to continue defending himself, he just gave her chest a playful squeeze. Her kicks resulted in further loss of the remains of her clothing, then she decided to use a grappling skill, since it was the last thing she hadn't tried. Natsuo let her succeed with her technique. Her eyes widened in shock when their bodies collided, but not as much as when she found herself on the ground, arms linked behind her back and legs pinned. Slowly, Natsuo leaned forward pressing his body against her butt, which was barely covered by the tatters of her clothes, and the skimpy panties she was wearing. Are you going to give in to me? Natsuo whispered in his ear with a hoarse voice. Never. Tarumi Mei whispered through her teeth as she struggled. Although her resistance was not a desperate attempt to free herself from Natsuo's grip, but rather a game of friction against Natsuo's powerful presence that pressed against her ear. Each touch ignited a palpable excitement in her. Are you sure? Natsuo whispered as he got rid of his clothes without letting go. When Natsuo approached her butt again, it was his naked member that merged with that part of her body. Her delicate panties were barely a barrier to prevent friction between their parts. And now, noticing Natsuo's actions, Tarumi Mei loudly declared her intention to fight until the delicious end. I'll never give in to you. I can handle anything you do. Anything. Natsuo responded, using a guttural whisper, enough to make her shiver. Then, with agonizing calm, he began to strip her of the last fragments of her clothing, slowly tearing them apart. Each whisper of fabric tearing off her made her shudder, until only her panties remained on her body. Tiny, suggestive lace garments, too thin to hide her palpable arousal. Natsuo grabbed the hem of her delicate garment, and Tarumi Mei arched her back in anticipation of her next move, subtly lifting her bottom to grant him deeper access. However, he only chuckled and let his fingers slowly slide up, calmly tracing the path of her spine. Aren't you giving up yet? Natsuo inquired. Never. She whispered, attempting to emulate her previous determination, though her voice was laced with obvious longing that altered her tone. I'm curious to know how long you'll last. He whispered, one hand still firm, maintaining control over her arms behind her back while his other hand caressed her skin with slow movements that caused a wave of sensations that made her skin crawl, rising firmly towards her captivating breasts. She let out an involuntary moan as she felt his fingers sink into her breasts with overwhelming intensity, altering the rhythm to a more passionate one. Her response was a delight of pleasure as he explored her skin with passionate intensity. Without warning, he took his hand away from her, gently caressing her again, to which she unleashed a cry of surprise that echoed in the air, a mixture of indignation and excitement, creating a spectacular moment. What a naughty girl. 
Natsuo said as he ran his hand through her auburn hair in a surprisingly gentle caress. Little by little Tarumi Mei got carried away by the situation, and her pride quickly lost importance. The reason was clear. Not only was it the manipulation of her subconscious to make her think this situation was okay, there was also the power that Natsuo had displayed, a power that completely overwhelmed her. As a cage-level Kinochi and one of the strongest women in Kurigika, Tarumi Mei has always sought a man strong enough to dominate her as her partner. And now Natsuo meets her requirements, and the suggestion from her subconscious makes Tarumi Mei accept Natsuo more easily. Natsuo continued caressing her, exploring with his tongue, and occasionally brushing his teeth against the most sensitive areas of her. Finally, with deliberate slowness, he removed her panties, finally revealing her bare skin. After the little game Natsuo had played with Tarumi Mei, he needed her to give in before continuing. Thus, he slid his shaft along her backside, grazing the entrance to her intimacy, just enough to moisten the tip between her folds without pushing forward. Suddenly, she arched her back, seeking the connection, but Natsuo was quicker, retracting just in time. She squirmed and cursed and moaned, but in the end she ended up pinned to the ground again, with her arms outstretched and Natsuo directly on top of her. I give up, she whispered in sweet defeat. She couldn't say anything else because Natsuo's lips were on hers. After a few moments, Natsuo enveloped her with passion, penetrating her with a sudden and determined impulse that marked their union, breaking her barrier with a fiery gesture. Tarumi Mei's eyes widened in surprise, as she had no experience in that aspect. Also at that moment Natsuo activated his Renshin no Kanke, and upon noticing that he managed to form the mental link with Tarumi Mei, he realized that Tarumi Mei had completely surrendered to him. He then began to share a small part of his life energy and mental power with Tarumi Mei, since the bond had barely formed. Meanwhile Tarumi Mei closed her eyes trying to process her experience. For someone who was experiencing this for the first time, aside from the obvious pain from the intensity of the experience, what Natsuo saw in her eyes was a kind of fist determination. Suddenly, Tarumi Mei raised her head enough to reach his shoulder. Although he wasn't surprised by her bite, he didn't expect her to be firm enough to cause an injury. You didn't imagine that I would surrender so docilely to your wishes, did you? Her radiant smile was interrupted by moans that drowned out her words. Although the increase in the intensity of Natsuo's actions caused a sharp pain in her intimacy, the only thing he perceived in her eyes was an unbridled, defiant and jubilant passion. Under this intense experience, her pleasure steadily increased until she suddenly overflowed in a whirlwind of sensations, leaving her trembling and moaning. Natsuo pulled out of her for a moment, grabbed her shoulder and moved her to a position where her chest rested against the floor. In a moment of surprise, she gasped as she realized his intentions and tried to break free of him. However, her brief hesitation gave Natsuo the opportunity to grab her arms and bring them together, keeping her under control with just one hand. Tarumi Mei let out a moan as she felt Natsuo's movements again, which intensely stimulated her exhausted nerves. Despite her annoyed expression, her pleasure was evident. A series of moans came from between her lips while, from time to time, he pressed hard on her breasts. However, the most intense moment came when he grabbed her hair, tilting her head back to get the perfect angle, thus increasing their bond. Seeing her body glistening with sweat, with her magnificent figure and her curves. It was a captivating image. A few moments later, as she contracted around him in another moment of ecstasy, she brought Natsuo to the edge as well, triggering an explosion of sensations that culminated in the next instant, filling her as she intensified her moans. Tarumi Mei fell exhausted, barely managing to roll over onto her back, her chest rising and falling with each labored breath, adding a delicacy to her appearance. The marks Natsuo left on her told a story of shared intensity as she tried to assimilate the wave of sensations. Feeling tempted, Natsuo leaned forward to seal the moment with a soft, lingering kiss on her lips. The surprise on her face was simply charming. Tarumi may let herself be carried away by the delicate caresses of Natsuo's lips. That unexpected closeness on his part caught her off guard more than any other action. A fleeting vulnerable expression crossed her face. Just at that moment Natsuo felt his mental connection with Tarumi may grow a little stronger. He gently explored her figure with his hands, his touches light and ephemeral, while his fingers traced her curves. Her lips began to respond, initially cautiously and slowly, but soon her enthusiasm surpassed even Natsuo's in a lively play of tongues. Then, her movement slowly changed, obviously planning something. Natsuo was curious enough to cooperate with Tarumi Mei, and kind enough to act shocked, when she pinned his arms to his sides as she sat on him. It's time for revenge, she said, pretending to be threatening. However, unfortunately for her, the Sharingan was sharp enough to pick up her growing blush even in the dark. Natsuo joined the game by trying a symbolic fight while she smiled, appearing to be threatening, although she only conveyed enthusiasm and excitement. Then, without him having a chance to say anything, she lowered her hips onto him, enveloping him with her presence once more, and began to ride him with unbridled passion. Natsuo remained still, even as the grip around his wrists loosened due to the pleasure she was experiencing, giving him the opportunity to release himself from her. Why would he do it, when the feeling of being dominated represented an exceptional change of pace, and at the same time provided Tarumi Mei with the long-awaited victory? It was clear that her subconscious had accepted this situation due to manipulation, but her pride as Mizukage drove her to fight. Despite knowing that he was stronger, she longed for enough strength to gain the occasional victory. 
Noticing that her face was twisted with pleasure, an unmistakable sign that she was approaching climax, Natsuo, considering his previous surrender as a sufficient gift chose for that precise moment to free himself from her control. Her legs wrapped around him as he hugged her. Natsuo rolled and she was trapped between his body and the ground. He didn't bother to hold her arms, allowing her fingers to dig into his back, adding a slight pain to the pleasure. However, Natsuo had the sage body, so any injuries would be insignificant, and would heal quickly. Satisfying her implied a small sacrifice as he kept her immobilized on the ground under her weight penetrating trading her without mercy. Her lips joined to his in an indescribable passion. The position lasted about 20 minutes and concluded as expected, with Natsuo depositing his seed into her. At the same time Natsuo also shared more of his life energy and mental power with her, through his wrench in no kanke. After doing that, Natsuo leaned forward once more. Again, she muttered dazedly. Then her lips connected with an unmatched passion. Two hours passed before they finally emerged from the Susanu, and the only reason Terumi Mei was able to walk properly was because Natsuo shared his life energy with her. During the Shinobi World War, all major nations had attached great importance to intelligence. Somehow the news that Kurigika was forced to retreat under Natsuo's devastating attack using a power similar to that possessed by Ichiha Madara, and that the fifth Mizukage stepped forward to fight Natsuo quickly spread to all nations. After Terumi Mei returned from her battle with Natsuo, Half-dazed, she had blurted out some platitudes about the strength of unity, after having managed to repel the evil Achiha, which had spread throughout the Karigaka camp. And before she had time to realize what was happening, the high-ranking ninjas had woven a historic battle where she alone stopped the giant summoned by Natsuo, giving them enough time to escape, as well as highlighting her kindness in not allowing other ninjas to sacrifice themselves in vain. She realized that everyone thought they could use this to pressure or manipulate her into doing what they wanted, which, to be fair, they had already done once by involving Karigaka in this war without her knowledge. The Kiri ninjas began exchanging stories about the 5th Mizukage's heroic actions during Natsuo's attacks. The stories were many and fanciful, but for each of them, no matter how extravagant, there were many willing to swear to their veracity, claiming to have witnessed how it happened with their own eyes. And so, as time passed, the legend of the strongest Mizukage in history grew. All major nations were instantly dumbfounded. A giant chakra humanoid shaped like a samurai warrior. Are you sure about this information? Suchiki Janoki widened his eyes. How could he have that power? This is impossible. Anoki said while tightly gripping the intelligence report brought by the Anbu. Anoki's eyes turned red. No one understood the power of Ichiha Madara better than him. He was truly a formidable force that could oppress an entire nation. On the other hand, ninjas of this generation don't know how terrifying the power that Ichiha Madara possessed was, so they don't think much about Natsuo's power. Don't worry, Tsuchikich sama Koritsuchi said carelessly, isn't he just an Ichiha? Look, he hasn't been able to defeat the Mizukich for several days. What's so scary about that? Ichiha Madara was strong back then, but we, Awagaka, are strong now too. Why panic? That's right. Karigika's Tarumi Mei has been fighting Natsuo for several days, and although she has been steadily retreating, it is obvious that she was not seriously injured. Even if the rumors about the strongest Mizukage are true, Atsuchikage is not weak either. Tarumi Mei was able to resist Ichiha Natsuo, so old man you should be able to resist him too. Anoki's expression changed slightly, unexpectedly feeling that what his granddaughter said seemed to make some sense. He didn't know the true strength of the Mizukage, but considering his lack of fame and not having great achievements in battles, at most he could be considered in the upper tier of the cage level, like Hanzo of the Salamander's strength, which is not impressive compared to Ichiha Madara. And if Natsuo, who could not defeat Tarumi Mei despite multiple attempts, could be stopped by her, then he may have the same technique as Ichiha Madara. But that does not mean that he is on the same level. Hum, it seems that the shadow that Ichiha Madara left on me back then was deeper than I thought. I lost my composure too quickly, recognizing the technique of that time. Anoki thought, hum, there should be a problem with his technique otherwise. How could he be stopped by the Mizukage? Anoki once again affirmed his own thoughts. And once he came to that conclusion, he suddenly felt relieved. I'll pester Terumi Mei to fight Natsuo a few more times, preferably causing serious injuries, so we can have a better chance of detecting what the problem is with that technique. Anoki thought happily. However, Natsuo's deterrence power may not be as outrageous as Ichiha Madara's but it is still very significant. He decided to be cautious and reduce Awagaka's attacks. Before knowing what the weakness of Natsuo's technique is, he doesn't want to face Natsuo yet. Meanwhile, Rasa has made a completely opposite decision. Attack. Continue the attack. Rasa waved his hand. Such a good opportunity. Not seizing it would be a waste. But Kazuki sama It is the power that Ichiha Madara possessed Baki hesitated. If we attack too fiercely, will it attract Natsuo? Don't worry. Rasa raised his head confidently. I've got everything under control. No need to worry about Natsuo. He was well aware of Natsuo's strength. Although Turumi Mei was called the strongest Mizukage by the Kiri ninjas, her strongest achievement before this was only suppressing the Three Tails Jinchuriki, she hadn't completely captured the Three Tails. Turumi Mei definitely couldn't be Natsuo's opponent. And if Rasa remembered correctly, Turumi Mei seemed to be a very famous beauty. 
With these two points confirmed, it was easy to guess what would happen next. Natsuo is just playing around, but precisely because he's playing, he definitely won't have time to deal with a Sunagaka. Rasa calculated in his mind, we can completely launch a full-scale attack before Natsuo gets tired of playing. The reason Rasa didn't let the San Shinobi launch a full-scale attack was because he was worried that the firepower would be too strong and attract Natsuo. The current attack was more about gaining some advantages, and then finding the best time to negotiate a peace treaty with Kanova. But obviously, the larger the territory occupied by Sunagaka, the more favorable the treaty they would obtain. Attack. Rasa waved his hand and countless golden sand surged forward. Although he was considered a disgrace to the cage level, but it had to be said that Rasa's ninjutsu was weak against individuals, but strong against armies and fortifications. He and the fourth Hokage were completely different types of ninja. The fourth Hokage relied on absolute mobility to maintain an absolute advantage in one-on-one -on -one combat. On the other hand, Rasa is completely the opposite. In one-on-one -on -one battles, he is completely dominated by any of the five cage. But when it comes to launching large-scale attacks on the battlefield, he is the strongest among the five cage. The heavy and powerful sand gold, like a huge wave, surges forward steadily. Wherever it goes, it engulfs all fortifications, traps, and enemies. Even the defenses that Kanoha had built, and all its preparations, were easily crushed by him, in the absence of a high-level ninja who could contain Rasa. Even while attacking, Rasa still had the time to contemplate. Terumi Mei seems to be a very attractive beauty, and having the title of Mizuki is a bonus. Whether it's reputation or strength, she is much stronger than that wild girl from my family. No, Tamari's training as a bride needs to be strengthened. On the battlefield against Kumogaka, Ichiha Madara's power. Is that little girl from Karigaka really that strong? Reikage A sat confidently in his chair, his sturdy physique causing the chair to creak under the weight. Chiyoki said that, according to intelligence, it should be one of Uchihamadara's techniques. Killer B shrugged, but he also couldn't understand why Natsuwa couldn't defeat the Mizukage quickly with that technique. After thinking about it, it's probably because Uchiha Natsuo's body has some problems, and can't exert the full force of that technique. Reiki J analyzed, both of Komogaka's tailed beasts are the ones that Uchiha Madara personally captured. They have a deep impression of Uchiha Madara's power, and do not believe at all that someone who is as powerful as him could be held back by a simple Mizukage. What should we do, big brother? Should we strengthen our attack or wait for the situation to change? Killer B asked. Reiki J pondered for a moment and then decisively said, without hesitation, continue the attack. He suddenly stood up, his tall figure obscuring the light in the conference room. His eyes were filled with determination. No matter what power Uchiha Natsuo has, he is not Uchiha Madara after all. Besides, even if it's Uchiha Madara, so what? Eh, our combination is invincible. Upon hearing this, Killer B excitedly began to rap. Yeah, yeah. Listen to the sound, I am Killer B. My style is very brave, with Big Brother, yes, we are invincible. Rap is my jutsu, my unpredictable flow. But no matter how excited the two were, the other high-ranking officials of Kumogaka repeatedly warned them. He may not have the same strength as Uchiha Madara, but Reikage Sama must be careful. Under their persuasion, Reikage A had to reduce the intensity of the attack and allocate some manpower to consolidate the fortifications. However, seeing the worried expressions of the senior officials around him, Reikage A thought of another solution. I remember that Samui is at the Uchiha clan residence. If we bring all the members of the Uchiha clan to Kumogaka, then we will also have the Uchiha clan, right? If we can cultivate a ninja who can master the same technique as Uchiha Madara, wouldn't that have the same deterrent effect that Natsuo has now? Thinking about it, he immediately arranged for someone to contact Samu. Inside the Akatsuki organization, Nagato and Abito looked at Itachi with vigilance. The Uchiha clan actually hides such formidable strength. Fortunately, Natsuo's technique seems to have encountered problems, otherwise the war would have already ended, right? Of course, for Akatsuki at this time, apart from eagerly earning war funds, they didn't pay much attention to other things. But there is one thing that all members of Akatsuki have to take seriously. Atachi's defection, which seems to have some hidden motives. Danzo's actions have already been exposed, and various signs indicate that Atachi's defection is not as he claimed a measure of his own capacity. So what choice will Atachi make next? Continue to stay in Akatsuki, or return to Kanova and clear his name? Of course, Abito actually knows the truth about Atachi's defection, but he feels more than anyone else in Akatsuki that Atachi will return to Kanoha. It is currently the time of war, and as long as all the blame is pushed onto Danzo and the third Hokage, Itachi can easily wash away his sins. Even 5th Hokage Tsune would not refuse a cage-level expert who is loyal to the village at a time like this. But Itachi knows too many Akatsuki secrets. With this in mind, his eyes are filled with even more vigilance. While everyone focused on Itachi, Kisum stared deeply into Obito's only visible eye. He then turned his gaze towards Itachi with amusement in his eyes. Ichiha Itachi keenly perceives the alertness in everyone's gaze, but his expression remains calm. Only the occasional complexity in his eyes indicates that he is not as calm as he appears. Natsuo, have you also awakened the Manjakyo Shiringan when did you awaken it? Was it after you learned about the annihilation of our clan? Now that you have uncovered part of Danzo's conspiracy and have the power for revenge, why haven't you sought revenge against me? 
Do you have any thoughts on this? And also he slightly raises his head and looks at the moon in the sky. Sasuke, how have you been lately while other forces begin to take precautionary measures because of Natsuo? Then Kanoha was completely dumbfounded. That technique should be the Susanoo is Natsuo really that strong? Even Tsune, who understands something about Natsuo, is a little surprised. But at that moment Tsune suddenly remembered the deal with Natsuo. If you defeat Karigaka, I will agree to have children with you as a condition. But honestly, she thought at the time that this mission was too difficult for him. But Tsunade now regrets not having added the additional condition of defeating Kumogaka, Iwagako and Sunagaka. On the other side, Terumi Mei was almost in tears. In addition to Sunagaka, Kumogaka and Iwagaka also contacted them, wanting to form a strategic alliance with Kurigaka, and willing to support them with supplies for free. They only hoped that Kurigaka could bring more trouble to Kanoha. In other words, they hope to use Kurigaka to discover what the problem is. That is preventing Natsuo from exerting the full power of his technique, and if it is possible to seriously injure him in the process. Our two countries support you, but others don't know. Can Terumi Mei not know? Terumi Mei was so angry that she wanted to hit someone. If there really was a problem with her technique, would he still use it every day to intimidate a weak woman like me? Damn it. Don't talk about his technique having a problem. Last time he harassed me for two full hours, while keeping the technique activated the entire time. Terumi Mei had a resentful expression on her face. She had never seen someone maintain such powerful ninjutsu, while also intimidate women. Forget it. I have already given up. Terumi Mei didn't really know how to feel. On the one hand she feels very safe being with Natsuo. But on the other hand, she was bothered that their relationship is a secret from everyone. Kurigaka was not idle during this time. The elite ninjas of Kurigaka gathered one after another. Experts such as Hazuki Manjetsu and Ao, who were originally assigned to ambush Kanoha's supply line, returned and launched attacks against the Susanu, hoping to find Natsuo's weaknesses. However, it was all in vain. Terumi Mei was the strongest shinobi in Kurigaka, and if even she couldn't break through the defense, how could others? Furthermore, Natsuo was not recklessly using the Susanoo and charging directly into the traps set by Kurigaka. Terumi Mei could only distract Natsuo's attention while they fought. Well, actually, if it weren't for Kurigaka's higher-ups refusing to give up a portion of their power and surrender to Kanoha, Terumi Mei would have surrendered a long time ago. She didn't want to be at the mercy of the enemy and still have to pretend when she returned to camp, although her confrontations were very comfortable, and the truth was that she quite liked them. But as a proud heiress of a great clan, she didn't like having to do everything on the sly like a mistress. The Kiri ninjas began to gather to attack Natsuo, but his progress did not slow down at all. On average, Kurigaka's defense line would retreat about 50 kilometers per day. Although it may not seem like much in terms of a ninja's pace, even a Jenin could complete this distance in an hour. But they were getting closer to the coastline. In her mind, Terumi Mei had already made up her mind. Fight with Natsuo some more, then use the excuse that the defense line can't retreat any further once it reaches the coast to propose some kind of final fight against Natsuo. As a consequence of the fight to the death and being defeated by Natsuo, Terumi Mei will send a request for peace to Kanoha. After this time Terumi Mei's confidence should have been able to take control of much of Kurigaka. So the influence of the higher-ups should have decreased significantly, and the village should be more harmonious internally. Moreover, due to the spoils captured from defeating Kanoha in the early stages, even if they had to give up all the occupied land, Kurigaka would only suffer a small loss this time. After all, thanks to Terumi Mei's efforts, apart from Natsuo initially using Susanoo to eliminate the Kiri ninjas, the losses suffered by Kurigaka are within the tolerable range, and the material resources gained are abundant. Of course, Terumi Mei took advantage of this situation to attribute all this success to herself. During this time, Natsuo battled fiercely with Terumi Mei every day. During this time he also received a pleasant surprise. Ringo Ameri gave birth, and the child that was born, brought a big surprise to Natsuo. Offspring plus 1, the comprehensive potential evaluation is 186. You gain chakra plus 16, flying thunder god technique. Flying thunder god technique. This is a good thing. Natsuo immediately showed a joyful expression. With Natsuo's current combat power, the requirements for the techniques he needs are very high. That is why since he obtained the wrench no Kankei, he decided to strengthen some of his wives to the maximum, before continuing to have children with them. But still some of Natsuo's wives with considerable strength or a special bloodline, can give him some surprises like now. Natsuo's speed is fast, and his strength is strong, but he has never touched space ninjutsu. This extremely powerful mobility skill, even for him now, can still enhance his strength. Therefore, Natsuo did not hesitate to create, in the style of the fourth Hokage, a large number of kunai with the seal of the flying thunder god. Then in the shortest time possible he scattered these kunai throughout Kanoha, the battlefield and several other key locations. The emphasis is on one phrase, time management master. Natsuo used the power of the flying thunder god to quickly return home after defeating Terumi Mei every day, take care of his wives, and then return to the front the next day. Of course, he deliberately concealed his actions. Aside from the wives he planned to focus on and use the Renshi no Kenkei to strengthen them, such as Yukino, Enko, Yoko, and other wives everyone else was kept in the dark. Also during the period of time in which he came and went from the battlefield, 
he managed to form more connections with some of his children, the same connection that he had with Rayan and Hikari. As Natsuo hugged the seductive Tarumi Mei who was exhausted, with a smile on his lips he thought. This is called having a family and a wildflower. A few more days passed. Tarumi Mei decisively led a group of Kuri Shinobi to launch an attack using the excuse of we can't continue like this, otherwise we will lose all our previous achievements. Naturally, they were defeated in the end. It was Tarumi Mei who stood up and fought Natsuo for 800 rounds protecting the retreating Shinobi. The Kiri Shinobi felt ashamed, thinking that they had hindered the Mizukage's progress. Damn, if I could work harder and become stronger, maybe I could help our Mizukage defeat Natsuo. A young Miss Shinobi punched the ground, filled with resentment. Yeah, an elderly Kiri ninja sighed. It's all because our Kurigaka is too weak. It forced Lady Tarumi Mei to go into battle, and when she came back, she was exhausted and worn out. It's all a fault. Everyone clenched their teeth tears streaming down their faces. They felt angry at their own weakness. They felt guilty for involving Lady Tarumi Mei, who had to stop Natsuo single-handedly. However, Tarumi Mei had a determined expression on her face. No, it's not that all of you are weak, it's that our Kurigaka is weak. Her voice was resolute, her gaze determined. We have been fighting among ourselves for far too long, putting all our energy into internal conflicts. While we were fighting among ourselves, Kanoha perfected their medical system, and trained a large number of elite shinobi. While we were fighting among ourselves, Awagaka formed a massive earth release shinobi force. While we were fighting among ourselves, even Sunagaka, which was considered weak, worked hard and produced a man known as the strongest Kazuki in history. We have wasted too much time. We have fallen far behind other villagers. Tarumi Mei lamented, fellow Kiri ninjas, wake up. We can't continue like this. What we must do now is abandon internal conflicts, unite and build a better Kurigaka. Upon hearing this, everyone looked at Tarumi Mei with admiration. It seemed that Tarumi Mei was not there but rather a ray of light. A ray of light belonging to Kurigika. A brilliant light shining in people's hearts. Mizukage sama Many Kiri ninjas cried out in unison. For Kurigika, I have decided to seek peace with Kanoha. Tarumi Mei took a deep breath, her expression firm. We need a time of peace to resolve the lingering issues from the Bloody Mist era. What? Mizukage sama are you going to bow down to Kanoha? Many Kiri ninjas became excited upon hearing this. We can still fight. We are willing to give everything for your dignity. Their first reaction upon hearing Tarumi Mei's proposal for peace was not about what benefits the village would lose. It was about losing Tarumi Mei's dignity. It is evident that this strongest Mizukage has already established her own authority during this time. All Kiri ninjas are her fans, admiring her from the bottom of their hearts. No, Kurigika needs time. Tarumi Mei's expression remained resolute. As the cage, I cannot sacrifice the lives of my comrades for a mere reputation. With that, her expression changed, and she smiled gently. Kurigika needs to complete its recovery. There is still much work to be done, my dear comrades. Are you willing to help me? Willing. Willing. I am willing to give everything for you. Please give me your orders, Mizukich sama Everyone excitedly exclaimed. Tarumi Mei smiled slightly, feeling relieved in her heart. She had finally fooled them. As the fifth Mizukich, I command all Kiri ninjas to send a signal of peace to Kanoha village. Yes. Fifth Mizukich sama Everyone shouted in unison, their loud voices making it seem as if they were not the ones seeking peace but rather Kanoha sending a peace message. Soon, Tarumi Mei personally arrived at the Kanoha forces where Natsuo was located, stating that she had dispatched ninjas to seek peace with Kanoha and requesting the Kanoha forces present to cease their attack. Natsuo accepted this, after all. Natsuo leaned in close to Tarumi Mei's ear and whispered softly, Take good care of our child when you return to the village. Upon hearing this, Tarumi Mei's face blushed. Yes, after Natsuo's arduous battles Tarumi Mei became pregnant. Tarumi Mei dispatched an envoy to deliver a letter of state intending to sign a peace treaty with Kanoha and formally withdraw from the Fourth Shinobi World War. Tsunade hesitated for a moment, but finally agreed to Kurigika's request. After all, the pressure on Kanoha was truly immense. They were truly facing the entire ninja world with the strength of a single nation. Of course, the specific details still needed to be discussed. Kurigika boldly declared that they wanted to claim a piece of land from the Land of Fire, while Kanoha also made a bold statement requesting part of its territory. In reality, neither side believed that the other would actually give up land. But that's diplomacy. Making bold statements and bargaining are all normal tactics. Revealing one's bottom line in a negotiation will only allow the enemy to take advantage and become even more unreasonable. During this time, Natsuo remained on the front line against Kurigika. Tsunade sent several letters, warning him to be careful of possible Kurigika ambushes. For a ninja, sending a peace offering could also serve as a cover for their own actions. Natsuo replied, Yes, yes, you're right. But in addition to strengthening Tarumi Mei using the wrench in Okanke and checking the status of the charge she was carrying, he spent the rest of his time using the Flying Thunder God technique to rush back home, continuing to fight for the revival of the Ishiha clan. Of course, just like before, except for some of his wives, no one else knew of his whereabouts. 
but both countries genuinely sought peace. So the negotiators from both sides started their discussions harmoniously, and it was expected that they would reach a complete agreement soon. As the news spread, the other countries they didn't show much interest. After all, although the outcome was surprising, it was actually within everyone's expectations. The fact that Karigake had been able to hold on until now was what surprised the other countries the most. After all, the power displayed by Natsuo may not be on the level of a Chihamadara, but it was still quite surprising to many, and that Tarumi Mei was able to retain him, means that her strength is something they should keep an eye on. With the start of peace negotiations between Karigaka and Kanoha, all ninja villages, including the impulse of Kumogaka, have reduced the intensity of their attacks, and are constantly on guard against Natsuo, who might come to support their own front lines. Rasa has directly ordered the entire army to hold their ground, and once again begin constructing fortifications and trenches. After all, once Karigaka and Kanova sign the peace agreement, Natsuo will be able to free his hands, and fully confront the enemies on other battle lines. As a consequence, Kanova's pressure on all battlefields began to decrease. Kanova also breathes a sigh of relief, feeling much lighter. So this is Ichiha's deterrent power, I really wonder what kind of power Ichiha Madara had back then. Tsunade sighs. The leaders of the main clan smile one after another. Although the agreement with Karigaka has not been finalized, it is already close to completion. Kanova's losses were stopped in time, and what matters most to them is that the losses of the main members of their clans who participated in the war are not significant. This is good news. However, for some people, it is not good news at all. Samui, who is pregnant, grits her teeth. Will Natsuo go to the front line against Sunagaka or Awagaka? No. If he returns, he will most likely go to the battlefield against Kumogaka. Samui does not have the intelligent support of Kumogaka. But just by listening to the discussions among the Kanoha villages, she can understand how terrifying the technique that Natsuo used on the battlefield against Karigaka is. Once Natsuo faces off against Kumogaka, Kumogaka's losses will be significant. And I still have a mission to complete. Samui's eyes carry a hint of coldness. She has a duty to Kumogaka and the expectations of Reika J. She intends to carry the lineage of the Ichiha clan to Kumogaka. It looks like I'll have to change my approach. Samui took a deep breath and decided to contact the village and take action. And so... Samui took the opportunity when Natsuo's stronger wives were not around and took immediate action. Ichiha Goro, Enko's son, with his innate cunning, quickly noticed Samui's presence. Despite his young age, his awareness was always alert. He watched as Samui approached his brothers, and something in his instinct told him that he should stay close to them because something wasn't right. Would you like me to take you to buy candy, little ones? Samui smiled kindly at Natsuo's youngest children. She couldn't risk getting close to the older children. Especially to Ichiha Reian, she felt that that boy was suspicious of her. As for the servants, he simply said, My child will be born soon, and I want to try taking care of them as a practice for when my own child is born. On the other hand, Ichiha Naomi, daughter of Kuronai, with her telepathic abilities, captured the presence of her brother among the group of children. Although she trusted her brother, her quirkiness sometimes made her uneasy. She decided to engage Goro in a mental conversation. Naomi, what are you doing? Goro, why did you join this group? Goro, I just want to see what she's planning. Rayan said that he didn't trust Samui Karsen very much. Naomi, you have to be careful, Goro. We don't know what she's up to. Why don't you come with me? and we watch her from afar. Goro, no Naomi. We are big and strong. We can protect the brothers. Naomi, knowing that she couldn't dissuade her brother so easily, decided to join the group to keep a watchful eye on Goro, and at the same time make sure nothing bad happened. Naomi, why did you join them, Goro? I don't think it's a good idea. Goro, we have to be here to protect them, Naomi. Someone has to do it. Naomi, okay? But don't do anything risky, okay? So while Samui finished informing her servants and guardians, Naomi joined the group without her noticing. Meanwhile, the rest of their siblings, oblivious to Goro and Naomi's concern, were excited at the idea of buying candy. Laughing and playing, they walked towards the commercial street, unaware of the tense background that surrounded their exit. As for the very young babies who could not yet walk on their own, Samui did not try to approach them. After all, many of the babies had their own mothers nearby, and it would be inconvenient to carry them in front of them. It was easier to attract children who could run and jump. Their mothers gave them more freedom, and the only ones who watched over them were the servants or tutors who were in charge of their education. Furthermore, Samui was not a stranger, so there was no need for excessive caution. While Samui bought them everything the children asked for, Goro and Naomi shared a telepathic connection, their minds intertwined feeling the strange presences around them. Goro. Hey Naomi, there's something strange here, isn't that exciting? Naomi replied seriously Goro, stay calm. This is not a joke, there's something dangerous happening. Goro, but it could be fun. We could Naomi interrupted him no, listen to me, this is serious. We can't take the risk the explosion interrupts their telepathic conversation, unleashing chaos and panic. The surrounding pedestrians were shocked, and the children panicked even more. Oh no, it's an attack by enemy ninjas. Samui took the opportunity to shout. Is there anyone kind enough to help me take care of the children? Several Kumogaka spies who were nearby, immediately stepped forward excitedly and said, We will help you. 
As Kanoha ninjas, safeguarding children is the first thing we should do. Upon hearing this, Samui said, Then I'll leave it to you. After exchanging signals with the Kumo ninjas, Samui approached the children with false urgency. Children, Kanoha is under attack now. So you should stay with your brothers and sisters around you. To be honest, this acting wasn't particularly skillful. But she was only facing a group of children. Noticing the chaos increasing, Samui told the children, We need to move fast children. Kanoha is in danger. Come with me to be safe. The children, confused and scared, follow Samui's instructions. Naomi and Goro, aware but hiding their alert, follow the flow. So, Samui easily led them away, using the excuse of heading to a shelter, bringing them closer to the outskirts of Kanoha. Goro, with his fearless nature, feels the urge to act impulsively when they are about to leave Kanoha. Naomi, calmer and more focused, notices that Goro is getting restless, and communicates telepathically with him to stop him. Naomi mentally tells him, No Goro, wait! Now it's not the moment. We must stay calm and wait for an opportunity however, before they can finish their conversation, because some of the children began to get restless as they realized something was wrong. The Kumogaka spies acted one after another, knocking them unconscious and quickly taking them away. They were well prepared. As they approached the edge of Kanoha village, the nearby Kumo ninjas immediately used explosive tags to create more chaos. Then, they left Kanoha village, with many Kumo ninjas acting as bait, scattering in all directions. It will work. It will definitely work this time. Samu's eyes gleamed. This time, the Kumo ninjas who will sacrifice themselves to buy time will be significant. Basically all the ninjas who were left to create chaos and some of those who were used as bait will not survive and will definitely be caught by Kanoha. And at such a great cost, she also brought along 10 children. They are all between 2 and 3 years old. They will become the first members of the Ichiha clan in Kumogaka. Although I feel bad for betraying Natsuo like this. Samui's eyes darken slightly but quickly returned to normal. Although Natsuo was good to her, her loyalty to the village was even greater. Not all Kinochi would abandon their missions for the tenderness and financial satisfaction that a man can bring them. Samui is a ninja absolutely loyal to Kumogika. Even if she sacrifices her body and her emotions, she will always be loyal to Kumogika. Moreover, Kumogika won't mistreat these children. They are still young, and can be transformed into true Kumo ninjas without being discriminated against by the villagers. Samui thought to herself, the village will even provide them with wives and husbands in the future. Although their lives may not be as good as in the Ichiha clan, they definitely won't suffer. With this thought, the guilt in her heart diminished a bit. Let's go. Hurry up. Samui, with her big belly, said to the people around her who were carrying children. The pursuers from Kanova village could appear at any moment, so we need to hurry. Rakage Sama has already sent troops to support us. Keep going. Once we pass this section, we can go home. As spies who were inside Kanova for years, isn't the most anticipated day the day when they can openly return home and live a normal life. Thinking about it, all of the ninjas suddenly felt a surge of strength run through their bodies. And this time, they have completely accomplished their mission with one fundamental difference from their colleague who tried to infiltrate the Hyuga clan and kidnap the Patriarch's daughter back then. Everyone will be heroes of Kumogika. Thinking this, their eyes sparkled. However, at this moment a cold voice sounded. No, none of you can go home. The Kumogika spy's footsteps stopped abruptly, their eyes looking towards the direction where the voice came from. Samui was the same, and when she saw the person who came, her pupils instantly contracted. Natsuo, why are you here? Aren't you supposed to be on the battlefield against Kurigika? Sensing their father's presence, Naomi and Goro quickly regain consciousness. Naomi immediately communicates with Goro. Naomi telepathically tells him, keep your composure. Wait, don't cause problems for dad. And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much, and it keeps me going, plus it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.